sonríe y sigue bajando así al mar. Como dice, ya la 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 ya ya la ya ya la ya la ya la ya And we're back again for another captain's game. Let me just drop the music real quick. And nobody wants to captain. <laughs> hey mate, how's it going? I was a little bit late. I had to had to rush a little bit uh, to get back in time for this. But uh, we're up and running. And uh, again, nobody obviously wants to captain a captain's game, which is what makes it so unique. <laughs> so welcome, mate. Oh, it's going to be ITYTD. You got a kitten? Oh, awesome, man! What what kind of colours are we looking at here? What's the what's the uh, colourway? Uh, let's roll this again because these guys don't know. Oh no, not IG Ghosty. Oh gee, it's almost like ritual at this point, isn't it? <laughs> we need to. We need to experience. Because if we don't, we can't really play. But yeah, what colour is your kitten, man? I've got a black and white cat. And I'm 90% sure Tam in Tamina uh, is not a qualified captain. Let me just check. In fact, Neuro would be a good shout, actually. That's cool. Uh, let me just search Tamina real quick. Tamina has zero games on the server. <laughs> no, 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 today, today. I... Okay. Uh, I'll flip a coin real quick, and then we will discover whether Heads for Neuro, Tails for the Soldier. Heads for Neuro, Neuro gets to pick first. Awesome. And whilst this happens, I am going to very quickly change into some much comfier clothes. Let me just head to configure real quick. We are going to be playing on admin bow only, and it's going to be ITYTD. Awesome. Right. Bit hectic getting in the door, but we're here now. We're set up and we're ready to go. Hey Van Thunder, thank you for the follow, firstly, as well as Mitsui and Drymoz. Um, if you want to join the game, I will show you that right now. So you obviously need a, a copy of Factorio. Um, if you have that, you don't need to be in the most... You know, so all you have to do is be in the most current version of the game. If you... Ooh, I can get into my MS Paint very quickly. If you head and click on Multiplayer, let me make that arrow a little bit easier to see. If you click on Multiplayer, and then... You click on Browse Public Games, which I will do now. I've saved it. There's a little icon here on the left-hand side, this little gear wheel. If you click on that, it will save at any of these servers and to the top of your list. But I will. I, I'm, I've learned how to do those exclamation mark commands as well. So I've written a few out. I need to type them up. Uh, but if you type in Free Biter Battles, we're the most popular server at the moment, and we will be today and probably tomorrow as well. But uh, if you click on that, or even head up here to this little search button here, you can type in freebytebattles.org. You'll find us, click on that, and all you have to do is click on join game, and you'll be with us. So Van Thunder, I expect to see you in very, very soon. And uh, yeah, you're right, Raman, I have been learning. So this last week, I've been watching a lot of tutorials about how to be, um, it's, it's, it's,
Okay, awesome. Let's just close this. <laughs> have they put have they put reverse controls? <laughs> Look, this I'm pressing left. Now I'm pressing right. Now I'm pressing up and now I'm pressing down. You love to see it. <laughs> We're backwards running today. Um, okay, cool. We're into the pick phase now. Yeah, that's fine, mate. No rush. No rush. This this opening phase takes a little bit of time. So, um... Should get referee back. I hope. And remember... Awesome. Ah, oh, 17. That's good age, mate. Good age. Got a whole life ahead of you and so much fun and, yeah, stories will be... Adventures to be had, stories to be told. So, yeah, it's a great age, mate. It's normal controls. They flip the controls for Spectator Island. Um, last week, they made it really slow to walk. And this week, it looks like they've put inverted controls. <laughs> you love to see it. Well, no, you, I mean, I, I don't mind it. It's just a bit of fun. It won't be in-game as well. It won't be in-game. It's just for whilst we're on this little island. Uh, referee, law and order. Okay, great. We have got some, well, I've got some plans. I have some plans in the works uh, for special captain's games. In fact, let me do, I do this every week. I'm gonna do it today just because. Uh... That's terrible, why? <laughs> it's awful, do you see that? Holy crap, never again. Never again. We're sticking to straight lines. Here we go, nerds. Nerd. Uh, I've been in a rush today, so everything is going to be rushed. It's... Nerds. <laughs> oh, my head hurts. I've been rushing around all day. Whilst we're doing this pick phase, give me a second. I'm going to go and get changed and get into some comfy clothes. Today is a long game. Today we will be seeing a long game. There'll be lots of rockets. And um, so, yeah, no rush on the gameplay and you're right Van Thunder you are right I've said this a long time like I'm learning to become a streamer um, but I, I didn't initially start out to be a big streamer or anything so I'm learning as we go like what I need to do to, to get better so um, yeah I'm, I'm and if you have any tutorials and anything you can link to me please send it um, We've been winging it a long time for a while now, and I feel like there's little things I can do to make things a little better for everyone. And I love nerds, man. They're sour as hell, but they are good fun. Dude, honestly, I am I am not beyond needing a little bit of coaching, a little bit of help uh, in that respect, because I could always make it better. You know, this could always be better. Uh, and we'll go through the map and we'll go through the teams. Give me a minute, guys. I just need to get out of my work clothes and into some normal crash at home comfy clothes and then we'll uh, we'll get the commentary started so i'll be back in a minute real quick Okay, I am back and I am in. Hey mate, no worries, thanks for joining us. Um, this will be a long, long game, so there's a good chance that when you come back in, if you come back in, uh, we'll still be playing. We'll be in like the mid to late game, so. Right, let's zoom out and...
Okay, somebody's the referee. <laughs> there should be some boxes up here that allow me to uh, filter people in and out. Um, it's safe, I swear. Hmm. Do we trust him? Does anybody have a link checker that Sky Skybro? Welcome, firstly. Secondly, let's. Uh, does anybody have a link checker that we can uh, run that through to make sure that it's safe? This might down my entire stream. But let's check that URL. So a load of Korean has popped up. I am now a registered member of North Korean Communist Party. And our glorious leader is now in control of my computer. <laughs> I'm kidding. Soldier versus Neuro are the captains. Um, how do I, I... I don't... I, I don't have the referee... Um, I think if I reapply to be referee, things go wrong here. So yeah, let's just um, I I, I dipped out to show a new player how to join the server, and ah, oh, here we go. Right, excellent. Boom, second phase. Let's go. Panic at the disco is over. Phase two is uh kind of kicking off. And uh, we've got a lot of good players now. Neuro picked first, so the soldier will have first pick on phase two. <laughs> All right, let's do that. Soldier gets first pick. And as the team slowly but surely build out, we're looking at at least a 20 versus 20 game. And I am now gonna zoom out. We have picked, as a server, we have picked a map with very few trees. I mean, like seriously, there's like no wood on this map. Power poles might actually be a problem. Or if we send some lumberjacks over here, we might have some issues. <laughs> Main base, we're looking at a comfortable 1.1 million. Uh, coal, 500,000, half a million stone, 1.3 and a 1.5 million iron. And copper is, it's looking relatively healthy. I mean, in fact, there's even a small coal, uh, coal patch here too. So in terms of the size and scale that main base can reach, with oil relatively close as well, I like what I'm seeing here. This is a really nice opening setup. There aren't really like any major lakes in the way. What we look out for when we're building in the main base. Okay, let me run phase three for any late joiners. See if anybody else needs to, to come in. And still we've got more and more people that want to come in. And, and at the same time to remember as well, uh, to join your So yeah, hop into Discord, hop into the voice channel. You don't have to necessarily talk to everyone, but it's worth talking to your captain and asking him what the plan is and asking how you can help. These games are much, much more structured and therefore more fun, I feel, uh, on the weekends than to your normal games. Normal games are good fun, but uh, on the south we have Cold Bath, <laughs> which is a weird name. And uh, the North team name is all in all it's just another bug in the wall. Excellent. These are pretty good team names, apart from Cold Bath. I don't understand this. This might be a French meme that I'm too English to understand. Um, but yeah, talking about main base, if I swap out into my MS Paint tools right now, normally you have these really large kind of um, lakes that kind of occupy part of the map. And it seems like other than this one here in this opening area and this small lake here, we don't really, we have a lot of open space to build in. So there are some really large areas where you can build power and you can build your production without needing to kind of pave over those lakes and that's definitely needed. Um, beyond that, let's take a zoom out and look at outpost areas. To build an outpost that will get you to the late game, to get you to a rocket, you're gonna need a lot of copper. And so I can imagine an area like this. Oh, 
an area like this is perfect for that space. I can't really see beyond that. Maybe, no, actually no, this is bare. I would be surprised if people moved out to the east for uh, for an outpost. This looks really, really, uh, really bare. In fact, yeah, the only real options you have are setting up a rocket outpost here or here, if you're on south and then obviously the north have exactly the same spots. For any of the new uh, that aren't exactly sure what's going on, this is called Bite to Battles. This is a PvP uh, game mode of uh, Factorium. The map itself is divided by this enormous river that goes all the way across the map, meaning that you cannot cross to either side. Okay, all late joiners will fix. Let's do a final phase. My name is Ghosty. I will be refereeing today. And the map geometry in terms of the patches on either side are exactly the same. They're mirrored, in fact. So no one side has an advantage for being on the north or on the south. You are the same coal patch that exists here, exists exactly here. It's just kind of flipped. So there's no real kind of advantage of being on north or south. All right, let's go three mins and we go. We'll give him a three minute counter to kind of figure out who does what. It's 21 on 21 before the game's even started. Um, we're playing on ITYTD today, which is a long game mode, so we should see some really, really solid bases in main, some great outposts as well, and uh, I'm excited. It's always a good a good day when you see kind of 20 plus numbers on either side. These, these teams will get flying, uh, as long as everybody sticks to the plan, stays together and has a good time. I like the amount of stone that's out here, man. You could really build walls up early. Somebody's pinging out the mix patch already. We've got some plans for some threat farming. you love to see it. And I love this Samba music, but I, I don't know if it's a really good... <laughs> I don't know if it's great to kind of begin the stream with Samba, so let's swap this out to something a little, a little bit more high tempo. Less party, high tempo. And let me know again. <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong, Esmog, sorry, you are correct. If only there was a way of being able to hide this, you know, like, like you press tab and it just disappears and then you can like bring it back up again. All right, two minutes, two minutes till we go. But that is actually a very astutely put point though, to be fair. Let's take a look at the teams. Let's run you through as we count down for the, for the game to start. Rutan, Cliff Build, Pluto, Granly, Prox, Hordecker, Jemmy Boy, Space Dog, Fire, uh, 3231, Molint, the official Mr. T, as opposed to the unofficial Mr. T. If you see him, tell him he's not real. Enkling, I be sleepy, Killer 95533, Soldier 57, Rune Boggler, Chaos Unity, Dr. Claw, Paul Sus, Just Bob, and Meat Blue. That makes up the beginning of the North team. Meanwhile, in the South, we have Pavev, Developer, Everlord, Neuro, Stick Lord, THX1138, Drad. Drudgeon, dr Drudgeon, Drudgeon, dr I'm going to call him Drudge, Mipmop, Carl number three, as we know, one and two are being rested for this game, Cute Meow Meow, Tear Marks, Vortex, Tamina, Tykak, Bloodstained Crow, De Schnoob, <laughs> Gory George, Califabop, Walrus, Diffusion, and Friendly Fire. And those are the teams for now. More people will join. More people will join. But um, I like the mix here. I like the mix. Right, one min. We've given them a few now to organize the plan and talk amongst themselves. And Tamina, I we were talking about shadow accounts last week about the people playing on Smurfs. You know, we, there are some names missing today. There are some big names that we normally see. So Whisper is definitely in this game, hundred percent. Is FTNS with us? We'll never know. He hides amongst the shadows. Uh, for any of you joining as well, we're on inverted controls. So I'm pressing up, this is down, this is right, this is left. So we're running backwards on Spectator Island. I challenge any of you to a race. <laughs> um, but yeah, we're, we're, we're getting into the game. This is all about to start, and then we'll have some stuff to talk about. So um, yeah, let me go 30 seconds. I feel like the, the 15 minutes they've had to organize now is more than enough to begin the plan. You're never gonna get a fully fledged setup out of the way. 
but um, you will be able to eye up exactly where you want your initial smelting to go, as well as kind of where your outpost is going to be. I would be, I'd be shocked if any outpost is movies. I just can't see. Or you bring in coal, you bring in copper in from miles away, whereas with here you have some pretty, you know, adjacent copper patches. All right, it's time. The numbers are on the screen. It's Saturday again. I hope you guys are having a good weekend. It's Saturday, the April, uh, the April the twentieth. If I can get the words out of my mouth, and the game has begun. Twenty players on north, twenty-one on south. One player discrepancy, and the captain of the south will be Nuro. The captain of the north will be the soldier, and uh, yeah, it's on like Donkey Kong. Hope you guys are doing well. Hope everybody is healthy, warm, well fed. Remember to get some water on, these games are long. There will come a point where I need to go off and make a sandwich. Luckily, I don't have any dog distraction one. Okay, team killing is not okay. <laughs> All right, I need to tell Tamina not to team kill because Okay, yeah, I mean, it probably in jest, you know, probably in jest. All these two know each other, that's fine. But uh, yeah, try not to blow your teammates up if you can. Later on, the bugs will do that for you. You know, I always say, don't fight each other, fight the bugs. <laughs> and uh, Pipes is running some black magic in the background, which I don't understand. So it appears to me in the north that uh, they're looking at a really large power block. Ooh, that's huge, actually. Massive. Um, let's go down. Rune Boggler is pinging. They've looked at kind of potential outpost spots, and as we said before, to the west it has to be just purely off the RNG nature of the uh, of the map roll. You don't always get equal sides east to west, and you'd have to travel beyond these kind of boundaries, which you're able to. This map goes on for a very long time, but um, you're kind of wasting time running backs and forwards. And yeah, this spot here, I can imagine there will be in the future, in the not too distant future. A, uh, an outpost of some description. Teal friendly and Mitmob, maybe they're here to threat farm? I'm worried there's not a lot of trees on this map, boys and girls. Like, this does not look like a particularly wooded area. Like, are we gonna run out of power poles? Or are we gonna have to look at other, like, steel based poles? There can't be enough to sustain the entire map. Careful pizza is in. Okay, what's happening? I, somebody's having a go at Dragin, and I don't know why. Okay, yeah, brilliant. <laughs> We're five minutes into the game. <laughs> and our first proper death. Our first proper death is uh, <laughs> Fire 3231 going down to the acid on north, heading west. Um, and he is just surrounded by worms here. And again, in the early part of the game, you don't have good armor. You, you know, you are susceptible to. Uh, you are susceptible to acid. And he's out. <laughs> it sounds, it looks like ego. Hey, Blitzy. Uh, I am the referee today. I'm refereeing. Um, so you'll see me kind of move players in and out of the teams. And All right, so, so. Fair enough. People do disagree. 
Blitzy's in the game. How's it going, mate? Oh, let's ask the captain. So some drama at the beginning of the game. It turns out that the South are fighting each other <laughs> instead of themselves. I love this adaptation as well, by the way. You know, they, they, they put down the initial character. So iron, this will be iron, iron, this will be copper, iron, stone. I just, I, I know obviously we have multilingual people in here, but this is just an idea of what you need to feed into these different smelters. So nobody gets confused. And um, it's, it's a little, it's a minor thing, but it's important that you get this stuff down. And here we go, Enkling has already imprinted large amounts of, uh, of smelting down. So I love the fact that they just get this stuff down straight away. And again, they're like, look at this iron patch, let's get all of this. And let's send this into our smelting to, uh, to start the game. So it looks like all of the copper is going to be handled on the left hand side. The majority of the iron to the right, with stone down the middle. And steel, I guess, will be tacked on to the edge. Yes. But yeah, Blitzy, enjoy. I'm gonna run, oh, let me enable the picks for the late joining players. You're only a few minutes in, so you haven't missed anything really. Uh, other than a little bit of drama on the uh, south. Um, I'm gonna put Dredrin back into his team. So, I don't, I don't think there was an issue. I just think that they're witch hunting. And uh, yeah, good luck, mate. I'll try and follow you, Blitzy, and see how you get on during the game. If you're completely new and you need any help, I'm happy to offer you suggestions. But as the referee... Um, okay, yeah, as the referee, it looks like... Um, Apparently Dragon has annoyed somebody, he got team killed and then he got kicked off his own team. I don't know what that's about, that's not normal for us. So he normally builds main, he's normally quite a quick main builder, so what we see here in, obviously in this opening area of the game, and I will go into the game mode itself, but um, we need to automate smelting. We need electric miners powered by our um, you know, steam engines and our boilers to provide us with power to turn this raw uh, iron and raw copper and raw stone into actually produced finished products. Um, main builders are really important. The object of the game, for any of you that are new that haven't seen this before, the object of the game is to protect your team's rocket silo. Both teams at the beginning of the game are given a silo. If this dies, if the bugs come and bite this to zero HP, you lose the game. It's as simple as that. You start off with absolutely no research you have some bare minimum basics like burner mining drills and stone furnaces and we will in this game mode see a rocket or multiple rockets even with the play numbers that we have so yeah you have to defend this rocket silo it's sat roughly in the middle of your base so this area that we see if i look at north this is kind of considered the main base area you want to build up defenses around this area smelting power etc to defend that rocket silo so later on we'll see lots of walls and we'll see lots of defensive towers like flamethrower uh, flame towers and laser turrets. Um, but at the moment, at the moment we start with nothing. So a lot of the stuff that we're making is handcrafted and hand fed. If I jump into the research real quick, obviously at the beginning of the game, both teams only have access to red science. You need to uh, research green to unlock it. And then by unlocking green science, you can then kind of research things like batteries, night vision, not that you'd need it. <laughs> And, uh, and, and everything else. So um, yeah, we start off with nothing. How we research at the beginning is kind of standard. We need electronics, we need walls, we need gun turrets, or do we? It's up to you really. Um, but the research should relatively be similar. And then depending on which captain has like which strategy, you could see defenders later. You might see like increased follow count uh, and everything in between. Um, the bugs are here and they're all the way across the map. They don't just exist in one point. They are not, they're not just here. If I zoom out correctly, the bugs exist all the way across the map on south, and all the way across the map on north. 
And over the course of the game, and it will happen, we will see this, the bugs will rain down onto your buildings, onto your production, and smash into all of the stuff that you build. So you have to protect the base, or multiple bases. As we can see here, there's a team of players out on this side of the pitch, of the, of the map, and they've got their own ideas as to how they can play to help to get their team to a win. And we call these guys outposters. They're not near the main base area, which is here, but they're in an area with lots of resources to build a secondary base that will provide their team something. And that could be anything from lots and lots of walls, to uh, building rockets, to even just threat farming, to killing off the bugs, and everything else in between. And it looks like here up north, Killer, Space Dog, Jemmy Boy, they look like they're so close to the bugs, they will be threat farming these guys. Well, boy, you know it, so. Yeah. Ugh. Right, I'm gonna take a drink of water real quick, and then we'll hopefully, whatever was kicking off earlier is, um, is no, done. <laughs> because I'm kind of not super happy that we're kicking Dreidra and then we're team killing him, then we're jailing him. It's like persecution level 9000. <laughs> Awesome. Right, let me check Discord. Is anybody messaging me? No. Okay, awesome. Nobody's angry at each other. <laughs> Fuck's sake. Oh dear. Okay. Yeah, okay, yeah, done, 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 done. Alright, don't need to deal with that. Um. Okay, would like to join? Yeah, go for it, dude. We can get everyone in. For any of you watching that wants to play in this game, you can join. You don't need the DLC. You don't need a super secret code. You don't even need any mods. You can just join our game and play. And all we ask is that you don't troll and that you listen to the captain's advice and you, uh, you do what the captain says, really. It's not about dictatorship. This is just about having one grand strategy that helps serve your team to get into position to hopefully win as fast as possible. And as we can see here, Enkling already has mapped out for the north the opening set of production that will hopefully, and that's the second proper death, remember to type F in chat. <laughs> that's the second proper death in the game. Um, yeah, mapping out kind of where we want our smelting blocks, where we want our power, um, where we want to kind of get our miners down, how we orientate them. It's looking good so far. It's looking good for the North. They have a plan. These blueprints aren't permanent. They're just ideas. So um, for now, they need to kind of re like realize these ideas by putting down the inserters, putting the ore across the way of these stone furnaces, and then feeding coal. Um, there is a huge coal patch to begin with, which is really nice to see. There's a million one here and a little 216K cheeky little coal patch that should fuel a lot of this. I wouldn't say all of this, but a lot of it. And yeah, loads of nice little outposts. I mean, look at this. That's a really large power block for early game. Love to see it. You never know, you could feed that back to main if you want to. But here we've got out here, Mipmop, Tear Marks and Friendly Fire. With Pavev as well. Blitzy and Bloodstained Crow, wow. The South are committing a lot of resources to fight down here. So, I love this. I'm a huge fan of threat farming. If you don't want to build, because you're not really as much of a nerd as I am, and you just want to kind of like take the fight to the bugs, you want to be doing this kind of play. You want to be coming close to the bugs, building a load of buildings that make grenades, bullets, and armor, and uh, and fight them. You know, at this early stage of the game, the bugs are so weak that they absolutely can uh, be killed. And I say every week, we'll go through all the different mechanics of the game mode. Today, we're not on any rush because we're playing on the easiest game mode, which means we're going to have the longest game possible. Not longest in terms of like it's guaranteed to go on for seven or eight hours, but the easiness of the game mode means that the bugs don't evolve at a rate at which they do with something that's slightly more egregious, something a little bit quicker, a little bit faster. So these guys will be easy to kill for a long time, meaning that the players can drive the number into a negative. Evolution, in layman's terms, for any of you guys that are new, that are just coming and tuning in for the first time, evolution is how strong the bugs are, how much health they have, how fast they are. The higher the uh, bugs are evolved, the harder they are to kill. And threat, the number to the right side of evolution, 
is about the number of aggressive bugs on the map. So evolution is how big and strong they are, threat is how many they are. Do your part, step on the bugs. I'm from Buenos Aires and I say kill them all. <laughs> what a great film by the way, holy crap. I'm doing my part. <laughs> and Swistus joins us. I need to remember to put Swistus on the list. <laughs> okay, just Swistus for now. You'll be going up north. And uh, yeah, we see now 50 people. It's Saturday afternoon for me. For some of you, it'll be morning. For some of you, night time. For Enkling, it's like Sunday. And we have 50 people playing in the same game in Factorio against each other. That's kind of cool, right? Hey, Tech Priest. You are in. Have you tried running around on the map? Have you, have you tried this? We're moonwalking. <laughs> I don't know what's happened here, but I really like these small tweaks that we're making to Spectator Islands. <laughs> You can't make this stuff up. I want to run forward. Nope. We should put this in game. We should have like a reverse controls game and see how long it takes us to get to like blue science. Yeah, no worries, dude. Enjoy. It's going to be a good game today. We've got some really, really even teams. And um, it looks to me like the North have taken a slight lead in terms of like getting their smelting down. It's obviously not all turned on, but this is really well blueprinted from Enkling. Like he's got a plan. This is what's going to happen to get us off the ground. Ness, welcome. Enchanté, as they say in France, I believe. That might be wrong. Sorry if I've just butchered your language. Um, bonjour. <laughs> I know, but the spirit, the spirit of the controls being reversed. Can you imagine if we had reversed controls in the game? That would be fucking funny. I mean, I don't think we'd go very far. I'm going to be honest. I think we're going to get to military science and then people would just tap out, but... Or get to bots and then nobody would move. <laughs> Ça va bien, mes amis. Mon chéri, c'est bien, oh, très bien. So yeah, um, on south, we've got a little bit of smelting. They have begun on copper. And um, yeah, they've got a little bit going on. So again, this is huge. And it's some of it's down. You need it to be switched on and fully firing. And they are slowly but surely getting this absolute behemoth of a build in north, up and running. So, ooh, okay. I initially discounted. The east. Hang on a minute. We've got quite a lot of people heading out here. Come see, come sa. I need to learn some more French, man. Like I, I can speak a little bit. I'm bis in Deutsch. I can speak. A, and again, anybody that's actually German will um, will tell me that that's terrible. So please feel free if we have any any uh, any broodies in the chat to tell me that that's the worst thing they've ever heard in their life. Somebody once told me I spoke German like a redneck. <laughs> I'm doing good, Skelly. I hope you're having a good weekend, mate. It's um, It's been good. <laughs> that did sound good. Okay, I'll take it. I'll take it. I've been told I sound like a redneck before, so... <laughs> you do Okay, right. Certified German. Excellent. Certified, I know. How terrible. Normally, we see uranium really close, although we are on I'm Too Young to Die. And thank you for the plaudits. My German has... It's like you know, little bits, you know? If I can order a beer and some food, you know what I mean? I, I'm not terrible. But French is something that's like a bit of a weakness for me, man. Like I can say hello and, um, you know, all the kind of cliche sayings like ça va and you know, très bien, but I need to really pick myself up a little bit on that fact. I could, I could learn some French. You know, maybe, maybe we turn this into a French language stream. <laughs> English man butches French <laughs> for views. <laughs> no, we're not doing that. We're not doing that. Yeah, I initially discounted the east of the map to be relatively bare. Although, only bare in the sense that I don't think you can build rockets out here. I might be wrong, but I just didn't think much of the copper out here. I'm, yeah, I may actually be wrong here, because Carl set himself up. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> oh, well, let me do predictions real quick. Sorry, I kind of rushed through the door, and then the game started, so... Oh, you guys, you guys have um, 30 minutes. Um... Yeah, 30 minutes to vote on this. And uh, welcome everyone. It's nice to have, again, I see you guys every week. It's really cool that you guys tune in. Um, I've got a friend of mine that'll be joining us down the line as well. Silent it is, mate. And like, without sounding like an absolute caveman, you know, like the letters with the E, with the little hat on it. 
You know, like umlauts, like the, 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 the Germans have like, uh, you know, that sound, the O oh with the two dots, like the, stuff like that. Genuinely, it catches you out, mate, it catches you out. But um, yeah, do you know what? Why not? I need something. I need a challenge, you know, I need something new to do. So maybe I'll learn a little bit of French. Maybe when you guys come, oh, the third death, Mr. The official Mr. T. If any of you guys say, see the unofficial Mr. T, telling me fake news, this is the real guy. He's just sleeping at the moment. He's not actually dead. And the third death, <laughs> the third death of the server has happened. How much did he have on him? 40. There we go, yeah. Use grenades, mate. It's fake news. <laughs> He's not real. He's not the real Mr. D. I pity the fool. <laughs> There's like the real, real Mr. T, and then the realist Mr. T. <laughs> the hyper, ultra real Mr. T. <laughs> yeah, I kind of assumed that they'd be, yeah, like kind of here. There's tons and tons of oil. There's some really heavy um, copper patches out here. So like this is a great little area for, uh, for a rocket base. And I can imagine Rune, and by the way, for any of you guys that want to watch like a player's perspective, Rune is actually currently streaming as well, so feel free to tune into him. I'm not going to get super pissed if, you know, you don't want to be here and watch me talk about how great I am for many hours. Um, there are other players streaming, so feel free to check them out and ask them questions about what's going on. Runebogler is arguably the best player in the server. There may be one or two players better, but consistently playing the game every day or every other day and climbing the elo, the ranks, uh, Rune's up there for sure. So, uh, and he's he's a good streamer, man. He's, he's got good chat, so. Feel free to leave me on my own. Head over there and watch the North kind of rampage their way to a rocket outpost very fast. These guys are ridiculous, by the way. Genuine, like, ridiculous. Um, I joke saying I'm really good. These guys are actually really, really good. Um, now, don't get me wrong. It doesn't mean that I lose to them. But beating them is very hard. <laughs> like, very, very hard. Okay, right. I want solo chill. Okay, Max is here for solo chill. Nobody expect anything from Max. Oh dear. I feel like the South are already discombobulated, but they are slowly but surely getting their smelting up and running. And I'm really digging the disco music. It's just chill. You know, I'm having a coffee, listening to some disco, having a pot noodle later. Power is kind of slowly but surely getting up and running again. Uh, for the for the south of north sorry and this is a huge power build like if meat loop down the line can get all this stuff built yeah you're not going to worry too much about powering your base in the early phase meanwhile do oh i love it i'm so happy you do get some walls at the beginning of the game and just putting some down in these weird kind of like for anybody that's new um that's watching this for the first time i'll just take the south for an example here the bugs will come directly at you, of course, you know, they will kind of fight you as they kind of come into the map and try and fight you for your silo. But every now and again, a wave will make their way all the way around to the edge of the base and hit you laterally. And so covering off this area here very early on is actually a big deal because there could be a wave that just sneaks in, a little ninja wave that just gets through. So yeah, it's a good thing that they've managed to kind of identify that as a weak spot. Both teams have done this very early on, as you can see. The North have done it here, and the South have done it down here. That's kind of a really big deal. Like, tactically speaking, if you get a, like a wave of bugs slam into you here, they're not far from your objective. You know, the silo has lots of health, but it does go down quick. Like, we're not, yeah. Interesting, interesting. Look at this. How fast are they researching with this? They are flying on the south. Are you guys seeing this? How how long into the game are we? We're 20 minutes in and we're researching sulfur soon? I, I love this. This is awesome. Is this Nero's design? It is, isn't it? You madman. You absolute mad Frenchman. Screenshot this, somebody, if you can. So what's happened here, look, typically in a game, you build huge production, that huge production goes into huge labs, and labs will fire research out like machine gun bullets. But it takes a while to get there, right? So you have to kind of hand feed science to begin with, using kind of, you know, basic assemblers and you're hand feeding stuff. Neuro has come up with a design, and I love this. This is new, I've not seen this before. Any of you guys playing week in, week out, you can tell me. 
with basic copper and iron inputs. He has everything he needs for red and, and green signs, and we have a large, vast amount of labs researching. Uh, this is really good. I mean, I, this might be an adaptation, but Neuro's cooking, man. It is. It so is, dude. And I, I love this. This is a dream. If you're if you're threat farming on the south, you can squeeze defenders in. Hand hand make some um, military science. Feed it into here. Job is done. Brilliant move. Brilliant move. Now their smelting is slowly but surely getting its, itself up and running. So this is kind of slower for the south. But it's not. It's, it's certainly not game winning. I don't think. But what a great. What a great little move. It's, it's, he's pulled like an overtake here. Do you know what I mean? Like, if this was a racing, if this was a, it's like, a, like a Formula One race, this little build here is like an overtake. We are going to move forward in the in research by multiple levels and hope that this stuff can catch up in time. I like that, man. I really like This will benefit the, the South heavily. Do you know what I'm saying, though, Skelly? That's such a... Honestly, like, some sometimes you have, like, a fifth of this labs like you have like 10 lab buildings down and you're like half researching with half of them now let's look up to north how much research is being done here one two three four five six labs we are 25 minutes in i, I hate to do this but i've not seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, four, five, six, eight, seven, eight. 36 fully fed and fully functioning labs to the north six. The south are outstripping the research by 30 working labs. You app and he's upgrading some of them to assembly twos. What an absolute maniac. Neuro is the senior admin, by the way, and he has been cooking in the background. He's, he must have had some time off from work to come up with this. This isn't the kind of thing you just figure out how to do, right? He's dreamt this up. Whatever though, congrats man, that's awesome. I love to see stuff like that, it's new. Now, the North aren't behind, and it's not GG at all. We're into the early phase of the game. Mistakes can still be made, obviously. And as I said earlier, Four Decker and Rune Boggler are kind of cheat codes. Fire is ridiculously good, Cliff is ridiculously good. These four or five people here, if, if one more joins them, they're, they're scary enough to kind of win the game here, in this base, if the North can get themselves up and running. And obviously, because we have so many players coming in, there are so many different little outposts to check in on. You know, huge little power builds early game. In fact, if you think about it, the South's outpost here is faster up and running than their main base. <laughs> How scary is that? So we've got some really, really quick players here. Um, it's ridiculous. It's really good. Give him hell, Helldiver. <laughs> Oh, I fucking love that game. I, I I know we're here for Factorio, but Jesus Christ, how fun is Helldivers 2? I just land and I throw airstrikes and it's fucking hilarious. <laughs> I blew my, my own sentry gun and blew me up a couple of games ago. I was like, excellent. <laughs> well done, mate. I mortal myself more than I mortal the bugs. Developer and Vortex. Let's try and guess. All right, let's try. I'm, I, it's obviously fake news and all that, but I'm going to try and guess. So I assume that this will be a rocket outpost. I'm 90% sure. Carl's been kind of cooking up rocket outposts for a while now. He's been wanting to play on an easier game mode because it takes, it's, it's less egregious, so. Oh mate, Helldivers mod, holy crap. Can you imagine? Mega Bile Titan. <laughs> Behemoth Bile Titan. <laughs> Okay, it looks like everybody that's in is one to play. So, um, this for me is a rocket outpost, I think. It's just a guess. But there are some really strong players here. Pavev, Everlord, Guru George, uh, Walrus, Cube Meow Meow. And Carl is definitely here leading the, the way. Vortex and Developer. I can imagine with the oil here, maybe they go for like a laser base. I'm just guessing, by the way. It could also be a uranium kind of nuclear build, but I'd imagine there'd be some kind of like laser shenanigans going on here. Main base, Stick Lord, Califabop. Um, Dragon, I think that's how you say that name. Dragon, Dragon. Um, 
and Nura, obviously. Very strong players, with a couple of newbies there too. Uh, friendly fire, getting in the middle of it all, fighting the bugs. This is what you love to see. You need to do it in these um, long games. You need to kill the bugs off as soon as you can. And with himself, Tio Marks and Mitmop. Mitmop's a very strong outpost type player. You can imagine there'll be uh, defenders here before you can even blink. Especially with the speed of the research in the south. Uh, they're flying boys. Uh, I know that if you're new to this game mode you might think, well this is normal. At this time of the game, this is abnormal speed in which the, the south are researching. They are a few, if you think of this but like this is tier 1 and this is tier 2, they're deep into tier 2 already. Now again, they need to transition that speed into military science and that might be difficult for them. It may provide them some, some issues down the line. But as we can see here off the back of the major smelting lines that we have, the beginnings of both red and green science are being created. So this build here will still continue on, but when you know military science get kicks in, Nura can pull up all of these labs here that he's built and slap them down where kind of the main science area will be. Very similar to how the south, the north, sorry, have this main science research area that will go down. Nura can add those labs back in, so. What a great little player. That's such a weird, I, I don't want to say weird is in like odd, like bad. Nobody really, people prioritize threat farming, right? They prioritize killing the bugs early. We're at minus 961 on the north, and we're minus 2,500 on the south. And people prioritize getting really, really fast um, smelting up, right? This is always the priority. Science is always last in line. And he's kind of flipped it a little bit and gone, do you know what? Research first. Research first. Everything else will build itself. These buildings will slowly feed boxes of, you know, belts and boxes of inserters. But the most important thing, and how many buildings does he need to get this up? Two, four, 12 initial buildings here to make the science. You can obviously, you know, smell plate straight off the bat. Uh, 13, 14 assembler ones, you know, before they're upgraded. 14 assembler ones, and as many science buildings as you can feed, you know, depending on how much resources you have. So this is kind of inconsequential. But through 14 assemblers at the beginning of the game, it's ingenious, man. I don't know, maybe I'm overly impressed. And I'm sorry if I'm kind of waxing lyrical about this, but I feel like you see stuff every now and again in games and you're like, people will start doing this. You know, th this is not, this is uncommon in every good possible way you can imagine. This is a good thing. And the fact that in you know the first opening hour they've been upgraded to assembler with two, uh, twos is awesome. Now obviously you know the, the South will build more research and they'll get even more done. But we're looking now to move towards military science and potentially even blue. I'm a big fan, man. I'm I'm a big fan. Although that said, the North are no slouches either, and we can see now the beginnings of military science. I mean I'm singing its praises, but this might actually be a fail. This might be a fail, I don't know, but I think it's great. South always wins. Well, Blitz, you're on South, aren't you? <laughs> They're slower than one player in any percent speed run. <laughs> it's, we call it the Blitzy difference. Because Blitzy's on South, South win. Easy. Pick Blitzy, GG, easy, win game. <laughs> we may as well just pack it in now, I'll just stop the stream. You know, it's game. Um, yeah, the North aren't behind by any stretch of the imagination. In fact, I'd, if I had to guess, the South are ahead in research, but they're not necessarily ahead in other areas of their game. And one thing I would say that's very, very important, and we need to see it happening very early, is this. You need to build, for anybody that's new, that isn't too sure about what's going on, that's absolutely fine. You'll need to build walls to keep your base safe. And those walls need to be built as early as feasibly possible. This isn't the kind of thing where you can kind of hang on for too long. You need to get them created as soon as possible. Um, the bugs do eat through and chew through walls as they grow stronger throughout the game. And at, at the moment, they're not very strong. Um, but later on, they will be hundreds of percent evolved. It's not hundreds and hundreds, like, you know, two, three, four hundred percent evolved. Um, you know, things like gun turrets will become useless. Things like... Um, laser towers won't hit as hard as you might want them to. So you need to research deeper into their kind of damage and shooting speed, etc. Um, so walls are your best friend in that respect. 
and uh, yeah, here we go. The initial beginnings of military times. We're flying. We're absolutely flying. I I call the beginning of the game, the early game, is when you have labs where both red and green are being fed into them consistently. And for anybody that's completely new, and I know that all of you aren't, but I'm going to say it anyway, just for any completely fresh players, with one assembly machine, if you feed it copper plates and iron wheels, which you can make in a different assembler, like, a, like here, you will be able to create red science. And that is the basic level one science to get you off the ground. Green science is a little bit difficult. Not more difficult, sorry, but it requires more advanced materials like belts, for instance, and yellow inserters. If you can feed them into an assembler one machine, give it a few seconds and you will see a green jug appear onto a belt with the help of an assembler. Feed that towards your actual research area and your sawyers. You know, that's the early game research and then just research till your heart's content with as many labs as you can. Beyond that, for me personally, the mid game is as follows. It's, let me get my special paint skills out. <laughs> mid game for me, military, chemical, and walls. If you don't have walls up by the time you hit blue, you're in trouble in any game mode any game mode, even the slowest one which we're playing today. So the critical mass point that we will need to keep our eye on is when blue sign starts hitting labs, if a team isn't defending themselves at this point, they are vulnerable and susceptible to be sniped by a big send. Um, there have been tweaks that Cliff Build, who I need to shout out, one of the new admins on the team, has been implementing. So maybe potentially we're seeing a different meta today. But as far as I'm aware, in the last two years of casting and, and hosting these games, blue is the barrier to a game going long, i.e. into purple, yellow, and white signs, or people getting killed off and monstered early. We'll keep our eyes onto that. We're not far away from blue being kind of thought about, but again, it does take a while to build up. And that's mostly because of things like oil and processing, etc. So yeah, we're, we're not a million miles away from that, but we are, that's kind of the barrier. Emily, Emily Flambe, nice to have you with us. Welcome, I hope you're having a good weekend. If I remember correctly, you're out in the States or Canada, so this must be the morning for you. Uh, I somehow have managed, uh, through my British wizardry, to import MS Paint. Lazy Saturday, excellent. Welcome, firstly. This is slightly different to, if I remember correctly, for anybody out there, Emily is also a streamer, and you should definitely check her stream out. You stream um, SpaceX, if I remember correctly. And I'm in chat pretending I don't know what I'm talking about. Welcome, my name's Ghosty. I'm the undisputed best player in this server. <laughs> That's why I host the game. I'm also incredibly humble and legendary at the same time. Uh, I'm refereeing this game. Uh, I'm just, it's just the wrong time to, uh, <laughs> for me to play. Uh, if you'd like to play, this is a game you'd actually be able to get into. It's PvP. We have a team of 25 versus a team of 24. So we have 50 Factorio nerds all in the same server fighting against each other. Um, you, I'll tell you what I'll do, I'll message you my super secret thing that I've done, but I'm basically, I'm in OBS and I'm able to change my color. This is an old tool by the way, and I would say that it does crash on me at times. There are times where, <laughs> very humble and legendary, excellent. Um, yeah, I'll send you a message if you like, and um, I'll try and show you how to do it. it like 50% of the time it works. But you can also like, if you've got like a, a sketch pad, you can, you know, if you've got like a pad, you can kind of draw your own shapes and arrows and stuff. So <laughs> it's good though. What I like to do is I like to kind of demonstrate, we have lots of, there's like a meta to our game. So we have to kind of explain, for instance, like the topography of the map is very important in this game mode. So going, being able to outline where your defensive build will be so where you'll stick walls, where you want certain production blocks to be. Uh, that's all really important for us in this game mode because we're kind of on the clock here. It looks like a sandbox game, but very quickly you're going to start being pressured and kicked off the map effectively. So um, has been awarded the best. <laughs> and obviously everybody in chat is a massive fan of me. <laughs> but I would say this, and, and I say this every week, I'm not really a very good streamer. I'm still learning how to stream. So. Um, we initially did this because we host tournaments and uh, we, we, I think the winner of the last tournament walked away with about 500 euros, which I think in a dollary dues, American freedom bucks, I think that's something in the region of like 600 bucks, $700 to win. 
So we host 1v1 tournaments, we host these weekend games, which are good fun, there's no money on the line at all. And um, somebody want, and some Bitcoin as well. So the community is quite, like, they're into this, they like this. And I, I love it because uh, every time we play, the map is different. Your teammates all have different play styles, and each team is captained by a veteran player. Today we have Neuro, who's our senior administrator in the Vita Battles community, and he's a captain of the South. And the North, we have the soldier. So uh, these two guys are veterans. They're really strong players, and they'll be on comms. So they'll be coordinating a small business's worth of people, 24 people, uh, all of you know, from all over the world. We have people from America, people from England, uh, France. We have a Frenchman even in chat now, Ness, who is a speedrunner. Enchanté, mon chéri. Uh, we have Germans. It's um, it's a really cool community. I definitely, um, if that's something that you like, not everybody likes the. Some people just want to build a big base and have a really big base. I think I put my points wrong. Who did you vote for, Skelly? South or North? Um, but yeah, there are lots of different ways of playing the game as well. Russian is here. Oh wait, do I know any Russian? How do I say hello? How do I say hello in Russian? I know uh, Obrigad. No, that's, po that's Portuguese. I'm a fucking idiot. Sorry. <laughs> Hola. Bonjour. <laughs> yeah, privyet. Ah, yeah, privyet. That's it. Yes. I used to coach uh, basketball and we had a couple of Russians. They were monsters, mate. Absolute monsters. That's fine. Uh, I'll tell you what. I'll send you a link to our Discord if you like. This is obviously, it's free. You don't need any servers. Uh, you don't need any mods. Sorry, this is not paid. It, you just need a copy of Factorio and then you can come in and play. The community is vibrant. We have lots of different people coming and play. Uh, loads of different, we, what people like to do is design things. So for instance, this is quite new for us. We have, Neuro is kind of like meta-gamed an early science build for us that has gotten his team really, really quick off the mark. And what I'll do is I'll pin that message. There we go. And so his team are zooming through early research. The North are no slouches, but it's taken them a little bit of time. As you can see, not all of the labs are running and they're not all at full speed, so. Yeah. Let me see if there are any late joiners. Uh, and then let's see if we can get anybody else into the game that may have joined us late. If any of these guys want to come in, they can. And yeah, if you don't forget the small neutral land of Switzerland. How do I say hello in Swiss? Oh, you guys are all seeing an advert. I fucking hate adverts, man. Jesus Christ. All right, I'm gonna have some water whilst you guys are in advert land. Sorry. <laughs> but yeah, how do you say hello in Swiss? Swiss? It's not something funky like French. You guys have your own language. I'm almost certain of it. I might be exposing myself. Hoi. That's very Swiss, isn't it? Let's be honest. Hoi hoi. Hello, hello. <laughs> I might start saying that actually. That's a really cool way of saying hello to somebody. It's like English, we just take away the H and it's oi. <laughs> oi you, get over it, you slag. <laughs> yeah. So, oh, sorry. One last thing, Emily. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. This is an educational stream. So we, I have played throughout my time playing this game, every kind of role that you have. There are multiple different functionalities within the game and everybody needs to kind of play their part. So if you have any kind of questions about like why the official Mr. T, who we've sussed out isn't the real Mr. T, you know, the guy with all the jewelry and the mohawk. So we're calling fake news on this. But if Pierre Baracus does want to, uh, to pop in and say hello, feel free. Also work for Dutch. I was talking earlier on, I need to learn some French. I feel like there's so many French people in our community and I just don't know how to. Like, it's not fair for me to expect them to speak English. Let's be honest, that's kind of a bullshit thing to... It just opens Discord shit. <laughs> Remember when I said I wasn't a very good streamer? Yeah, um... Let me find... <laughs> let me find... If you type in... Um... Free Biter Battles. It might be in my Twitch um, description. Um, yeah, it, it might be there. If not, if you if you search for Free Biter Battles, I'm almost certain you'll be able to find it through the search function. But um, we have a couple of thousand of us there, and um, every time we play on the weekend, we have a couple of hundred people involved. So there are different people streaming, different perspectives. If you want to watch a player's perspective, 
Boonboggler is the strongest player in this server at the moment. So yeah, um, check this this guy out. He's streaming at the moment. He's American, I think, or maybe Canadian. I don't want to insult him. I get it wrong. But he's from one of the Freedom Lands out west, and um, he's really good. He's really strong. So they might not be talking too much to chat because they're going to be coordinating between their team. But if I'm if I know correctly, like Rune, Fodeca, Firecliff, they're all good friends. They play this constantly together. So they've kind of wingle wangled, which is a very British way of saying figured out a way to. Um, Skill issue, don't worry, mate. Heavy night last night? <laughs> I had an absolutely cracking night last night. You know, on those nights where you just, I, I know you guys don't have pubs, I think bars may be a little bit more appropriate, but I bumped into some old mates. We had a few too many beers. We stayed until the bar closed. It's been years since I've done that, and I had a great time. So, um, yeah, I'm slightly hungover today. <laughs> Half an hour later, ooh, careful. Got to be careful there, you know. I'm not an alcoholic. Alcoholics go to meetings. <laughs> but yeah, um, let's take a zoom out real quick and have a look at our outposters. We have some absolute mad lads out here. Again, the, this is why I don't think he's real. Because he wouldn't be sleeping on the job if he was the real Mr. T. But as always, we put F in chat. Lazy official Mr. T, sleeping on the job. What Mr. T is currently doing for anybody that's new that's watching, is he's affecting the game state by killing the bugs off whilst they're really, really weak. Um, as we all know, the South and the North are populated by... <laughs> it's all good. Welcome. You'll find, you'll find loads of different channels. Uh, we have like a learn channel, we have like a meta type channel, a, a captain's game. We also, by the way, we are fans of Biter Battles and we're here for that, but we do host these huge space exploration K2 modded runs. We also mod this version of Factorio, so we've had different um, scenarios being put forward. So it's not always vanilla. We have people working in the background on kind of new, cool um, ways to make this fun. So like elemental bugs or different, you know, towers that do different things. So like shotgun towers, sniper towers, that kind of thing. So we're just fans of the game. Uh, admittedly, these are some of the nerdiest of the nerds that you will meet. They're lovely people, by the way. But as you do know, um, some people in the Factorio community are a little bit... Um, how, do I, how do I say this politely? They are... Oh, I'm trying to come up with a diplomatic way of saying this. They're very set in the way that they want the game to be played. <laughs> I can put that in a nice term. Um, and so... People do disagree sometimes about the most operant way of building, but that's why we like to get people intense. Yeah, that's totally the right. Yeah, sorry, I was trying to look. I don't want to say it, it takes a very kind of special kind of person to be this detail orientated about input and output and, and flow and resource management, right? I don't come from like an IT background, I'm actually a sports coach. We were talking about this last night actually. Almost everybody in our server have like a job in the IT sector or in engineering. I am literally one of the only people that there's nothing to do with. I mean, I come from competitive games, but not this kind of competitive game. Like, I hit top rank in Dota at one point. Um, well, sorry, top 500, not top rank. Idiot. I was going to get there and then university took over. People are opinionated, that's correct, yeah. So when we have disagreements, it's always good to kind of just talk about it rather than fall out. And that's what I like this community is. We always go back to, is it making us win? Like, forget whether you want oil to be made over here or, you know, you want your oil processing here. Will it help us win? Yes, let's get it up. You know, let's work together because the bugs are coming. Throughout the game, if I can get my MS Paint tools out again, you'll see to the north, we have a large red area of bugs. Over the course of this game, they will get stronger, they will evolve, and they will come crashing down onto your building. So the way that we fight that off is we need to build huge defensive structures. We need to castle up. We need to build a huge castle that basically shields our main base from being attacked. Behind that obviously put a load of defensive structures. The idea of the game, for anybody that's new, is each team has a rocket silo. You get this for free. In the north it exists in exactly the same place as it does the south. The maps are just flipped effectively. So there's no inherent advantage to be on the north or the south. If you lose this silo on either side of the game, you lose. If this hits zero HP and goes bang, GG, the game is done. 
Oh, also, um, you won't hear my dog today. He is away with my girlfriend. She's taking him out for a day because it's nice and sunny. So all of you guys that have been not complaining, but saying you can hear a dog in the background today, you won't, luckily. Uh, but he's a very good boy and uh, it's nice and sunny. So I've said, just go out and have some fun. <laughs> I happen to be a software engineer but with a looser commitment to perfection. Yeah, you guys are nuts, man. Like I, I, I'm not, I'm like a jock, I guess. I'm not from a n IT nerd type setup. I'm, I'm massively respected by the way, it's like an alien language to me. If you want me to teach you how to bounce a basketball better or how to play rugby then I'm your guy, 100%. If you need like tips on lifting weights, 100% I can show you what to do. But in terms of like coding language and some of the stuff you guys talk about is wild. Like how the hell do you understand any of that? I don't even know. Like I think I misspent my youth <laughs> playing sports. Because you guys get paid a fucking bomb as well, like I'm not going to lie. I look at some of the, obviously not everybody, but if you work for like Fang, is it? I've recently heard about Fang, like Facebook and Apple and all that. You guys get paid a ton. And I would love to be able to get that kind of cash, holy crap. <laughs> Google is your friend, I know, I've heard about this, I've heard about this. GitHub as well, people stealing stuff and copy pasting it. Unreal. Uh, you've got my respect, by the way. I don't say that in jest as in like, oh, look at these nerds fucking being nerds. Massive respect to all of you. I I just don't think my brain works like that. You know? I, I'm, I'm older as well. So uh, it's not that I'm super old, but I'm old enough to know what I don't know. And when I look at some of the coding stuff, somebody messaged me something going, can you, can you have a look at this? And it was like a foreign language. I was like, mate, I'm not the admin. You want, <laughs> like, if you want to propose a balance change, Talk to Cliff. <laughs> yeah, it's weird though. It, it's awakened something. <laughs> that sounds terrible. That sounds like the start of a porno. <laughs> something awakened deep inside of me. The thing with the thing with sports is strategy, systems, getting people on side, learning what people's strengths are and what their weaknesses are. Like the way the people learn. So I live in a really rough part of London. I'm North London. And some of the kids that come to my gyms and some of the kids I coach, they're, they're rough around the edges, man. They don't want to hear what you have to say. And so understanding their language and trying to put things... Some people just like to be told bluntly that they're shit and they need to work on stuff. And some people will literally threaten to stab you if you give them the wrong kind of feedback. So I feel like what makes me useful and good at what I do is being able to kind of figure out that quite quickly and, uh, and, and operate safely, obviously, in those environments like... I don't think I'm going to be doing it for... I've seen this, yeah, yeah, there, there's like a very close parallel. Because this effectively is circuitry, right? If in the broadest strokes possible, this is all circuitry. This is you know, resource harvesting, processing, and then cr like turning them into some kind of functional piece of data that then provides your team some kind of advantage. Again, not the best person to explain. If any of you want to actually talk to me about what you do and how you play, feel free to fill me in don't get me wrong when i play the game i win and that's one thing i would like to say I, i'm i'm talking like i'm a noob i'm not like i have a 100 percent win rate when i'm captaining these games but that's mostly because i think i'm quite good at weaponizing the noobs you know grabbing a player that is kind of new in the server and going hey mate join me let's do something uh, i get people on side that way i'm like the friendly captain rather than the detail orientated we need this by this time this much throughput you know, these builds need to be fed by XYZ. Nah, no, that's not me. But yeah, welcome, by the way. I think so too. And I, again, I think it comes back down to like, the, so when you guys talk to each other, like, you have this like nerd speak that I just don't get. Right? Like you talk about throughput optimizations. It genuinely, I, I get it. Like I'm talking like I'm an idiot. I get it, but I don't fully get it. Whereas I feel like being able to just kind of break it down into, right guys, how are we feeling? How is everyone? You know, keep the mood up, you know, sometimes that, especially in these long games, and these games do go on sometimes for hours. We're talking about like a six, seven hour game here to win. It's great when you do, and it sucks when you lose, but when you have over 20 people in the same team working hard, pushing all the way through to the very depths of the game, um, seeing the evolution hit like 300%, you know, millions of bugs that you're fighting. Oh no, tear went down to a worm. No, that's death number four. <laughs> Remember to put F in chat. Oh dear, I mean, I, I don't know. Do you know what, it's interesting actually. I was talking to my missus about this. 
I'm not exactly sure what I want to do. It's a weird one. Like, I've always been down for a bit of adventure. I think that's why I enjoy streaming. It's something that I would never normally have done. Uh, I've never actually mentioned this on stream. I don't know if I really... I'm not going to go into too much detail, but... Um, my friend... My college... So college for us is high school in England. Uh, again, I apologise if this is like a trigger or if this is like... Um, if this if this is a bit emotional. I, I, I'm not meant to... I'm not trying to get emotional, but... Um, a friend of mine has a degenerative, if I can say the word correctly, a degenerative disease. I've known him since I was 18 years old. I'm in my 30s now, without giving away too much. I'm not super old, but I'm getting old. I'm ancient, according to some teenagers. And um, he's now fully in a wheelchair. He doesn't have the use of his, like, elbows, shoulders, um, hands. Like, he's just lost all functionality. And I used to play rugby with him. He's a great guy, a really fucking good guy, literally the nicest person you'd ever meet. And he showed me this game mode whilst he still had use of his body. So I said to him, I was like, well, why don't I play with you? Like, whilst you, he knew this was coming. This wasn't like out of the blue. Uh, this is like a genetic, gen degenerative, I can't fucking say the word, degenerative disorder that happens as you turn 30 and 40. So he's actually in chat now. He's actually watching. And I message him every day when I do stream to say, hey, mate, if you can, log in and join me. And so I started streaming to basically kind of keep in touch with him. I'm not going to out him. I'm not going to tell you who he is. He does talk in chat every now and again. He's got a um, text to a speech to text machine that he uses. His wheelchair is like a NASA level. He's got loads of buttons and gears and stuff and screens and all that jazz. But effectively, um, I started streaming because he it was a chance for me to share, like spend a bit of time with him. Um, and that's why at the beginning there was like two people that would watch. It'd be me, him, and some random person that's found us. And it genuinely does, and I'm not just saying this, just because there's people here, it genuinely warms my heart that um, that people join me every week, you know. Um, maybe one day, I mean, I want to make him a mod, but then that shows who he is, if that makes sense. And I think he likes just sinking into the background. And, and you guys are talking to him, by the way. You have had chats with him. He's the one that gives me shit all the time. <laughs> like, if you, I'm not, I don't want to out him, but like, if you see somebody giving me shit, it's him, 100%. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I just feel like, you know what? Um, it, it, it's like take the ego out of it right if I was in his position I'd feel like shit you know we talk I talk to him all the time about keeping his head up and you know just staying positive because there's still a lot to offer do you know what I mean yeah coffee does and I, I will need a coffee at some point in this game well thank you Leganto CZ I'm guessing that you're from the Czech Republic welcome thank you for uh I was just sharing a bit of personal. Obviously, I don't want to dox myself. I've learned about not doing that. <laughs> I don't want to tell you exactly where I live. I said the other day, I was like, I got locked. So, oh, tangents. I got locked out of my flat by the armed police because a flat below me was getting raided. <laughs> so I came really late to a game. Basically, the captain's game started. I was meant to be refereeing it. And I watched them disassemble some meth lab <laughs> out of my block of flats. I came on stream and I was like, fucking hell, boys. If any of you Google meth labs in London, you'll find me. <laughs> like, we were on the BBC News. <laughs> there, was, <laughs> there was a fucking... Oh, my God. Yeah, we're like 10 levels in. We're like 10 levels in. Um, we, um, I was like, on BBC News that night, I could point you where my bedroom window was. <laughs> there was, like, this copper in one of those full white suits, you know, with, like, the hazmat, like a Breaking Bad suit. And they were, like, dragging all this chemistry equipment out. And I was like, I need to fucking move, mate. <laughs> I need to get the fuck out of here. This place is dive. Oh, it's cheap, but fucking hell, mate. Not good. Um, so yeah, career pivots. Somebody said OnlyFans. Absolutely not. <laughs> I'm not selling feet pits. You can't make me. Um, it's not that bad. But um, yeah, it's, it's a weird one. I'm, I'm, I'm not too sure what I want to do. Any suggestions? I'll take a look. I was talking to Tech Priest. You know, like, I learned something the other day. I love this as well. I love finding out about other people's passions. Tech Priest is a concrete engineer hobbyist. I had no idea concrete engineering was a thing. So I spent the entire night looking up, you know, what it is, like how you get into that kind of thing. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> oh, God. Can you imagine the weirdos that you'd see in there? I just can't. I, I have too much respect to myself to. I joke, but genuine. I would rather go and get a job at McDonald's and just earn a solid decent normal wage than getting my butthole out for cash it's not happening for any of you that keep asking for it to happen it's not happening uh, oh i've got a phone call give me a second i just need to talk to my missus i'll be back in a sec
Awesome, everything's good. My dog is asleep at the moment at my girlfriend's and they've had a great day, which is really, really good to hear. Get my butt, yeah, I know, right? I just, <laughs> there's just something about it. And the music's dead, really? Aw. What do we want to listen to, everybody? I've done samba, we've done funk. There's some rock on. I've got some really good rock. Yeah, let's get a rock playlist on. We did this last week, it kind of worked. Or I think it worked. Apologies if it didn't work to anybody that, that doesn't like rock music. We'll go through the gamut. We have a whole couple of hours together if you are here for the whole time. Also, these games are long. I don't expect everybody to sit through the entirety of it. So it's nice of you guys to be here. But if you need to dip away and get food, remember to have like water and stretch and take breaks. This isn't like a hardcore, I need to be here till the end. Like tune in when you can and welcome. I love podcasts. I love it. I love books. I'm a huge reader. I, I love reading stuff. And Defenders have kicked in on North. Finally, I can I can tangentially move the conversation towards something that's happening in game. <laughs> um, Defenders are a huge win for the North, by the way. They'll be able to drive their threat number massively down. But yeah, books, podcasts, you name it. The older I get, the real the more I realize I need to learn more things. Right. So we're talking earlier about learning a bit of French. I need to keep the brain going. You know. I'm not a smart man. I'm not like the smartest man alive, certainly not. But I recognize that I have some weak spots, like for instance, programming. I don't need to know everything, but I want to know stuff. You know, I want to have a, a dearth of knowledge. What great word, by the way, dearth. Have you guys ever heard that before? Any of you non-English speakers, that is actually a word and you can use it. And if you do, you will be called AI generated text. Because apparently if you use the word delve, that means that you're AI generated text. So I'm officially ChatGPT, welcome. I am your new AI overlord. I'm not actually English, by the way. I'm not even real. <laughs> I am fake news. Uh, welcome to the apocalypse. Defenders are here. So, Killer is performing an incredibly, a new one's to see what excellent. Killer's performing an incredibly important role at the moment. And it's, it cannot be understated how impactful doing this job is. Once I get this new player into the team, and all he has to do is click a button. He said he wants to play, and now he doesn't. All right, mate, you can just sit on Spectator Island for a second. Uh, Killer is currently, with the help of tiny little flying robots, um, killing off the bugs and shoving the front line back. The reason we do this is that down the line, the bugs become so large and so vicious that we cannot face them face to face. So by shoving the front line deeper into the map, for instance, driving the bugs further into their own territory, we're able to establish a further front line um, at the moment, obviously, we're playing on the easiest game mode, but the way that you pump the opposition bugs up is you grab a load of science jugs, and this is what makes this game mode so fun, is you grab a load of science jugs and you throw them. Every time you throw the different levels of science, you pump the bugs up to a different degree. So Nuro, the South's captain, has taken 317 jugs, a bit of a random number, but 300 is a strong number, and at this low point has changed the North's bugs to be 8.8% more evolved. What that means is they're now sat at 15%. I know it's my language. I can butcher it how I like. <laughs> yeah, no, I've butchered that, haven't I? Sorry, guys. I'll come up. I'll try and find some other cool English words that maybe you don't know that you could throw out to impress your English friends or scare your coworkers into thinking, wow, this guy's way too smart. Um, yeah, so the South, as you can see, are dealing with 6% evolved bugs, but the North are dealing with 16. And that 10% difference does matter because what you're doing is using more bullets to kill the same enemy to achieve the same result. So the, the bugs are stronger, they have more armor, they kill you faster, they run faster. And so over time, being able to influence the evolution by throwing science and not researching with it, you can throw the enemy team off. And at the moment, it's kind of easy for Killer because he's got lots of these uh, defenders out. But down the line, if this evolution number goes to 25, 35, 45%, he won't be able to be here for much longer. He'll actually need a lot more resources to kill off the bugs. So the way that this game works is you throw science and affect the opposition side of life. And if I have a look here, we've been changing the feed values recently. Uh, you know, obviously red science is level one, it's the easiest to build. It doesn't do a huge multiplier. However, if you send rockets to space, the mutagen multiply is 555 times takes a lot more resources, but the efficiency rate is higher as well. So sending space science, getting rockets and sending them, is a really big deal. And later on in the game, I think with this standard of players, the standard of team that we have, we will see rockets 
gets sent. And it's really just a matter of if either team can keep the pace. In this game mode, you can gain an advantage. You can also lose one very quickly too. So um, I believe that the South took a research advantage early on. Um, I haven't checked their labs recently, but if I do, we've got everything coming in. Blue is slightly slow, but that's normal. Whilst they get, you know, kind of their production up and running. So the labs are fully functioning, firing, and equally so on the north we have the first four sciences. So we're comfortably into the mid game now, I would assume. We're at an hour in as well, so this is really good speed. If you're talking about like time stamping speed runs, an hour in to have most of the labs running on most of this science means that we'll be absolutely flying. If I check in on the research queue, batteries, advanced oil, lubricant, electrical engines, speed modules, all very important researches for the north. And if I head on to the south real quick, because I get thrown back to Spectator Island, perfect, lasers, laser towers, and then we want our robots to go faster. So I think that the south are two to three, research is ahead, which in, in real terms is about five to ten minutes. Neuro has taken down his initial build here and then repurposed all of the labs over here in this incredibly tall <laughs> lab stack, which I've never seen before. Normally they're kind of short and fat, but all sizes and shapes. And that's a great, great point, Ichani. At some point, walls must be produced. You, can, you can't threat farm forever. This is kind of how I ended up in the top five in the server, is I kind of made the most of threat farming. We also have recently been messing around with evolution and sending. I believe Cliff Build optimized some code. Again, programming stuff I know very little of. I can say the words. What it means is absolutely alien to me. But threat farming has been buffed and nerfed, and so has um, the mutagen side of life. So we should see today a more balanced and efficient endgame in terms of server lag, as well as entity spawn. So the reason why we're running ITYTD today rather than POC as a, as a difficulty mode is because of that particular reason. We need to see some walls, boys. And girls, sorry, I don't want to just, you know, I don't want to judge. Um, defenders are being created. You'll love to see it. Landfills being made so we can fill in some of these lakes. And um, we need an outline at the bare minimum. Like, yes, you can like obviously wall yourself off to the south, but later on in the game, you will need, if I delve back into my high level NASA style MS paint, <laughs> we see a blueprint up here actually, in fact. You need to kind of draw some battle lines. Eventually the bugs will aggress onto you. That is a given. Every game happens. No game do you survive without kind of walling yourself in. You know, is this area too large? Let's say for instance, we just take this, the, the white lines being the defensive line, right? That's where your wall is. Is this too far for a robot to fly, right? Walls are being built in a chest. Is flying them out here too far? You know, do we, do we want to be a bit more economical and actually wall up a little closer so that the robots make a shorter distance kind of run to maybe here where we just wall between these two lakes? All of this stuff influences the game. So the way that the captain works is that he is basically dictating uh, without the emphasis on the dick, um, the game mode and the game state and the kind of build philosophy. And he doesn't have a lot of time to figure this out. So where you build your defenses, and again, Echan, great, great question. Who's prioritizing walls? Are we optimizing our stone patch? Do we have all of this coming out fast? No, and are we building them? You know, or are we forcing bricks off the beaten path? This is slightly scary to me because we see games end early like this. You know, meanwhile, I mean, yes, we do for the south. We do have like, a thousand. Here we go. So we have a box of a thousand, a box of almost 300. That's more than enough to even just build a two thick wall. Again, they're not being aggressed on, so it's not the biggest of deal, but eventually, right? We're talking about down the line. I, I always put this down as a marker, but for the easier game modes, by the one hour and 30 minutes to the one hour and 40 minutes mark, if you don't even have a blueprint down, you will regret it. You, you will sit there as you're getting attacked and as your bases are being pulled up out of the ground, someone will go, oh my God, where's our defense? It's here, it's just not been realized, right? Go over here with some pipes, with some flame turrets, do it yourself. <laughs> Don't wait for someone else to do it because they won't. <laughs> they literally won't, so. Right, so that guy didn't want to join, but that's fine. And yeah, so yeah, we're, we're looking at some really solid threat farming on both sides. I can imagine as well, they go deep into the kind of shooting upgrades and the, and the damage and penetration upgrades, etc. So yeah, we're looking at a really nice opening beginning of the game. I like the fact that Neuro sent a little bit of science early. It just means you need a little bit more. 
know, you need a few more bullets, a few more grenades. Your defenders don't go as far as you want them to. And obviously, you don't have an infinite amount of resources. Eventually, you know, the bugs will spawn, positive. When they do that, huge packs and waves of them will flood through your base. They'll become aggressive. At the moment, they're very passive because the, neg the number is in the negative. Again, if you have any questions on threat farming, um, feel free to ask. Uh, this is kind of where I made my name uh, in the server and how I became the Minister of Defense. Um, that is actually a title that I was gifted. I didn't give it myself. I was gifted that title uh, because I'm the best defensive slash offensive player in the uh, in the game. So yeah, once the bugs become aggressive, it will crash into everything that you have. It's at that point that you wish you had the walls you could have been building before. Anyway. Enough doom and gloom. Let's scan about and see what these outpost mad lads are doing at the moment. They have robots, of course they do. Carl over here. This guy is Carl. He is a nightmare person. He plays very, very fast. And if he's against you, there's a good chance you lose. Unfortunately, he's German as well. So he has 10% efficiency bonus purely just for being German. That's not racist. That's just the truth. <laughs> I'm, I like Carl, by the way. People think I don't like him. I really like Carl. He's good fun. And he can take a joke. I think initially when I first landed in the server, people thought I was serious when I called myself like the best player ever. It was a joke. <laughs> it's complete tongue in cheek. Um, some people do actually take themselves way too seriously and I like to kind of, you know, poke fun at that. Um, so yeah, this outpost is flying at the moment. Uh, which team gets first pick next? I believe it's North. I've been sending people to North a whole lot. Oh, I don't like doing this, but I guess it has to be done. Developer, we see the beginning of an endgame mixer coming out now from Vortex. Meanwhile, Prox, Granly, Claw. This has to be. They go nuclear out here? I mean, I don't. Yeah, of course. Of oh, fucking course they have. Oh my god, how. One, two, three. Of the best players in the server. Do they want to play normally? No. Do they want to spam? Yes. I mean, it's quick. I'm not. That is really quick, actually. To be fair, we're at one hour and eleven minutes in, and we're chesting purple signs with modded assembly uh, twos as well with um, odd mods. Fair play. That will that will really rattle the opposite team when they when they send eventually. That so that will egregiously shoot the evolution up to a number that they won't be able to uh, to deal with, so. I know, it's so, uh, the thing is, you take your eye off the ball for a second and you go, you know, we have a little ramble and a rant about my mate, and then all of a sudden you check over into one area and you're like, oh, they have 5,000 yellow signs in a box. <laughs> How did that happen? But they're continuing with the threat farm. If you can get that number to the minus 20,000, if you can get it to the minus 100,000, you can actually absorb a few rockets. So um, yeah, I'm interested. I, I like to see what I'm seeing here. Fodeca, meanwhile, and the outpost out here with Cliff Build, Fire, and Rune Boggler is flying. Rune Boggler is ridiculously quick, and um, these little kind of late game stacked columns are being put into rows, are churning out everything you could possibly want and more. And uh, we can see here chests of green chips, red chips. Down the line, obviously, we'll see blue chips come out of here too. And uh, yeah, you love to see it, man. These guys are playing for keeps. You know, the thing I always say is if you're going to play a game for like four or five hours, you kind of want to win, right? Not at all costs. You don't want to piss people off. I'm losing frames a little bit. I am indeed. We have done some optimizations. So I'm interested to see. Apparently, we won't lag as much at the end of the game. All of us combined. So um, Cliff has gone in and fixed what I can only describe as spaghetti code. I don't know what that means, but apparently the code is very spaghetti-esque, Italian cuisine coding, <laughs> which was causing lag in the mid to the end of the games. I've been told, or I've been informed and have it on good authority that that is no longer the case. So that was patched two days ago on our server side. So today we will see the, uh, the outcome of that patch effectively. So what's been changed recently is mutagen has changed and Feed values were changed a week ago, I think, or even two weeks ago now. Um, and late game spawning, behemoths, bugs, and the UPS FPS dropping has also been tweaked and tweaked. So we, the, lots of stuff has been moved around. Today is kind of like a bit of a test game. 
it's obviously a serious game and a game that we want to win, but we're kind of testing out some changes. So um, I'm excited. I love the fact that we're running backwards on the main map too. That's, we'd love to see it. And South will get first pick. If these people who say they want to play actually click the yes please button, if not, we'll just crack on with them, um, have a look around the map. Okay. Heading out west, and Melek has a small outpost that's just about getting up and running. Never too sure what Amelik is going to do. Very strong player. Tamina, I think this is a shadow account. I think this is a shadow account because somebody earlier on was, I think they put themselves up for captain, but they have zero games in the server. And this is a really nice spot to exist in. So I'm going to keep an eye on this Tamina person. Max 1000. It's creating what looks to me a little bit of like spam. Uh, it, well, you're playing from well, you're logging in from Germany, so you shouldn't. I believe the server's in France. There shouldn't be a huge lag now, but obviously, if we get to the four, five hour mark, there is potential for some PCs to. And also, again, I don't want to kind of PC shame, but if it's like an older model or an older um, processor, potentially, maybe there might be. Nah, my PC is garbage. <laughs> Oh, my stream. Um, I have, let me take a look. I've only dropped three frames. So I don't know, man. I, I'm hoping, I haven't changed anything. So I'm hoping that it's all the same as last time. <laughs> um, but the good news, and this is awesome. Uh, I have, I've done some overtime this, this month. Again, I, I talk, I do talk about myself a lot, I do apologise, we will talk about the game as well. I, did, I pulled some overtime, I've had some extra bits and pieces, and um, I, I can upgrade my computer. This is like a gaming PC, it's not a streaming PC at all, it's not strong enough I don't think for a full stream type PC, so uh, I'm actually upgrading my setup. So hopefully, in the not too distant future, and I'm talking like a week, maybe more than a week, uh, I will be picking up something that's an absolute monster, and uh, that will basically, I'll be playing the game on one PC, and then on another PC, that'll be the streaming side of things. A little bit nerdy, I know. I fucking no idea, mate. I thought that when you stream, you just literally click on a button and then you stream. Apparently, there's loads of stuff to it. And yeah, luckily, touch wood as well, we haven't had many trolls or people trying to click on this link and, you know, find sexy girls. You know, luckily, we've avoided that and I'm really glad that we have. Um, we've had some people disagree, that's fine. I'm not going to ban people if they don't like what they see, or if they've got opinions. I will start banning people if you start acting like a dick. It's really simple, I have like one one rule, I guess you could call it. It's not even like a rule, it's just don't be a dick, you know. I don't mind if you have a different opinion. I'm not really here to talk politics, I'm not really here to talk world events. Um, you know, if you want to talk about it, I, like I don't mind, but if it, if it starts going off piste, people start arguing about different niche things, come on man, we're here for video games. You know, I'm not trying to be awkward and avoid a conversation, but I don't want to be deplatformed because, yeah, something controversial has happened in the world. This is more of an escape, you know. Uh, if it wasn't for this now, I'd be out with my dog in the sunshine. But I'm kind of hungover and I'd like to be here. <laughs> if Very, very, you're right. You're absolutely right. If you're being a dick, get kicked. The same as in the game. In this game right now. I'm sure there are people that don't like playing with each other. That's fine. You don't have to be everybody's best mate. I am, obviously, because I'm amazing. Like, there's nothing wrong with me at all. I'm the best human being that's ever lived, so why wouldn't anybody get on with me? But if... <laughs> again, if anybody doesn't get it, you can play humour. Um, but... You are... Yeah. But at the same time, um, try and be nice to each other. You know, try and be kind. I think that's the key thing here. It's not a lot of kindness. Um, in the modern day and age. It's very easy to, to break somebody down and say, oh, you know, you're ugly, you're fat, you're useless, blah, 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 all that bullshit, right? But you don't have to be nice, but try and be kind, man. Try and understand that everyone's got a fucking pressure on them. Everybody's got problems, like, you know, blowing somebody up for the most smallest and minor of things is not worth it. Try and try and be kind to people, like. did mess up the grammar, didn't I? 
<laughs> I'm glad you do, mate. I'm glad you do. Again, it's a small minority of people that think I'm serious when I say that I'm amazing and I'm a legend, but you know what I mean. I, where that comes from, by the way, I don't think I've ever fully explained it. I used to coach Dota. I know some of you guys might know about Dota too. Uh, I used to coach Dota back in the day, many years ago, many, many years ago. In fact, I was at university, so more than a decade ago, I, I used to coach. And um, I used to coach players who would actually believe. Like, I, and I kid you not, they would actually believe that they were the best player that's ever lived. You know, you're talking about, oh, and there it is, Ooh, <laughs> a thousand purple jugs. Sorry, I'll divert back onto that topic. But this is the crux of the game. With a thousand purple jugs sent at this early, early stage, the bugs jump from 8.5 on south to 53%. They're still in the negative threat because of their threat farming, but if you don't get a wall down soon, these bugs now have evolved too big. So they've gone through the medium stage, which are these pink shelled bugs, and they have now evolved into these blue shelled big biters. These are hard to deal with. You need a lot of bullets, even with defenders, you need a lot of bullets, you need a lot of grenades, and you need a lot of healing because they are fast enough to catch you now. As you can see, even a few grenades, they weather the storm. They can handle that. So if I'm on south now, I'm sat there going, you know what, another thousand purple in time that gets sent to us may push us into the positive now. We can't kill the bugs as fast as we used to, which means that this number will start increasing. And we need to start looking at how we defend ourselves because at the moment, their base is open. It's 100% why you build a wall. Always, always anticipate an aggressive move from your opponent. There's no point, like, think of it as a boxing match. Nobody gets into a boxing match thinking about not throwing a punch. You need to be able to, to throw a punch or, or have the, like, the offensive opportunity and capability. You don't necessarily need to use it, but you have to have it. And same way with defenses, you wouldn't get into a fight and let somebody hit you and not defend yourself, right? This, at the bare minimum, is a beginning of that defense. It's not a sandbox. They're coming for you, man. They're coming for you. And people get people get drowsy, man. They get sleepy. They're like, oh, I've been playing Factorio for an hour. La la la, threat farming, or la la, building main. Oh, wait, all of my power just got killed. <laughs> what happened here? You know? What do you mean that, you know, the other team want me to lose? That's not allowed. Luckily, we have like 2k walls here. Don't wait for bots. Don't be lazy. I, I, I'm gonna make a video about this actually because I've been making some tutorial videos. Like, don't be lazy. When you get bots, that you should speed yourself up. That shouldn't slow you down where you're stood still and you're just, you know, blueprinting all over the map. At that point, get more active. You can see, I've seen speedrunners, Derek does it, does it from Team McIntyre. The moment he gets bots, he doesn't just stop. He wants to go for a world record. He needs to keep going fast. So it, you, you could get lazy with it. But once you get those little flying robots, speed up. Trust me, it will work. It's worth it. We don't see purple coming into labs just yet, but we do see it being kind of hinted at over here. And obviously purple and yellow signs are kind of near the end of your tech tree, which is awesome. Uh, we'll dive into that research very soon. But just for now, it's such a sprawling environment in the south that I'm slightly worried about where you'd even begin to defend. Because... Like, if I, if I just draw a box real quick, right, this is kind of like a main base area, right? You kind of need to defend this. This is big power. This is your production. This is your research, right? This needs to stay on the map. But if you start building and defending stuff that you don't need to, let's say, for instance, you like sweep up this base to the left. All of this area, right? All of this area is more space that your bots need to fly out and it's more walls that you need. So it's further you have to run to defend. I would argue if you're not going for like a rocket in the main base, stick to the initial like white box I've drawn, keep it small, and turtle yourself up to the point where you can run to any problem that presents itself. You don't want to be running an extra, you know, 10 seconds, 15 seconds to fix a problem when you can be local to you and you can just quickly dive out, fix a wall, put down another turret, and keep yourself safe. So yeah, I'm worried about the south. They don't really have any defensive ambition at the moment. And it's great doing this threat farming, but eventually they get you, man. Look at that. They do eventually get you. And these bugs are very close to an outpost. You know, if this outpost is looking to build a rocket, you need to keep yourself safe. Now again, obviously these guys have flown into the end game very quickly. We have blue chips, we have LDS. This is gonna get a rocket. 
you know, relatively quickly, as we expected from Carl, Kutnyama, Everlord, and Morgoth. Um, I just, I like the fact that Pipes and Qcrat have said, you know, we need to shake the tree. And the way that we do that is by using purple science as our weapon. You know, yellow science is expensive. Yes, down the line we can create some, but early game, let's race to purple science, shake the tree, force the evolution up for the south, make them uncomfortable, make life hard for them. But, although that said, this is a great adaptation. Initially, this was a defensive base, right? Or sorry, an offensive base. You build up a load of defenders. Initially, it's grenades and just bullets. Go out and fight the bugs. Now, they're creating lasers. That's kind of cool. So what? So if I'm looking at this correctly, Tio Marx's base here is effectively going to provide defenses for main. But that then means that you have to defend this base as well. I don't know, is, is it asking a bit too much? Because having a huge front line does not help you. You, know, you need a wall pattern, you need effectively lasers, and you know all of this stuff is needed, necessary. But we're approaching the 1 hour and 30 mark and I don't see a single flame tower down. Again, it's on ITYTD. Oh, I know, I, like fundamentally, I know that a lot of people will say, well, why? Like, we can just threat farm forever. But you, when you need it and you don't have it, it's fucking painful, mate. Like, you'll be running around like your ass is on fire. Um, it's not easy. You know, these bugs don't go down with two or three bullets. They go down with 10 to 15 now, meaning you're going to run out quicker. These defenders are going to get taken out of the sky eventually. They're weaker now. Um, so, yeah. With that said though, I'm going to take the first of a very short break and um, I'm going to just get some, uh, I'm going to get something to eat really quickly. So I think everybody that's watching or listening, maybe take a quick second to go and grab some water or hydrate, stretch, take a quick break. I'll be back in like a minute. I just need to dig something out of the fridge really. Sandwich, I think that'll do. But yeah, meet me back here in a minute, guys. Catch you then. Okay, I am back with some food. So if I pause the mic and you don't hear me speaking, it's because I'm munching away. But we are looking now at some great researches. So we will be going nuke. We will be doing automation three. Rocket fuel, obviously you need to fuel a rocket to send one to space. That's some really nice research from the south. And the north seam a little behind the green sciences? The... Are they just not producing enough? Ah, okay, right. So they're not really able to maximize the amount of stuff they have in their labs. But they're moving forward. Concrete, uranium processing, uh, yellow signs, more shooting upgrades, military three, rails and mining prod. The south are comfortably ahead. Although, 
I mean, you saw how fast they ripped those buildings up, right? That was quick. Now imagine that slamming into any of this. You know, that's why we need walls. Where is the defense? It's amazing. This is really good timing. One hour 30, we've got almost everything but yellow in labs, right? And we are screaming forward. Loads of stuff on the belt. The bugs eventually are gonna start getting aggressive. And I think once I was gone, there was another throw, right? Yeah, another 800, increasing the, uh, the Evo jump by 10 points. So now the South are dealing with 63% strength bugs. Eventually this number is gonna go positive and you guys are so, so fucked. <sighs> Come on, are you waiting for bots? There's no way, there's no way you play this well and you just don't put walls down. That's like fundamentally a terrible idea. Is the idea that they don't put any defense? The issue I have as well is like, the moment bugs appear here, not everybody's gonna be equipped to deal with them. At the moment, people with defenders are dying to the bugs, right? The number's closing in, like it's increasing. When this goes positive, every single part of the map is in danger to the south. And the same with the North. If the North go positive, every single player in the North is in danger. Pabev is struggling to kill them. Having to use pipes to wall them off. Look how long it takes to kill a single bug. And he may go down as well, meaning that the bugs will start aggressing onto all of the buildings here. This is not ideal. Does he have enough healing on him? No, he walls himself off. If any of this base goes down now, that's a huge, huge mistake. Somebody somewhere is making lasers. I'm almost certain of it. It was over here, right? There are 59 in a box. I just, I'm, it's flabbergasted really. It's a very simple mistake, but I'm gonna say it every week. In fact, I'm gonna change some of the emoticons that I've got. Um, to more Factorio related emoticons and one of them will be this little wall icon <laughs> you know because here we have the north some flamer towers down some walls and a pattern this is really important because you're never gonna sit in this kind of um I know I, I don't know why uh, don't get me wrong if you're the main builder so if you're neuro, neuro you're juggling so many different things you're juggling outputs throughputs you know, the build itself, you're designing all of this and you're making it happen, that's great. And there's, there's nothing wrong with how they've gone. And they've done everything they could possibly want, including build the walls. Somebody's picked them up though. Somebody's picked them up. Blitzy has. Where is Blitzy walling though? Anywhere. Honestly, at this point, mate, there are no wrong answers. <laughs> there are no wrong answers. Put one down. You can always build another one later. You can build it further in. Yeah, it's straight away. You're 100% right, Achan. 100%, just build them. Scream at the team, it doesn't matter. Like, okay, fine, if this isn't level with this, just put them down. Have them, you own them, you built them, put them down. You know, it would be a shame if you could have won this game, but instead lost it because everything you were doing correct, but the cheapest thing that you could possibly create that you can make from the beginning of the game, is sat in a box. And they're about to go pot, they've gone positive. The South need a wall down yesterday. I would grab other people, man. I would I would grab other people and say, look, you need to fucking, yeah, you know, take a thousand walls off me, I have 2K, you go left, I go right, and we just build something because at the moment this isn't enough. And uh, the South are in a lot of trouble here. I don't know if they have lasers out here to defend the outpost. I know they don't have defenders. As we see a car pancaked into the ground. Uh, at 66% as well, you're kind of reaching the end of the, the, the level in which you can threat farm. 60 to 70% is where you become less useful, unless you have the uh, more advanced armor. Um, as we'll see here, uh, Defan Defines uh, is going to kind of try and collect his stuff again. The bugs are going to rip him to pieces again. Unfortunately, I've seen this happen so many times. Like, you want to make it out there, you grab your old body back, and then boom, you just get what, like, monstered again. Blixie's is doing a good job here. Um, try and get other people involved, mate, if you can. I don't know if you're watching or if you're listening, but if you can get other, somebody else to help you, um, do it, because, Jesus, do you, not, do you need it? Oh, no. 
this again as well. We've, we've spoken about this before in the past, haven't we? Yellow inserters and power. Oh. Try, man. You, you, you got this, mate. You got this. But it's just, it's going to take a lot to... It's going to take a lot of time, but if you... you could lose this power, man. You could lose power, you could lose the beginning of your oil processing. I know, right? Like, this is how you do it, by the way. Burner inserter into a steam boiler, into steam engine. Uh, but here we go. This is the, 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 the kind of thrust of the game. The bugs are coming. Get ready. Now, if I remember correctly, this... Yeah, these guys have lasers, but... Jesus, this is not a good position to be in. This is not a good position to be in. And again, the South have just ratcheted the pressure up, ratcheted the pressure up. And uh, you're about to lose something that we already had down. Like, this is already paid for. It's already on the ground. And uh, they're just going to demolish it. Mipmop gets monstered. Another wave here. Part of their smelting is... Oh, so, so demoralizing. And the worst of it is, is that there are some lasers in the box somewhere. Wasn't there one more person here? I feel like this is a real, a real simple mistake. You know, like, it's, it's great they've gotten to lasers, and I'm not taking the piss out of the individuals. I'm not saying that they have played badly. I feel like, just generally speaking, it's one of the simplest things to do or to take care of hasn't been done and taken care of and we might be looking at like a completely dead outpost what can Califabot do to this you know where are these guys going this wave is completely I mean they're just walking unimpeded and I guarantee you that there will be nobody in here that has defenses this wave is just it's just walking in they did so well. They did so, so well at the beginning of the game. I kid you not, I was singing their praises. It was awesome. These two fucking gun turrets will do nothing. This is panic mode, man. These guys can tear your silo up at the 1 hour and 36 mark, and you lost to Purple Send? Nah, come on, guys. Don't, don't, don't be like that. I can't believe it. I can't believe what I'm seeing. We will probably run another game. Even they can't believe it. I can't believe it. I'm genuinely quite stunned at that. Walls. Walls. Oh no, let's run it back. Oh, that's so, that's actually heartbreaking, mate. That's so heartbreaking. It was started too late. And again, look at that. That's the perfect time, I said as well. One hour and 30 to one hour and 40. If you don't have a wall down, there's a good chance that you're just doomed. And at the one hour and 36 mark. Oh. Well, let's end the prediction. The North one. I was expecting a really long stream today. One game, but it just went on for hours. Ah. That was good from North. The, um, the purple send really did rattle them. But, um... Jeez. I'm not surprised. If you guys are playing the next game, please, please, just one of you. Just one person, one player. I know, I know, we're gonna play another one. We will play another one. But um, what a shame. The South had every opportunity and they were ahead. They were so far ahead. They had purple in the labs. They were beginning to finish off yellow. No bots though, I will say that. No bots in main. Yeah, oh dear. I know, that's so, Roland, you're so right. 100%, you're so, so correct on that. If somebody 30 minutes ago, when they had hundreds of walls, not thousands, just, that's what I do. That's all I do. Look at the map and go, where can we get absolutely shafted from? Because eventually this happens, right? Multiple waves. 
They were so far ahead, but they just didn't protect themselves. They didn't defend themselves. And this is why the game is never an easy win for either side. You need to constantly be thinking, right, if I was the enemy looking at my base, would I be attacking me right now? Would I be defending? Do you know what I mean? Like, this, this is, yeah, unreal. The server's gonna kick me out, isn't it? No, Factorio not responding. I'm lagging. Okay. We do another captain. I'll, tell you what, I'll let them vote for difficulty. I don't mind. I have all day today, so normally I'm on a bit of a I'm on a bit of a time crunch. But I have a few hours if Oh, that sucks, man. That sucks. But well, we, we're here for another one. We're here for another Maybe that's the warm-up, yeah? <laughs> that's the warm-up. Oh, dear. I was, I was, like, looking forward to where that went. You know, that's like, it, what could have been? You know, that could have been an epic. But, um, three lasers and one for a gigawatt, absolutely not. Hang on, somebody's messaging me on Discord. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Lag. I, I don't know, mate. I, I have no idea. Start an FNF captains. Absolutely not. Yeah, good warm up. Anyway, that's the, <laughs> that's the way I look at it. Please, whatever team you're on, Blitzy next game, please be that guy. Be that person. Make the walls. Put the walls down. You will be lauded. You will be lauded as an absolute hero. Imagine, imagine if you had a proper base. You guys, I think, would have gone and won that. I'm almost certain. The, the South didn't build walls. We've seen it time and time again. They didn't build walls and they, uh, yeah, they just got blown off the park. The North won by sending about 2,000 um, purple side, 1,000 in one send and another 1,000 in another. And effectively the bugs, and I kid you not, mate, there were no walls. The one pack of medi uh, medium and bigs went like this. Down here, down here, straight to silo, killed it. I just, when, I, when I was watching it happen, I was like, what is this? And the thing is, nobody really kind of threw grenades in the way. It was just like, oh, there are the bugs. Okay, we, we died. <laughs> so yeah. Um. All right, so. I guess we go again. <laughs> I mean, I could play. Do you go? No, you don't want to watch me play. Well, the problem is I actually have time to play today. I might get in later. I think you did well, mate. You did well. You know, there's no... I don't... I didn't see a negative thing other than... Uh, yeah, defense not going down. I think maybe they were just a little bit too... Yeah, we'll just... We'll just chat for now. <laughs> so loads of people want to play. Oh, and remind me to ban you, Swiss dude. <laughs> yeah, I, I added you to the list. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we um, we don't have any captains at the moment. The soldier. Stickler's so good, he's twice in the top 10. Oh dear. Well, we need one more. 
it wouldn't be fun to watch. I think that's the key here is that I will play some, but I think what I'll do is I'll play during the week. I don't want to play in these captain's games unless I'm captaining, because then you guys get a look at like what it looks like organizing the game. So, um, and as always, we need more than, we need more than one captain, guys. Come on, please. I mean, if anything, I can go and make like, add trust. You don't need to watch anything. <laughs> hey, killer, how's it going, mate? I think, you know, overall, the South, I would have I would have bet on the South that last game. I, I was comfortable with the way it was going. And if they can replicate it, if they can do it again, but just wall themselves up before the one and a half hour mark, I, I'd be fine with that. I'd be absolutely fine with that. And I, do you know what? I like blame referee. <laughs> All right, we have the Soldier versus Max. Two very, again, two very strong players. I know, mate. The Purple Rush just nailed them. Absolutely nailed them. Hey, Teo, how's it going, mate? But we look, we're going to have game two. We are going to have game two. Ah, oh, that was heartbreaking, mate. That was heartbreaking, Teo. You guys were, like, smashing it. You had your laser outpost really close to the bug so you could, like, run them through laser walls and stuff. But just main base didn't have... They just didn't have it. They didn't have any walls. If you're playing the next one, mate, please, whatever any team you're on, in fact, if any of you are playing next game, please, 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 we want to watch long games. I don't mind things ending early. I'm not invested at all. But please emphasize defensive building early. Like, if we take a look at the map, we have 400k stone here, for instance, right? You could, from the minute the game starts, build a tiny, tiny little smelter just to the left-hand side, literally just here and just begin the wall building from the minute the game starts. A little bit of coal, a little bit of stone, get it going on. I know, you were, and that's just it, it was a small slip, it was a tiny slip up. We're not talking about a massive, complete catastrophe. It just went a little wrong in one department. Every other, do you know what I would say? I would say South played flawlessly, but they forgot one aspect of the game. <laughs> It, like you guys were playing flawlessly. It was like bowling, a perfect game. You were getting strikes and strikes and strikes. And then on the final throw, you just throw the bowling ball into the ceiling. <laughs> and it's like, oh, I thought these guys were like doing amazing. And then just, yeah, <laughs> it all went wrong. Oh no, never mind. Hey, there's always more games. That was the warm up. <laughs> this is the real game, you know? The Central Grand Edge Factorio. <laughs> this is what counts. There are a lot more trees. I'm surprised they didn't didn't vote this out, but it's it's looking pretty open. There's not a lot of lakes. You know, there's not a lot of water bodies. There's some really close uranium, which is great. There's some really close oil. So yeah. Just remember boys and girls, uh, gun turrets aren't very good after 30 minutes in any game mode. Oh, um, I think we might be out of the... Oh, um... I know, Bloodstained. I felt bad, man. You guys had... So we just, literally, we were just talking about this. Welcome, firstly. Um, you guys were, like, flying. Absolutely flying in the south. Research was miles ahead. Your building was miles ahead. Your outposts were miles and miles ahead. And then they just sent that purple, and it was like... Boom. It just, it wounded you. And having zero walls down, man. Zero walls just absolutely detonated any chance you have. You know, I would say for the future games, like, if you're playing in an outpost, keep telling the opposite team to be like, yeah, no, sorry, tell your main base, guys, where's our defenses? Where are the walls going? What's going on? How are we doing? What are we think in this X, Y, and Z? Keep, keep contacting them because it feels like they took their eye off the ball there. And um, that was a bit of a shame. But we're on to round two. These, it's a game. It's for fun. There's no money involved. It's all just bragging rights, really. So, yeah, hopefully this next game you guys can kind of even it up. Make it 1-1, you know. Lose one game, win one game. That's a decent setup. 
Ya. <laughs> he's a really good captain, the soldier. I like him. He's a very he's a good communicator. And that's that's all you really have to be when you're captain in, in these games. A good communicator. Um and just keep checking in. Keep checking on people, making sure that, you know, everybody has a role, that everybody's got something to do. And also, I mean you guys have seen me on the stream, like, if I'm a South player, sometimes take your hand off your keyboard, zoom out, and just look. Like, what do I hate about my base? Like, where are the gaps? Where where can they join and, and have a consistent attack onto our base and get through? And how do we kind of combat that? What can I do? So, yeah. Okay, 12 on 12. There are some people taking a break um, from the first game. So some people wanted like a 5-10 minute break. That's fine. There's lots more people that will join. Um, but it looked like you guys... I mean, do you know what? It's probably one to watch back, actually. But it didn't look like either team made many mistakes really you know if i'm being honest it looked solid like an absolutely solid game i didn't even get to bite my sandwich <laughs> i literally i went away for a minute to make a sandwich i've come back now and that, well, i think i was casting like five minutes and then boom game's over so oh terrible so yeah a lot of these people that went and took a break and now came back in so the teams will, will pump themselves up and we'll give them a bit more time to uh to kind of figure out the strategy <laughs> um, I the, the VOD will go up after the stream goes down, so it should be instantaneous. Oh, see, see you later, Sky. Have a good day, mate. Enjoy. Don't work too hard, mate. Just enough to get paid. <laughs> so the South have named their team noobs. <laughs> oh. We're just going to assume good players that are not well known yet are old. Yep. Exactly. Shadow accounts. <laughs> it's true though, there people do have like Smurf accounts. There are people that get picked, like Coleworks got picked very early on, right? Coleworks has not been playing for very long with us. He's either somebody's friend or he is an undercover. But I'm gonna be honest guys, have you seen this North team? This is not looking good. The South are understaffed. Pluto is really strong. Sticklord, Cranley, Ford, G Squared, Bogler, the Soldier, Califer, Vortex. The, that's a really strong North team. I dare you poke me with the smelly trout. <laughs> and not the smelliest trout. Oh no. I, the South of. Pavev strong, actually no, Colworks, Pavev straightener, Mitmop, Mark, but the north is stacked mate, holy crap, I just noticed that. That is wild. That's, that's wild. Alright, let's swap the music out. Let's switch the music out to something else. This is coming to the end of the playlist anyway. Go for food playlist. Do you guys have any particular music you want to listen to? Uh, if you do, let me know. Um, synthwave we do listen to a fair amount of so I kind of want to maybe avoid synthwave um, we've done so far we've done disco we've done rock and we've only been streaming for an hour because the first game ended just like like that <laughs> so yeah um, if you have any suggestions for music let me know I'll, I'll try and find a playlist that works if not I'll just get something on for now um all bloody synthwave. And I don't like lo fi hip hop, is okay, but it's a little bit like. Meh. I feel like once I've heard one lo fi song, I've heard kind of all of them. Jazz. Oh, go on then. Go on then. But not, not like shit jazz. We want good jazz. Is this any good? No, I will not buy your Amazon product. Yeah, let's chill. Let's chill the fuck out. Yeah, smoky jazz bar. Let's go. All right, let me know if that's... Because it, it's quiet, it might need to be turned up a bit. So let me know if that is either too loud or not loud enough. 
but we're gonna chill. It's Saturday afternoon, the sun's starting to go down now. It's cooling down where I live. Um, I'm gonna put my feet up. Finally eat my sandwich. I made this like 10 minutes ago. <laughs> yeah, do you know what I mean? It's like a reset vibe. Do you know what I mean? We're just chilling. You know, when the game gets going, we'll start moving in, in different directions. But for now, a couple minutes, just a bit of piano. It's good, awesome. Sometimes I put a playlist on and it's like super quiet. Another time I'll stick one on and it's like really like horribly loud. So, right, we'll give these guys a few minutes to, um, to do their thing. Uh, we'll take a scan of the map. I'm gonna have a quick bite of this sandwich. It looks amazing. So bear with me a second. I'm just gonna kind of scan around the map. This is a prime area. I don't see a lot of coal, which is a slight, oh no, we have some coal. This is an awesome area for an outpost. There's so much copper, there's so much iron. And yeah, I would be, I'd be shocked if this isn't taken advantage of. Somewhere in this vicinity, an outpost could exist. Here we go, they've already got some pings out there. Runeboggler said, hey man, I've been watching Ghosty stream. I'm stream sniping, that's fine. <laughs> Uh, meanwhile, out to the east, again, some really generous patches here. Good oil, good coal. Yeah, coincidentally out here too. Very, very nice area to start with. <sighs> I'm giving them five, we'll give them three. I'm not going to do the predictions straight away. Thank you very much. <laughs> what I realized and what I need to do, uh, my friend watched my stream back and he said, I need to talk a bit slower um, because there are a lot of people that are watching who are not English main English speakers. So like English is their second or third language and I can talk very, very fast, which I don't mean to, but sometimes I can kind of like go a bit too quick. So I'm, I'm consciously trying to just slow down a little bit and, and make it a little bit easier to hear uh, what I'm saying. <laughs> Some of you are fine with it, um, but I do every now and again, I catch myself speeding up and I'm like, just chill, <laughs> take a break. You know, I can talk how great I am slowly as well as quickly. So there's that as well. So yeah, the map is looking lovely really nice. I am, I'd, I'd be annoyed at the amount of trees there are. <laughs> um, there needs to be some serious deforestation happening, but here, uranium is within arm's reach of the main base. I would be shocked if we didn't see a nuclear build happen here on south and north. Um, beyond that, oil is relatively close, and there is lots of it too. There's too many trees, mate. There's way too many. You know, I would I would be building grenades right at the beginning, so that uh, we can just dump all of these grenades, all of the uh, trees into the ground. Because yeah, this is it's a lot, isn't it? <laughs> but yeah, I don't see any. And there's nothing that really kind of jumps out at me that says this is a problem. You know, sometimes you have these in enormous lakes that are in the way. Other than this small water body here. Wherever they build, whatever they decide to play, um, they'll have the space to do it in, which is which is great, you know. I I hope, and then if anybody's out there that's listening on either north or south, I, I'm just putting it out there. There is enough stone here to make walls, individual patches that you could easily put together for one big smelting experience. Somebody please, please make sure that both sides build their walls. I might even say it, at the one hour mark, I'm just going to type into old chat, walls. Right? That's not cheating, is it? That's just poking the teams a little bit to say walls. Yeah, we'll do that. We'll encourage, we'll encourage the, uh, the teams to... 
to defend. <laughs> but we, we, we're having around about the same player base, so... Yeah, well, well people, get, people get lulled into a fake sense of security with lakes. They're not actually that powerful. You know, initially you're like, oh, I don't have to be walled there, that's great. You kind of like, eventually they get filled in by the bugs. It's easier to actually, like, landfill them and just treat them like any other part of the map. Um, yeah, I, I mean, the, the teams are relatively balanced, but there are certain combinations of players, like if Rune gets to play with Ford and Stick, for instance, that those three there could be a huge... Yeah, they do, they do. So when a bug dies near a lake, not the river though, not this area here, but if a bug dies near a lake, they drop landfill, and it's to stop you from using huge lakes to your advantage. So eventually, if you were to have like, I don't know, bugs, uh, let's just draw it for a second, because we will see this later. Let's say, you know, obviously bugs are coming here. If you've built a big wall uh, across here like that, obviously that's a terrible line. When they die here, they'll actually fill in like a very small patch of landfill. And then over time, this will slowly be filled into solid land <laughs> so that they can just like run around your walls. So yeah, you have to be very careful about that. Like it does happen and they do they do manage to make it round. So it's what I like is they got, the developers have really thought about this stuff. All right, we're going to give them one minute to, uh, to think, figure out their, their kind of plans, their grand strategy. Um, I'll just ask if any, a lot of these guys will be taking a break. You know, they're just going to be like, you know what, that was a good game last game, uh, but this time around I just need to take a five minute break and I'll come in later. So, Mina will go up north, 21 on 20, you'll love to see it. And uh, we will be going very, very soon. Are we still backwards walking? We are. Let me just reverse my player into the spectator box. <laughs> okay. We were going to start in three, two, and away we go. So yeah, I like both teams. 21 on 21 is a really healthy start to the game. Game shot. Uh, everybody gets off and running. I believe at the beginning of the game, you know, it's a standard issue really. You make a little coal snake that feeds itself, you begin basic plates melting, and then down the line we'll start to see automation and uh, and the building of the base. I am tempted actually. I fucking hate leaving. The, the one thing I don't like, and I don't get this right every week, is I don't I need to go off and make food at some point, and I feel really bad just leaving the stream. Like genuinely, it does actually get to me a little bit. I'm like, why would I'm like AFKing basically? Like all of you guys have come here to watch, and then I just leave <laughs> to go and do something. So, um, I may I may get off and make some food. Not off as in turn off, but I might um, I might go off and make a quick bit of scoff. <laughs> oh dear, terrible. Anyway, right, back to this. So yeah, we're going to see some outposts. We will hopefully see some threat farming. We're on piece of cake today. We're on piece of cake. So what that means effectively is we're not on the easiest game mode. So what happened last game at the 1 hour and 36 mark might happen now at the 1 hour mark. Meaning that the production of walls must happen sooner. If e any of you guys watching are on either side of this, please talk to your captain. You have enough bricks here. You have enough stone. You, know, you have enough everything. In fact, if, if somebody could come out here into this area of the map, look at this. Coal and tons of stone. You could make a wall production area right here. For free. You know, literally for free. I would do this. In fact, if I'm playing, if I decide to play, which I probably won't, but if I do, I would come to an area like this. This is perfect. This is made 
to <laughs> cleanse the south of their sins from last game. Because I'm going to be honest, it was pretty dire. Everything went so, so well. And I wonder if we're going to see whichever team Neuro is on. Why are we... We got team killing already. What? Team killing is first proper death goes to Granwick, who is miles away from Maine. Press F to pay respect. <laughs> oh no! Terrible. He's he's not dead. He's just asleep. Just snoozing. <laughs> to be fair, not a huge amount of stuff on them. But uh, yeah, apparently somebody is uh, is causing some problems on the uh, on the north. We'll keep a, we'll keep a look on. We'll keep our eyes on them. Keep tabs on them. Obviously, people might disagree. Yeah, I did see that. Was it Dragon? I think Dragon got picked on Twitter. Where is he now? He's on South again. Yeah, he is. He, um, something happened. Again, people disagree at times. Uh, oh, that's a lot of bells. <laughs> but at the same time too, these are your teammates. You don't have to be best mates, but you do have to work together. So what I recommend is if you don't get on with somebody, you don't necessarily have to talk to them. In fact, you don't even have to listen to them. The only person you really have to listen to is the person running your show. So for the South, uh, that is Max. And for the North, that is the Soldier. They have a plan and all you've got to do is listen to their plan. They'll ask you to fill certain roles. Uh, such as building this, building power, making walls, or threat farming, or anything else. Uh, it seems to me like Cute Meow Meow and Carl are coming out into the middle of nowhere to make an outpost. Toddy and Bloodstained Crow with Vortex are coming up to threat farm. Again, very necessary. You need to do this at the very beginning of the game. Yeah, and if you're the only person in the channel, you can give yourself orders. You can make yourself employee of the month. <laughs> But yeah, I just, um, you know, people don't have to be best mates, but, uh, oh, Carl goes down. Well, he's a new player. He's learning. But yeah, the further away you get from main base as well, the more populated. You can see these little red dots. The more of these appear, these worms. They're really annoying to deal with. I'm not exactly sure what position they want to start their outpost in, but anywhere in this area is really, really generous with the... Uh, with everything really. I mean, you've got copper, you've got iron, tons of, tons of oil. A little bit of uranium. Coal is here in bits. Bit of coal, I guess. So I like this area. Meanwhile, Claw, Neuro and Everlord. I mean, I can imagine maybe th these are the Frenchest of our French players. Neuro being top Frenchman number one. Top baguette. <laughs> what is, what, is, oh shit, do I need to ask this question? <laughs> How do I say, like, the best in French? Le premier. Is it le premier? The number one. Oh, Granlick goes down again. <laughs> you can't keep running back and dying, mate. <laughs> yeah, le premier français. Homme de France. <laughs> Is that correct? Wait, no, no, that's not. Homme... If there's any French people in there, I apologise if I've just butchered your language. That is that French man, man of France, le premier homme de France, or I just am I going to jail, French jail? If anybody could let me know, that'd be great. As opposed to pomme de France, which is a potato Frenchman, obviously. <laughs> and if you're if you're from Interpol and you're watching, yes, that is a war crime. Feel free to arrest me. But yeah, smelting's going down for the south. I'm just making stuff up as we wait for the game to start. There's always a little bit of lag at the beginning of the game where everybody's just getting stuff set up and ready to go. And in that in that light, in light of that, in lieu of that fact, we now see Dragon developer Cute Meow Meow and Carl is making his way back uh, to an area which I believe will be the beginnings of this outpost. It's a bit weird. Um, Dragon. 
um, partnering up with Carl. <laughs> I just mentioned it. And now they're trying to suspend him. Oh, come on, guys. Don't be like that. Everybody love everybody, man. What, what's what's the issue? Let me let me just ask. Oh, there's always an issue, and it's normally with Rajin. He's like a karma farmer. He runs around and farms negative karma. <laughs> Looked at him funny. Hey, <laughs> that's the second game. Don't be like that. Oh, anyway, so these guys are going to be a Western outpost. Regain, Amelex, Stick Lord, and Fordeca. I would imagine that hopefully looks. Uh, uh, to be an outpost with Califer Bob joining in. No, Vortex, Toddy, and Bloodstained. Obviously, they're going to go for. Uh... Oh, wow. The rule that we have for this is that if you don't want to be, you have to you have to be invited to join somebody's outpost. So let's say, for instance, I'm on Team North and I want to come over and play with these guys. I w We're not with him; he's falling asleep. There's lots of people dying, man. What is going on? What are you guys up to? Picking fights, you can't win. So, <laughs> yeah. If you want to play with these guys, you have to ask them. Making it harder for me to defend you, mate. I feel like a school teacher at times. There we go, right, well if I have to say it, I'll bloody say it. I just, I don't understand why. But I'll ask the question, because here we'll have a definitive yes or no. Just say yes or no. There we go. And now you're making people leave the game. It sucks because what you're doing is forcing other people to leave. It's kind of obvious though, isn't it, mate? <sighs> Why? They'll just leave. They'll just they won't play the game, mate. Eratol, old boomer. Nice to have you with us, mate. Welcome. I hope you're having a good weekend. <sighs> what a what a waste, though. That's two really, really experienced players that the South need. I don't know, man. We need to have a word about that. That's not cool. Smelter with the double gap. Thank you. We, we've been mixing up the music a little bit today. So um, I've gone down the line of, um, you know, keeping it chill. We've started a new game, so we're keeping it nice and relaxed. The first game was a bit of a, a whirlwind, so I'm going to um, I'm going to just keep it chill for about half an hour, and then we'll kick back in uh, into other stuff. Let me just go and mess it somewhere. There's going to be a complaint made, isn't there? Oh, I hate Discord drama. If we can afford Discord drama at all costs.
Ooh, okay. Oh, wait, where is he? Where is he? Oh, that sucks, man. Uh, so just to let you know, Dredrin and Carl don't get on. And uh, because Dredrin's over here now, uh, Carl doesn't want to play. And because Carl doesn't want to play, his friend also has left the team, meaning the South are now minus two people. We talk about this all the time. Conflict happens. You don't need to necessarily like each other. But you shouldn't be following somebody around just so that you take the outpost off them. That's kind of bullshit, man. Uh, now I have to do two things at once. Oh, I hate this bit of, oh, fucking, it's deflating. All right, last game wasn't that great. It ended very early, but now the game is basically gonna be changed because two of the highest ELO people have left the game. Oh, what a pain. Like, why do we have to deal with this? This, why can't we be better? Why can't we be better? We, we, we all don't have to antagonize each other. I'll do the TLDAR for you, um, Itchani, because it's, it's, it's been going on for a while now and it needs to fucking stop. Like, I'm genuinely quite annoyed at this. Dredrin doesn't get on with Carl. I have no idea where that came from. I, I, what, something happened in one game. One thing, literally one thing, set this all off. And now, basically, Dredrin just trolls Carl. Um, Carl ran over here to be an outposter with developer and cute Meow Meow, who I believe is his IRL friend. So these people know each other and Dredrin's decided to follow them. The rule for outposting, for anybody that doesn't know, these people are normally groups of friends that play together. So Neuro is French, Dr. Claw is French, Everlord is French. They've known each other forever. They like to play together. If they invite you to come and play here and say, hey man, do you want to come over and help our outpost? That's your invitation to come in, but you can't just run over here and start building stuff with them. It's just because people like to play with their mates. That's really the all that's happened here. So what's happened here is, um, yeah, Dredrin's just forced two of the best players out of the server because he's being awkward. And I don't know, man, I don't like that. I just think we can be better, man. We can be so much better than that. You can be like anything you want in this game. You can build main base, you can threat farm, you can build water pistols, you know, or sorry, water barrels and pistols. But like actively harassing people in your team? Oh, come on, man, like why? I know that everybody here is different age and and you know different maturity levels and i'm not trying to like i'm not trying to stop people from being themselves at all but fucking hell man we can do so much better than that that's just kind of bullshit and i'm calling it bullshit right now you know we don't deal with, with the good news we don't deal with things like this that often but it's annoying when it's clear two players don't get on and one of them just seems to take joy i think in following and trolling and I don't know man just leave it alone if you don't like the guy you don't have to be anywhere near him you can go and play some other part of the area or other part of the map you know you can come play over here go threat farm but you know all that's happened now is Radio's not playing he's probably being told off on discord and the uh, developer's now playing on his own it looks like so instead of a three person friendship group playing out here um It's just, it's just bollocks, man. It's also diverting our attention from what is already a quite a good game. I know, that, do you know what, Tio? That's actually the right way to phrase it. You've got to respect the spirit of the rules, right? The spirit of the rules, I don't want to ban you. I, I don't, like, I don't want to cause any problems. I don't want to take people out of the game. But 
You need to understand that if somebody doesn't get on with you, you don't have to be anywhere near them. You can go and play in a completely different area of the game and still help your team. Now, at the moment, through two people have left South and one person is now arguing with people on the Spectator Island. And it's just like, it, it makes us look so amateur, man. When actually, the game will be amazing. This will be a good game. But we're missing two very strong players now. So yeah, again, it's, yeah. Let's change the music because with the change of music, we will change our, our mindset. We're gonna get positive here. We're gonna have, let's type in super happy playlist. <laughs> Let, let's put on some super happy music and let's just chin this off, right? I, I don't wanna ignore it. I don't wanna ignore it. We will address it properly with, through the correct channels, obviously, which we do have. I'm gonna stick on some more upbeat jazz and we're gonna pivot this away. What I would like, oh, straightener, straight away. Look at this, boom, walls. Love it. But yeah, I don't wanna be dealing with this all game. I don't wanna be, I don't wanna get into this all game. Uh, and now a support ticket has been created. You guys hear those sirens? Sorry if you guys can hear, there's just like a load of stuff just erupted by me. Hang on a second, sorry, I just want to check out, look out my window and see. Oh, Jesus. Holy shit. That is a lot of fire trucks. <laughs> oh, isn't it the London Marathon? I swear it's the London Marathon, sorry. Um, that is a lot of fire trucks. <laughs> Do you know what, Van Thunder? I will, I will repeat exactly what happened. We've had drama. We've had it all already. We've had some drama so far. It's only 19 minutes into a game and seven minutes into the game, there was some conflict that could have easily been resolved, by the way. I want to point that out. If one side was less immature, it, it, it could be easy. Now, I like Carl. I'm not always on the people's side that I like but I think that he's kind of correct to be quite annoyed about that. I would be, you know? But I kind of try to get on with everyone. I try and also look from everybody's perspective as well. But I think that there's will willful ignorance. Um, I'd just stop it, Cliff, mate, I'd stop. just wants attention. Do you know what? It's already taking up too much of my time. 80-20, 80-20 rule. 80% 80 of your time and I know this from coaching. I know this from coaching. 80% um, of your time will be taken up by 20% of the people in the room. And those 20% are usually the ones fucking about or causing problems. And so 80% of the people in that room don't get your attention as a coach. When they need it, they need you to tell them what they're doing right and what they're doing wrong. I am, um, I don't, I'm not gonna pay any more attention to it. So Dredrian's being awkward. He hasn't moved at all as well. So he's, he's not even really playing the game as well. Um, and he's causing problems with Carl. Yeah, you're right. And they do, they cause... Last game he got jailed um, by someone. Then this game he's been run over to somebody's outpost, basically taking up a spot. 
and um, and I'm kind of bored of it now, man. Like I I like to have a lot long views. Um, I don't like making things hard for people, but come on, guys, fucking hell, like play the game. I've already spent too much time talking about it, and that and that's exactly what I mean, Glitzy. I've already spent too much time talking about it. In the south, we have 20 players, and in the north, we have 21, and we're getting right back on track. Fuck all the noise. It was, and there's a personal thing there. I don't know what it is. I genuinely, I have no idea where this started from. I have no idea why it is the way that it is. I've asked, and I've never really got an answer, but Carl is one of, and I, and I mean this, he's one of the most active people in our community, setting up the 1v1 money tournaments. Like, he's, he's not just some kind of bum who turns up every five seconds and causes issues or calls somebody the M-word and gets banned. Like, he's, he's always played these games. So, I know. And now he's getting everybody complaining with him. Uh, so, yeah. I don't know. I mean, I'm going to be honest, right? I'm old now, by the way. I'm not like this anymore. The vortex goes down. Make sure you press F to pay respects. With a shotgun, to be fair. I... I'm... When I was younger, when we had disagreements with people, um, and again, I don't advocate for this, I'm just explaining to you something that I experienced when I was younger. Um, we'd just have a fight. <laughs> it's a bit basic, I know. But I play a lot of rugby, and if somebody does something to you that you don't like, you have a quick scrap, throw a few punches, get punched a few times, and then it's done. Shake hands, or just, you know, nod and be like, alright, yeah, we've sol solved that. And that's it. And you crack on with it. These are your teammates. They're not enemies. You might not like each other, but there's also not like, it's not right to just have it. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, I think they call it milling. They get four benches and they go, right, you put on some gloves, you put on some gloves. You get a minute, 30 seconds. We're not talking about a long boxing match. Just go in, get really close to each other, toe to toe, bang around for 30 seconds, and then it's the end. It's done. You've had your, you've had your scrap, shake hands, buy each other a beer in the bar, and that's it. It's done this whole bitching and obfuscating the point and you know being ignorant pretending that you don't know what the thing what the rules are come on man oh mr t's in all caps so yeah I, again you couldn't do that in it you couldn't do that um in an office setting you know sue from hr annoys you so you offer her a scrap you know right outside now <laughs> but you do, you learn to pick your battles. You learn to pick your battles. And some things, some hills are just not worth dying on. Um, but yeah, never mind. It makes us look um, quite amateurish. That's the thing I, I don't, that's the thing that I don't like. Is it, it makes us look really amateurish. And we're not, we have a huge player base. I get on, we have so many awesome people that play this game. Not just because you guys are watching and you're viewers, but like, I'm sure I played in a game with almost all of you. And I enjoy playing in games where my captain's French or my outpost friend is German or, you know, so I've got Americans threat farming with me. It's good fun. It brings people together, man. <laughs> Somebody tells me to meet outside, I'll let them out and then close the door. That's <laughs> savage. That's my, that's my biggest fire. That's my biggest worry is that Carl and Cute Meow Meow were probably going to be a very strong tool for the South. They were probably going to be the answer to a lot of the South's problems. You still have lots of strong players on the South, but it does annoy me that we're at this point now where, I'm going to be honest, it's petty. I don't know where it came from, but it fucking needs to stop me. Not, not, um, drama's always going to happen, and I understand that, and we're not always going to be get friends and get on. I was just saying, when I used to play rugby, we'd have a scrap and that was it. And then that's the end. It's done. You know, we've had a little fight. We've got the energy out of our system. This is prolonged, man. This has gone on for a while. Um, and it needs to fucking stop. You know, it needs to stop. Either we ban... But no, we don't ban, though, because it's not fair. But it's like, it's such an awkward problem to have. There's a player that's being quite immature to a player who doesn't really want to take any shit. And, and this has gone on for a long time, mate. This isn't like a, this happened this week. I remember Carl and him having problems like months ago. Like to the point where it was like, he took it personal. And that's where I think this has gone a bit weird is that Dradrian's taken something really personal. 
and I don't understand what is so much of an issue or what is so egregious that you have to actively troll somebody in every game you play with them to the point where they leave the game like what's that about it doesn't firstly it doesn't make you look very good in, in, in for number one and secondly like why you know i don't think that there's any like personal i don't think it's like a your mum, you know one of those kind of personal insult type things so i don't know where it's come from let's do our prediction let's do our prediction and i, I will scan around whilst we uh because I've, I've, I've spent far too much time talking about this It's, it's such an avoidable, it's such an avoidable thing to happen. And I just, I don't know, I just wish, I wish we could all be better. I wish we could all be better. In the north, we have some threat farming going on with Toddy. So before you vote with your very precious pot noodles, I'll run you through the teams you can see here on the left hand side. And uh, on the north, we have Toddy Vortex, Beastseer, Bloodstained Crow, and they are threat farming. Uh, to the west, we have two different outposts, Califabob, Reagan, and Broombogler in one, Stick Lord, Amelik, and Granlick on the other, with Fodeka hanging around in the middle, getting some stuff. No, mate, fire, I, I kid you not. I think for one of them, it's very personal. Um, and like, in a weird way, like in a really weird way, I don't get it. Like, I'm, I live a relatively drama-free life, and I don't understand how something can be t and maybe it's because something the language barrier maybe but if i if i remember correctly like yeah <laughs> never mind uh, sorry so dr lord, lord baguette outposters these guys are on the south and they're uh, off to the west and uh, these guys will be outposting probably to build a rocket mipmop meanwhile with straightener have a defensive outpost out here and um yeah, they're going to be doing some threat farming as well. As we can see, the south are at minus 400, the north are at minus 36. Meanwhile, in the main base, we have a couple of really strong players like Max, Martin Max King, uh, Pavev, and these guys will be building up the main base with the help of people like Guido Cram, K Dog, Prasi, uh, Developer. These are all really, really strong players on the south. Uh, heading out to the east, we have Dradrin, who's just stood still for like the last 20 minutes arguing the toss. Uh, literally hasn't played a single little thing in the game. And Rutan, who just kind of comes away and does like weird outposts. I don't really know what it's is for, but good job, Rutan. And to the northeast, there is no one, which is great. Um, so yeah, somebody, some people are really into the south. A thousand three hundred pot noodles have gone to the south. Okay, I like where they're going so far. They've already started to kind of put some walls down. Again, this is already more walls than they had last game. Oh, and it's all kicked off. Fuck's sake. Uh, I don't want to deal with this now. All right, we've got some more players coming in. That's great. Let's get them into the game. MX. Oh, our friend from Korea is joining us. Welcome. How do you say hello in Korean? That's something that I, I'd like to learn. I might Google that actually. All right, let's get these players in. Excellent. So we've some, some, got some strong players joining now. Very good. All right, let me Google that real quick. How to say hello in Korean. Not North Korean. Let me turn the music up real quick. Turn the volume up real quick. 안녕하세요. 안녕하세요. Oh. Mate, we learn something new every day. An yang aseo. Welcome, MXLPPLXPL. <laughs> An yang to you too. So, yeah, I think the teams have evened up now. 21 to 22. Perfect. And as I scroll through the Discord drama that is currently unfolding, I refuse to get involved. Messaging my missus back, what time are you?
Boom. All right. Nice. Done and done. Message the missus. Um. And again, this will be another defender outpost. I'm almost certain of it. I'm almost certain of it. Oh, you're so right, mate. Pronunciation is killer, man. Yeah, I, I find that when I... Um, there's certain German words with like the E's and the O's. Yeah, fire, you're right, mate. You're right. It's, it's a weird one because, and I've said this for ages, and you guys all have heard me say this before. We're not trying to stop people from being themselves at all. Say what you want to say, have the opinions that you want. There's nothing wrong with being different. I'm wise, yeah. Um, I, I feel like when I coach, I try and encourage people to be themselves and not this kind of version of a basketball player they think that they need to be or a version of a rugby player they need to be. Be yourself. Yeah, buongiorno. Francais. <laughs> That's something that I've realised that not a lot of English people can actually do is roll their R's. Unless they're a rude boy, innit? <laughs> innit, blood? <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah. We need to figure this out. I'm not doing this again. I, I mean, I mean this. I properly do mean this. I'm not doing this again. We're, we're finding a fucking solution to this. And if this, if that means that they're just always on different teams, that's fine. But it's kind of bullshit that we have to have special rules for special people. You know, at the end of the day, and I'm really glad Sacklen is uh, is they're getting the wall down this early on. R's and Z. Oh. I'm I'm really committed now. I know there are a lot of French people in the chat. Or we have a lot of French viewers and a lot of French players. I'm committed to learning a bit more French. More than just hello, how are you, you know what I mean? The, the standard standard issue stuff. Because uh, I want to be able to kind of engage a bit more. It's not. I think it's kind of bullshit if you expect people to speak your language. Do you know what I mean? Like when you can try a little bit in their direction. So yeah, I'm, I'm going to commit to... Uh, learning a bit more than just hello, how are you? One beer, please. Sorry, two beers, please. <laughs> Who's ordering just one beer? Jesus. Check. That sounds like so. Out of all of the, out of all of the Eastern European languages, like let's say Polish, Lithuanian, what's the hardest one to speak? Because I've I've fucking um, I heard some. Oh, I'm gonna get this. I'm gonna get this wrong and insult somebody. Is it Danish or Dutch? It might be Danish, but that sounds like they're just making it up. I'm gonna be honest. It genuinely sounds like they were making it up. It's Dutch. That was it. I was in Amsterdam for a couple of weeks, uh, working, not partying. Well, I was, I was kind of partying as well, but I was working mostly. And I turned on TV once, and I was like, "Nah, they're all drunk. There's no way that's actually a language." <laughs> so I don't mean to slander the Dutch. <laughs> But it sounds wild. It sounds absolutely wild. <laughs> yeah, oh, mate, the backwards letters. Because they have like a backwards alphabet, don't they? The Russians, sorry. And I'm going to be honest with you, and I might be outing myself a little bit here, but all I know in Russian is uh, like Counter-Strike sayings, like Rush B. <laughs> Rush B, suka blad. <laughs> Drop me AVP, noob. <laughs> oh my god, I'm so glad I don't play that game anymore. It's terrible. Give me knife. <laughs> Sorry, I apologize to all of my Russian viewers. Oh god, I missed. I used to log in, I, so I got to global quite quickly on the rank ladder, and. Um, the moment you get into any rank lobby, there's one very angry Russian man with a terrible microphone, like genuinely like a like a 1970s microphone that sounds like it's in a washing machine. <laughs> and you just, oh, fucking idiot, idiot English. <laughs> oh, my God. I just, it was funny. Like, I never took it personally. Yeah, and you hear like the mum in the background screaming like, where are you fucking up? There's like a baby crying and then this guy like clicking around man maniacally and genuinely like good players. You know, I'd win a lot of those games, but, you know, a, a lot of swearing as well. A lot of Idina, we bled. Suka. Fucking English. Useless. 
<laughs> oh my god. Buy me gun, buy me weapon. <laughs> Which is more English, uh, more Russian than I can speak in, uh, more English than I can speak Russian, so fair enough. But I, I miss those days, man. That was like my early 20s, just logging in to get abused by <laughs> French, Dutch, Russian. Oh, it's fucking funny, man. No, I know what those words mean. They mean, you're a very nice person. <laughs> I'm very happy you're in my team. <laughs> you're a very strong player, and I'm glad you're my teammate. <laughs> At least that's what I hope they mean. I know it, I know it. it's just insults really, isn't it? But yeah, Estonian, mate, fucking hell. Oh, fire, sorry, to, to answer your question as well. It's basically, it's worth watching back. And I say that because the South did everything perfectly. And I mean that, like they, they did so, so well to get off the ground. They did this early research build I've never seen before. Like, Neuro pulled out a brand new trick, and they were flying. And then what happened is, we got to the 1 hour and 30 mark. And let me just pull out my tools. We, we saw zero walls go down, and the bugs went here, here, onto the silo, and it was over in the space of a minute. They, to be fair, a few thousand purple signs went across to the south, but they had no walls. And when I mean none, the walls that we see now, this is more now in this game at the 30 minute mark than they had at the one hour and 30 minute mark. They had done everything perfectly, apart from put defensive structures down. <laughs> and as we can see here, a wiggly wall. <laughs> Terrible. Wiggly walls are not the one. But they have a chance though. They're not, I know that they've lost Carl and they've lost Keep Meow Meow, but they have a chance. Yeah, it was it was an interesting one. They had all, they had all the right players. Everything was going for them. The build was quick. The research was rapid, mate. All of the um, all of their outposters were screaming ahead. They had lasers at like the one hour mark. Really good stuff, but no defense. And that just is an absolute wounder because you, you've literally done everything perfectly, but just they didn't have any of this. None of this. And again, hopefully to this game. Yeah, here we go, perfect. And a pro tip, if you make these blue inserters, this will go a lot quicker. But either way, I'm, I, this warms my heart that somebody now is, uh, is taking care of, of this. What are we talking about in chat? On scene engagement. Oh, they're... Ah, oh, nerds. They're talking about ham radio stuff, right? <laughs> right, let's check in on the research for North. Again, I've been a little bit less... We've done the first game and that was a bit of a ball ache. So today, I'm gonna, for the second game, I'm going to take it a bit chiller and uh, we'll kind of meander a little bit as, as the game goes on. So yeah, science research, blue, into sulfur. We've got advanced electronics being processed, meaning that we're going to have some um, police codes. Yeah, yeah. Like uh, I've got an IC1 mail or IC2 mail. You know, those kind of like short and sharp kind of, uh, I think it's kind of cool, man. I wish I had language like that. Engines into oil, uh, into fluid handling, into oil for the south. Um, they do have military in the labs on the north. So the south are slightly slower to build up main. Processing's going nicely though. And they do have a decent, no, they don't have a decent steel buffer, but they will have a decent steel buffer once things start to, start to back up a little bit. I'm really glad they've managed to get this on the go. This is really good look. <laughs> you need this. You absolutely need this. Um, as fast as you can as well. And yeah, well, we'll keep checking in on the outposts. And MX is being dropped. Oh, no. So it looks like a battle of the outposts with the North taking a substantial lead because there's two of them out here. Do you know what? I think that's something I've, I've realized today. I can probably squeeze some learning in. I could squeeze in. I want to like learn a bit of French. I was talking earlier on about programming stuff uh, with Emily Flombe. So uh, do you know what? I might need to add something in, not to be like big brain, but you should always challenge yourself, you know, and it will be a challenge to learn, pick up a new skill, to learn something new. But it gives you access to more stuff. 
you know, it gives you, it gives you roots into areas where you previously wouldn't have been, so. Awesome, so there is there is something kicking off on Discord. I can't ignore it. Uh, at the same time, I'm not going to stream and deal with that at the same time. It's not easy. If Enkling comes in for the south, that could be clutch. That could be clutch. Mipmop, I'm guessing, is slowly but surely moving towards defenders. Although, I mean, they, they kind of need to threat farm a little bit here. I mean, you kind of be rude not to do a little bit. Even drive yourself into the minus 1,000. Are you looking at defenders in this area? Ammo production? Oh yeah, God, it's, it's like four in the morning, isn't it, for him? Yeah, he's he's in the Philippines, isn't he, or, or um, Singapore, or Southeast Asia? I don't know exactly, and I don't, I don't need to know. But yeah, he's like fucking miles away, and it must be like super early. Which I always feel quite bad for because I wonder sometimes. I wonder if he was playing on home soil, if Enkling was playing on a time slot that he is like good for good for him, not good for us. How much better he'd be? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Because I genuinely like he when he's like up and running and firing on all cylinders, Enkling is a nightmare to play against. I struggle sometimes in games against him, and that doesn't like when I say that Rune Boggler is good, he's good. He's not unbeatable, but when you're playing against them, you don't have a lot of opportunity to. Um, yeah, do you know what I mean? There's prime time Enkling, and I feel like we get like late night, early morning Enkling. I'd love to see him playing on like a bit of a where he has his time slot. Because we'd be fucked, let's be honest. Like, What is midday in the Philippines would be like? Let me just Google that real quick. I, I want to guess, like, I don't know exactly if he's in the Philippines. It's two in the morning now. <laughs> How does he play captain's games that go on to like the four hour mark? He must be playing to like five in the morning. At least, at least five in the morning. That is bizarre, mate. That's nuts. Ooh. That's a... Ooh, okay. Trico has entered the game. This is dangerous. For any of you that don't know, this is Trico. Trico is a bit of a cheat code. He has the ability to either win a game or lose a game based on how he feels that day. And if he feels like winning this, Trico might um, might do something special. We'll keep an eye on Trico. I know, obviously I've played a lot of this game before, uh, obviously, and I've played lots of games with him. It's He's quick, he's very good, and he's an answer a little bit to the people that we've lost along the way. The Carls of the world. So, um, yeah, interesting. I, I like this. I like this, this pick coming in. I don't want to kind of... I don't want to move people into certain areas and, and make it look like I'm influencing the team. But we have to remember that the South lost a few very strong players early on, and then the person that caused those problems is now left as well. So, yeah. He's around GMT plus eight. Oh, God. So midday for him would be like four in the morning for me. Oh, but we have to do it. We must do it to make it even. We have to have like one game called the Enkling game. <laughs> And like do it Friday, no wait, it would have to be Saturday morning for him, so it would be like Friday afternoon, evening, no, Saturday afternoon for him would be like Friday night, Saturday morning, oh my god, how does he do it? How does he do it? What we need is an SEA server, mate. I am indeed. I'm in London, in it, bruv. <laughs> but I'm the least gangster person you could possibly imagine. <laughs> so yeah, don't expect too much. I think I, I'd, I'd like to think I try and keep it even. 
I mean, it's not easy because some people go in and they don't want to play hard. So, like, let's say Enkling joins, he might just be like, "Well, I want to chill today." London is my country. <laughs> I will not have British slander come my way. We've already established that I'm not actually English. I'm not actually British. Some of you know this very well. In fact, some of you have heard my German DJ voice. <laughs> and for those of you that don't know, I might break it out later. <laughs> yeah, bottle of water. You what, mate? What the fuck are you looking at? You slag. <laughs> I hate it, mate. There's something about that that just doesn't work for me. I don't know what it is. Do you know what I mean? There. You are, mate. You are geezer. How's it going? How's the missus? I just, I'm like, mate, you're just like something out of a film. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, I think I meet two people like that every day. The rest are all proper roadmen in it, bruv. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, safe fam. How's it going, bruv? <laughs> Absolutely not. I'm, as you can tell, I'm clearly very gangster, but uh, I'm not that gangster. South Africa, 6 p.m. Holy shit, we have South Africans here? Wait, wait, some of you guys, I, we do have like one or two staffers, right? Oh, Saturday, I thought that was SA for South Africa, my bad, I'm sorry mate. Because obviously they're, they're roughly in line with us, other than the fact they've won two World Cups. <laughs> I'm totally not salty about all of the World Cups they've won. <laughs> they're just cheaters, mate, That's, do you know what, they're not even good at rugby, they just know how to cheat. <laughs> I'm kidding man, they're really, really good. Hey man, how's it going? I hope you're having a good day, mate. We're on game number two. Ah, oh, hello, my bri. How are you doing? <laughs> oh, my South African is terrible, mate. Absolutely terrible. I've played with a fair few, mate. They're monsters. I, I play a lot of local club rugby, and we've got a couple of South Africans, and that's obviously terrible. Um, but yeah, I was out there for a little bit. Genuine. Like, you guys have got... Having a bri, mate. I've never had a bri before. I was drunk at midday, eating fucking the best meat I'd ever had in my life. And I was like, I could get used to this. <laughs> I could get used to this. But yeah. But you're not, are you playing from SA though? Because the connections for you, you're normally in game for quite long. So I'm assuming you don't get kicked out because of like, you know, really crappy connection issues. Been here since the start. Ah, oh, okay, got you. Ah, oh, you're over here. Yeah, for work, I'm guessing. Fair play, mate. Fair play. Yeah, I just um, it's it's wild west out there at the moment. Carl came back. Do you know what, mate? You probably live very close to me. I don't want to out. No, do you know what? You probably don't. I live in a really shit part of London, mate. There's a good chance you don't live anywhere near me. Fucking hell. No. Yeah, we've lost an hour's worth of Carl playtime. <laughs> He had to go away to calm down, calm down. Oh, that's terrible, I'm not gonna make that joke. Or am I? I did it, it's out there, it can never be taken back. <laughs> Oh, south of the river for you. Yeah, that's the nice part of London, mate. That's where you actually have like a good job and you're earning a decent wage. I'm up north, mate. It's fucking rank. I'm moving soon. I'm moving soon. But, um... <laughs> yeah. You never know, mate. I know there are a lot of people that play in and around the area, so I don't know, maybe when the weather gets nice, I might... I might link up... There was a point where, and it might have even been yourself, Fire, actually, there was... A bit of a shit situation last year. I don't go over it too much anymore because I'm sorted now, but I was in a bit of a bad spot and I had loads of people reach out to me and say, hey mate, um, you know, I can travel in, you know, wherever you're at, we'll go to a pub, we'll have a beer and, you know, have a chat. And genuinely, mate, I didn't take anybody up on the offer, but that really did mean a lot because at the time I didn't really have a lot of people to talk to. It was a bit, it was a bit of a dire situation. I wasn't, I wasn't going to do anything stupid, but it was, you know, when you're just in a bit of a hole and you can't stop thinking about something, like anything to take my mind off it would have been perfect so maybe this year if, if the sun is out um, in, and there's a couple of Brits we can meet up somewhere and have a pint and uh, and you know plan the next captain's game IRL <laughs> have the first bite of battles meet up 
Um, because I am real. I know somebody said that I am fake news at one point, but I am a real human being. <laughs> and I'm not that much of a helmet. I'm hopefully moving out of London. Um, yeah, which is terrible because my, my missus is... <laughs> I don't know if how many of you guys know England, right? But you'll know that Luton has a particular um, reputation for being probably worse than London, if we're being honest, because it's quite small. Luton's not very big. My missus's family are all from Luton. <laughs> So if I move out of North London, there's a good chance I'll be moving to Luton, which is... Oh, it's just as bad. It's just as bad with stabbing. I mean, the block that I live on, live in, sorry, there was a double stabbing a couple of weeks ago. And then a few weeks before that, the police were raiding, fucking taking drugs paraphernalia out of a building that looked like it was a lab. I mean, I don't need to be here. In fact, I don't have to be here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> However, the town itself is it's a little rough around the edges, you know. They're, uh, they've got their own internal gang-related uh, problems, you know, stabbings, uh, kidnappings, torture, etc. It's a pretty grim part of the world. I know that, you know, there's obviously police there and stuff, but it's everywhere, isn't it, really? Even the nicest parts of the UK. Exactly, mate. You just, you know, there's no point in getting a weapon used on you if you are a weapon. <laughs> I identify as a machine gun, so watch out, boys. <laughs> yeah. Now, luckily, because I'm local, I... Oh, it sounds a bit... I don't say this to, to be proud of it, but I coach a lot of the kids that are little shits. Or the parents who are have kids who are little shits um, play on my teams. And so I kind of get left alone a little bit because I'm not here to cause problems. And like I go to the gym with a lot of these people, they kind of know me for that way. So I don't really have a lot of beef or, or issues with people because I don't, I'm not part of it. I don't look like a roadman. I don't sound like a roadman. I'm not part of that life. And a lot of the time, if you're not, there's not, you're not on their radar, which is a good thing. You know, the idea that they're getting random stabbing, it's not like, I know people see that in the news, but to, to get some kid to pull a knife out on you and stab you, you have to piss them off. Say something at them, look at them, challenge them. You just walk on by, there's a good chance you're not getting fucked with. Now, it's just my anecdotal experience, but I've been here a long time, man, and I've not had a lot of issues. I had somebody try to rob me once. I just told them to fuck off. <laughs> I had nothing on me. I was like, what are you going to take my fucking bag? He's like, oh, give me your bag, bro. No. <laughs> just say no. <laughs> yeah, they're just a sword, sword fighting, mate. That's all it did. A lot of the time it's local beef. It's stuff that you don't have anything to do with. You have no influence on it at all. And one of their mates that got done a few years ago is going to do one of their mates and it all goes backwards and forwards. And I've got nothing. You know, the thing that I worry about mostly is my missus. You know, that that's actually the thing that I'd, I'd want to move out for is um, she doesn't get it and she doesn't like it. And she doesn't like leaving the flat on her own. And that's the thing that worries me a little bit, you know. I don't want to put her in a position where she gets compromised or is in an uncomfortable position. I'm used to it, but that's because I'm desensitized to it. Actually, if I moved out into some nice little village, I could still stream Factoria, obviously, but we wouldn't have to put up with that. And I'm at an age now where I just kind of want to, I don't know, it sounds it kind of sounds bullshit, right? But I kind of just want a, like a low drama, no drama existence. You know, I don't, I don't want to be dealing with all this shit. Um, it's not that I can't. It's just, it's fucking tiring, man. It's tiring sitting outside of you. You think it's kind of funny as a story, but sitting outside your flat in the freezing cold for hours whilst the police dismantle the fucking drugs lab, it's just like, come on. No. I've got work tomorrow, man. <laughs> like, I got fucking, I got places I gotta go. I got places, people I need to see. I can't be doing this for the rest of my life. Fighters in the base, I know, man. They just broke a gate. <laughs> And they've boxed it up. <laughs> they put cardboard over the uh, over the window, the broken window. <laughs> oh, the South Threat farming at all? Yeah, they are. They're just using their gun at the moment. Yeah, just one. Do you know what I mean? I, I think you guys understand where I'm coming from here. It's I don't. If I don't have to, I don't want to put up with it. It's complicated, and it is complex. Don't get me wrong. I, I understand that. There's lots of societal issues there, and we're not going to be able to solve any of them during this stream, but a lot of these kids get left behind, man. They have nothing for them. 
Yeah, broken windows. All right, TBD, yeah, TBD. <laughs> that somebody will fix that. Not me. Somebody will. We'll keep an eye out on this box <laughs> to see it, you know its prospective future. <laughs> um. But yeah, so I'm, I think I'm moving out of London. Uh, probably near the end of the year. I don't think I can do it anytime soon. But um, yeah, do you know what? I might put that because I know we've got a lot of German guys um, in um, in the in the in, in the game. Sorry, I'm French as well, so I might take a bit of a holiday and say, do you know what? I'll be in Lille or I'll be in France, Paris or something. If you guys are close, let's have a beer, meet up, say hello. I'm not that weird in real life. I hope I'm not. Um, as we see now, the first four sciences ticking into the labs. Um, for the north. Let's check in on their research, see where they're at. And again, I haven't done a huge amount of talking about the game. It's uh, It's been a weird one. Hi Prox, how's it going mate? We've had some drama. We've had some, you know, this is game two. <laughs> game one, one team decided not to defend, <laughs> which is a terrible strategy, don't do that. Switzerland. Oh mate, I'd love to go to Switzerland. Holy crap, I'd go skiing if I could. Um, Yeah, more drama mate, more drama. Let's play the who causes drama in the server game. There's a player. I'm thinking of a player on our server who argues with people all the time. You have three guesses as to who it is. <laughs> the box is still alive, though. The bo <laughs> Look at that. So, yeah, Prox, see if you can guess. The, the, the player isn't in the game at the moment, but there was a player in this game, too, who argues a lot with people in our server. And it's not Whisper. Who are you thinking? Who would you attribute that type of player, that type of play style to? It's not going to take long to guess, I'm going to be honest. As we can see, Suburban Turnip. Suburban Turnip. You can join, mate. It is not Trico. Trico has just joined us. However, so Trico, not Trico. But you're close. You're, that style of player. It's not. In fact, they were arguing with Cute Meow Meow. So I'll give you a bit more detail. They were arguing with Carl and Cute Meow Meow. That might make it very obvious. So there's a player on the server who somehow seems to follow Carl around like a bad smell and argues with them constantly. They're currently not in the game. And I think we're discussing... I don't know, man. I think Cute Meow Meow is like a really nice player. I don't understand like why there's any kind of... And I, I the same with Carl, man. Like, how can you be angry at that guy? I don't get it. Yeah, you got it in one. There you go, Dreadrian. I don't know. I don't know. What can you do? What can you do? He basically kind of went over to their outpost. They said that they'd leave the game if he was to join their outpost. And he just ignored them. And so they left the game. Which is weird. You guys have been around for a while, right? This isn't new. It's not a new thing. Yeah, I know, mate. I don't know. Either way, welcome in. We're on to game two. We're going to try not to use all the airspace to talk about it. But you are right, though, mate. It's difficult. It's not easy. And we're talking about where, if we're going to go on... Yeah, no, and the thing is, it's it's difficult. You are you are right, Cliff. I, I'm not taking one side or the other. I just find it odd because it this seems to be like an old problem that hasn't resolved itself. Like it's this has been going on for months now, and you'd hope that you just avoid each other. You know, just don't play near each other. Don't be on the same team. Or if you are, just avoid each other in general. I feel like by like a heat like a heat-seeking missile going towards them, um, you're kind of waiting for problems. You know. I think so too, yeah. But again, hopefully it hasn't changed the dial for the South too much. But I think Carl and Cute Meow Meow are two very strong players that they don't have now, which is a shame. But I think he dealt with it well, mate. You know, I think he dealt with it well. That, that's the one thing that we're starting to realize as admins is that, you know, the, the last resort really is a kick. Let's be honest, the very last resort is for us to go, do you know what, you can't be here. And the only time I've ever done that is a player joined the game and drew a swastika in the map with belts mate instant kick you've made my decision so easy there do you know what i mean like i don't even have to think about what i do it's just get out 
<laughs> you know, you can say, you can be whoever you want, believe whatever you want, vote for whoever you want, think however you want, say whatever you want. But freedom of thought, freedom of speech doesn't necessarily mean freedom of consequences. And if you believe in that, we have clear rules. This is a video game after all, not a platform to make political statements. And um, yeah, just just don't do that. You know? <sighs> something something about if there was a game. I was on a voice call. It was it, I was either in the voice channel or I was I was on something. And Tradium was just going mental. And not mental as in like nuts, but he was just. I fucking hate Carl, and I fuck. Yeah, it was, honestly, mate, he took it. Something really personal has happened there. I don't understand it, but something really personal has happened. And um, they've now they don't have. Yeah, sorry. We're tangentially we're going off a of side note here, but the game is slower, so we are. You know, we'll, we'll get there eventually to like the big stuff. Um. That is true, though, Tio. Freedom of speech does not apply to private organizations and clubs. I, I, you don't want to restrict people from being themselves, obviously. You know, we don't want to clamp down on people, but there are kind of things that are kind of like using the N-word, right? Don't go around calling people the N-word. You wouldn't do it in real life. Let's be honest. You're not going to walk up to a black person and call them the N-word. And if you do, you're quite badly adjusted. You know, in my mind, just my opinion, but it's just not a thing that you do, it's a common thing that you do. And I agree with that as well. People do take the game way too seriously, way too seriously. It's here, we're here to have fun. We're here to compete, that's fine too. But let's not misunderstand what competition looks like. You know, we're competing with each other to make each other better so that when we play future games, we have better players in our server. So if the South beat the North, that doesn't mean the South are all better human beings. They just had a better game plan. You know, and some of these guys are ridiculous. Like, let's take a look up here. Roomboggler, this guy's a bloody speedrunner. It takes a lot to beat somebody this good. Like, trust me, it takes a lot. I I think I can count on one hand the amount of games I've beaten Roomboggler in where he hasn't been on my team. And genuine, I think there are like four games in total I've beaten Roomboggler. It's hard, man. It's hard to beat people this quick because they don't slow down with drama. <laughs> they just go and they go and they go and they go. And before you know it, there's a rocket and then there's 10 and then you've lost the game. <laughs> So yeah. Exactly. More power to him. You know, that's the thing that he he's he's worked hard on getting that fast. You know, work hard who's who's getting that fast. And you're right, kids who think it's a joke and Yeah, it's sad really. I know that people can be antagonistic, but I don't know. I I come from a very so I'm like more of a holistic uh, like background. I, I'm a coach in real life. I coach sports and uh, I have a simple saying. I got taught this when I was very young, uh, which is look after yourself. Number one, you can't help anybody if you are in problem area, if you're thinking negatively or if you're in, if you're depressed or injured even, even physically injured. Look after yourself and if you can do that, look after others. Two really simple con uh, con uh, things to understand here. Oh, and we see bugs closing in now. I wonder if that cardboard box is still there. We will check on this. We will make sure to see how this goes. But yeah, I, two two things. Just look. Call it lay low. That that I want to get that printed on the t-shirt, mate. Lay low. Look after yourself. Look after others. You know, it's not about being a hippie or. Peace and love, man. It's just it's common sense, isn't it, really? Check in on people. If you know that you've got a mate that gets depressed or that, you know, is drinking a bit too much or is, you know, using drugs and it's getting and it's fucking them up, like, tell them. Look after them, you know? Be honest with them. But, yeah, these guys need to deal with these bugs. Holy crap. And, and it's simple, you know? Simple rule to live by. Not everybody can lay low. Um... But yeah, I, I stick to that. That's kind of my, my guiding principle in life is just try try and do some good in the world. Uh, it's been an emotional game, hasn't it? Jesus. I feel like that initial drama has spun the stream off a little bit. <laughs> but it's I'm firstly thank you for I, I say I need to say this every hour anyway. Thank you for joining me for any of you that have. Um Welcome, my name's Ghosty. For anybody that's new, feel free to ask questions. I'm more than happy to answer and explain what's going on. This is a very niche game mode. There's lots of stuff going on, so 
If you want to kind of look at a certain part of the map or ask questions, yeah, feel free to. I agree with you, Space Dog hasn't really gotten a huge amount done. I wonder what the plan is out here as well. Is this just going to be huge steel product? Maybe? I mean, there's a ton of iron out here. 1.3 mil. Nero goes down. The outpost gets raided. Ooh. Okay, there's enough of them here to defend though, right? Okay, Everlord cleans up. The south need to start threat farming now. They need to. Are we closing in on defenders at all? Yeah, Space Dog to me, it's one of those nuts and bolts players. And what, what, I, what I mean by nuts and bolts is, um, they just get their, their, if you ask them to do something, they just get it done. You know, hey mate, I need you to make lasers, boom. All right, an hour and 10 minutes in, bang, we've got lasers, excellent. Um, Mipmop, let's take a look. Yeah, do you know what, probably. <laughs> the wiggly wall, I know. Wiggly walls are not the way. If you can, if you can, make sure that your wall is as straight as possible. These angles are not ideal, honestly. Uh, wiggly walls tend to kind of get taken down very, very fast. So, yeah, when in doubt, straighten it out. <laughs> That's something I need to get put on a fucking t-shirt. Secondarily, gun turrets at this point in the game, useless. You know, the bugs are beginning to ramp up and get stronger. And on the right, ooh, ooh, that is, that's adventurous, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, the oil is nice, but that is an adventure. Ooh, and another box. We have to keep our eye on both these boxes, okay? I want to see how long they last. <laughs> oh, dear. So, yeah, ideally, and again, in an ideal world, and it has been a while since I pulled out my MS Paint tools, the bugs are going to come and crash into your buildings, meaning that you should have a defensive line set. Defensive line down the side of your base. I'm just drawing one to be arbitrary. This doesn't have to be the one you use. And then hopefully a straight line to, to knit everything up together. Behind all of that, you will put your defensive buildings. Um, you're gonna put some flame towers, uh, laser towers, and they'll defend anything that comes towards your base. And what that means is that inside your base, inside of this blue box, and I apologize if any of you are colorblind, uh, these probably aren't, aren't the right colors to be using, but inside of this blue box, you can build all of the production that you need for, you know, science, production, defense, you name it, all that stuff can fit in here. A wiggly wall. It's not the end of the world, but it's certainly not a great look, I'm going to be honest. Like, um, But they have a wall, and that's more than they had last game. They already have more walls. It's gone. Where's my box? They took it away. Oh no, there's one here, there we go, okay. We'll keep an eye on this one. We'll see how long that box lasts. <laughs> but yeah, it's been, um, it's been an interesting one. Meanwhile, up on north, they have some dedicated threat farmers who are driving the number very deep into the thousands. Uh, the south could be doing the same, but again, there are a few players short, so I don't know. I would commit probably just to walling up and keeping myself safe in that respect. Again, they do have uranium right in the middle right in the middle of this here. So 759,000 uranium, that's kind of wild, especially very close to Maine, so. See, the lack of experience and knowledge or lack of empathy to draw swastikas or saying N-words. Yeah, you're right, mate, you're right. They don't understand what it truly means to people who are affected by it. Yeah, education, man, education is, sometimes these people don't want to learn though. It's like, it's funny to them to cause a reaction, not realizing that historically it's a very insulting thing to say. Some people actually believe that stuff, man. I don't want to get too... I know we don't. We tend not to get too political here. Oh, no. Ooh, okay, that's not a big hit. You can recover this. The stone has been taken down. Yeah, unfortunately, it's people that genuinely believe that stuff that I, I draw issue with. Uh, oh, the man goes down. I've got an interesting story for you. Yeah, I've got it too. I've got an interesting story for you, and I don't think I've said this one before. And and it, it's it speaks volumes to um, no, no. Uh, oh, well, maybe. 
So these guys must have just done a thunder run. So I was in, I was in Japan and it was a weird day. Let me set the scene first. I'll set the scene first and then I'll explain my, uh, I'll explain what's going on. Oh, flame is nice. We have a flamethrower user. I think this is meta now. I'm going to be honest, especially when the, when the bugs evolve. We'll get to that later. I'll explain what I'm seeing in, in a second, but let me just set the scene. I'm 14 years old. I'm in school in Japan over the summer. Um, I had the whole time I was there, I was learning the language. I was going to school, a Japanese school, not an English school. So I was learning Japanese as well. And I was integrating with the culture. I'd been there for a month. I'd gone to baseball games. I had met other Japanese people. I, w I could go to restaurants and order food. I was just generally speaking, I was, I was getting, getting away with living in, in and around the culture. One day I wake up and it, I was told by the people I was staying with, my friend and their family, um, today is a very important day in our national history, but you're not allowed to make noise today. You're not allowed to smile. You're not allowed to be happy. You just have to keep within yourself and you have to just, just, just get through the day. And it was the 40th anniversary of Nagasaki and Hiroshima. Sorry, not the 40th. It was the 60th anniversary of Nagasaki and Hiroshima. I was the only white person in the, in the part of Tokyo that I was in, there were no other white people. So when I was standing on train stations, I was, I stood out like a sore thumb. Nobody spoke. It was very solemn. They were very aware that that was a very difficult moment in their, their, their country's history. And so every single person was observing a very stoic, very kind of me, like, that's what I'm looking for, mediated, you know, all right, this is a shameful part of our history. This is something that we're not proud of. And so we're not going to, on this anniversary, nobody is going to be having fun. We're just going to get through the day. We're going to respect the day. And then the day will be over and then we can carry on with our lives. But it was a, it was a memory for them or, or you know, was, I'm, I'm struggling to come up with the right words here because it was quite huge. Like I've never been involved in anything like that before. All the way through the day, you could just feel sadness like genuine sadness from everyone around. I was on a train on my way home from school. Nobody was talking. There was literally silence. All you could hear is like the train just going over the tracks and everybody was just head down. Nobody was reading books. Everybody was just very quiet. This was before the age of smartphones as well. So it wasn't like people were on their phone on TikTok or whatever. And this man stands up and he started screaming at me. And I was like, I was a kid, man. I didn't know what the hell was going on. And he was screaming at me in Japanese and he was really drunk and I had no idea what he was saying. It was like really, really angry. And I've genuine, like, I want to kill you anger kind of stuff. And I was like, he was getting closer and closer to me. And I was like, what do I do? Because I'm too small. Like I can't really punch him. He's bigger than me. Do you know what I mean? Like I, I was just genuinely like a kid. And um, <clears throat> do you know, I don't think I've fucking spoken about this in years, actually. A bit cathartic. Anyway. He, um, he got closer and closer to me and this old Japanese man, really old, I'm talking like gray hair, he stood up and he open hand just <laughs> slapped him in the face, like full like, open hand, bang, just slapped him in the face. He said like two things to him. It, it would like, du -du 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 -du. and the guy just went and sat back down in his seat. And I was like, fucking hell mate, that is generational trauma. And... He didn't know I was English. No, he didn't know if I was American or not. He didn't know if I was English. He just saw me and just decided to kick off. And it was weird. Like, I, I didn't know how to take it. I, I remember getting home and I was telling people and they were like, he should never have spoken to you. He was not allowed to speak on the train. He should have known. He should have known. And um, yeah, some people don't understand like the weight of those kind of things. Like making fun or, or making things like Nazi stuff funny. It's not. It was horrendous. If you've ever been to Auschwitz or any of the, um, the, the concentration camps, you get a wider understanding as to why that needs to never happen again. I know we talk about not being political. I don't want to make this seem like a fucking stream run. Ranting and talking about how the world should be, but it's a stark reminder of where we should never go again, ever. And um, yeah. Again, I've been an idiot at times. I don't think I've ever called anybody the N-word. And that's not me looking all proud and stuff, but um, I, I just, I think, yeah. But again, you actually, I hate to say it, but 
You've, you're allowed to say, in, in most countries, you're allowed to say whatever you want. But remember this, freedom of speech doesn't mean freedom of repercussions. If you anger somebody by calling them the N-word and they punch you in the face, you called them that. You didn't have to. <laughs> them punching you in the face is a reasonable response. <laughs> As we see another death, Mr. T, he's not the official Mr. T. We've already gone through this. This is fake news. He's the unofficial Mr. T. So yeah, anyway, enough of that. It looks like the North are building walls. Uh, oh, that Japan, do you know what, mate? I've got so many stories from Japan. If anybody you guys want to hear some stories, let me know and I'll rattle them off. I've got some great ones. I was 14 years old and I was getting drunk in, in karaoke bars. It was fucking great. <laughs> no, I understand, mate. I understand. And you know what? I think it's... it's... When I started this off... Um, when I started this po this this podcast off, it's not a podcast. When I started this stream off, I kind of I wanted it. I wondered what it would be and what it wouldn't be. And what it has been for me, it's been a it's been great. Being able to talk to people, and, and and express ideas and swap stories and meet new people, and it's grown and that's great. And we've also talked about some tough stuff too. And I, I don't want to shy away from difficult conversations. I don't want to turn into like a bloody podcaster, you know, where it's like, how was your childhood? How was your relationship with your parents? Like none of that stuff. But I feel like we've managed to talk about some difficult stuff and I don't shy away from difficult conversations. Sometimes they're hard to have, but they're necessary. Um, as long as we can talk about it in the right, in the without sounding sanctimonious, as long as we can talk about it in the right way, where it's constructive, you know, um, I feel like that's part of why I enjoy streaming. I'm not here to sound like bloody Joe Rogan. <laughs> I don't want it to be like that at all. We're here for Biter Battles, and I've not been back yet, Tracks. I've not been back. I have a friend of mine, uh, Kenta. Oh, I fucking miss Kenta. He's such good fun. Kenta is in a rock band in Tokyo. He plays ukulele, and he plugs it into loads of um, electric pedals. So he plays like electric ukulele. Oh, it's so good, man. I watched some of his videos. It's, it's awesome. Uh, I have not been back since though. Life kind of took off and I started moving around a lot more. I went to university quite young and um, yeah, everything kind of happened in a big, in a big blur, really. I, I mean, I got to like my mid twenties and I was like, wow, that was fucking quick, <laughs> you know? Um, but I will go back. I've actually talked about taking my girlfriend out there. And, um, and I think if I do, I think I'll probably propose. And she won't know this because um, she'll never watch this back. We have GG's being called? <laughs> yeah, I know. Time flies, mate, time flies. But do you know what? If I could be my age now or in my 20s, I'd prefer to be now. Nah, mate, I'm not gonna, you're not gonna say anything wrong, Thunder. To me, it looks like you've got a pretty solid head on your shoulders, mate. You've got a pretty solid head on your shoulders, so. All right, South are building their wall. Has there been a send? Did I miss a, I missed a send. I've been literally rabbiting on. 876 purple, of course it was Stick Lord, of course. Uh, we're at the one hour and 20 mark, so we're 16 minutes away from uh, <laughs> when the last game ended. The wall is being bitten down. Flamethrowers have been researched, so are they being made? Yes, they are. Flamer Towers can go down, so you can bounce back from this. However, we're at that critical point in the game, which I was speaking about beforehand, where you need to have walls down, and those walls need to be populated. At the moment, there is no populated walls with kind of defense. So, um... Yeah, you can't be, man. Because he'll tell people to push. He will say to somebody, look, I want one of you guys to build spam. And last game, Purple Spam was it. You know, Purple Spam was the one. So, um... That's not a good look. Everyone handcraft capsules, all caps. <laughs> oh no. So yeah, the bugs are now at 62%. This is, uh, yeah, this is tough, man. This is tough. Uh, you know, you're going to be dealing with big bugs now. There's a couple of gun turrets. The beginnings, although Blitzy, it's plugging it in. It's plugging it in. Yeah, let's take a look. Let's take a look at the outpost. So this here is Stick Lords. We have uh, a couple of lanes of steel. In fact, good steel here. Loads of steel, actually. Uh, we've got one lane of two lanes of copper, uh, two lanes of iron, two lanes of steel. Uh, am I looking at this? Three lanes of steel. 
Ooh. No, sorry, two lanes to heal. I'm a fucking idiot. I'm two lanes to heal. <laughs> From the game chat, it looks like Trico is trolling as usual. We'll check in on Trico as well. We've got red chip production, uh, green chip production. Okay, and we've got some purple coming in. And again, this purple is too spam. And they already have 200 more of it. So Trico is where exactly? Oh no, Outpost is getting munched. And again, big bugs, no flamers. We've seen this before. We've seen this before. And there's more on the way. Oh, do I play the next game? I think I need to play the next game. It's got to be the way, right? Because this is just... Oh. You don't want to be in this situation at all. But you know it's going to be boring though, right, guys? Because I'm literally going to be building walls. <laughs> Flame of Hope goes down. Perfect. I uninstalled. Oh, no. Are you taking a break? <laughs> I'm, I'm planning on captaining in game. Um, it's just about finding the time. You know? Maybe we should send. Nah, I need to defend, man. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm, I'm planning on... I, I need to have a Saturday where I've got all the time in the world to, to play and to coordinate. Wait, I don't want to join a team. I want to do this. Why am I clicking join team? <laughs> it's too late. <laughs> and whoever does join, they're going south to deal with this. Absolute chaos. Ah, oh, you should play, mate. It's it's a kind of game mode where anybody can do anything. I, I kind of take people under my wing um, and kind of help try and mobilize the people that are in need of a job. Just like, all right, mate, come on, let's go and get a wall built. Help me build the wall. Help me put the defenses down. Let me and you be like the defensive superheroes. Okay, yeah, this is, um, I mean, the capsules are doing a good job. But Jesus, they are under so much pressure now. And again, there is nothing here to push the bugs back. So all they're doing is crashing into the walls and building up. And then another wave comes in to reinforce them. And it just looks like it's almost exactly the same timing. All of this mixed patch gets ripped up. And it's just, it's just too much. It's just way too much. We might be on for a game three here, guys. I know, it's almost like they didn't learn but those who do not learn from history are doomed to repeat it. And here we are in almost exactly the same kind of pattern, move, sweeping in from the left hand side. Bugs have managed to make it through. A fool's warrant, a fool's errand. No worries, Van. Well, thank you for joining us. Thank you for the follow as well. And we're here every weekend, man. We're here every weekend. I'm hoping to, to captain one of these games. So I will be needing players to come and help me try and win my game. So yeah, the more you guys watch, I might need to call up on some of you to help join in. And yeah, it's just, this is too much. There's no way they get this done. I want them to. And with capsules, you can actually get rid of this wave quite quickly. But, Teo, I'm picking you first. How about that? I'm gonna pick you first. If you're in the server early, obviously if you join later, I'll have to pick you later, but I want you on my team, mate. I need more Teos, the Teos of the world in my, or Theo, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing that. Uh, but I have I have an idea of how I want to play, and we've been messing around a little bit with uh, with threat, with mutagen, with the sending mechanic as well. It looks to me like purple might be the new one. No, because if I pick you first, I can blame you. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I wouldn't blame anyone. I think we're we're on for a win. But um, I've got a couple of like I've got some people I've been messaging saying, "Hey man, if I pick you, could you do X, Y, and Z?" And so what I'd like to do is try a new style out. I've been kind of theory crafting. Um, I've been theory crafting ways to win. And I think I've come up with one that haven't we haven't really seen before. So, um, yeah, mate, yeah. It, it's either gonna be next Saturday or the Saturday after. So it's either next week or the week after. Uh, I just, what it is, is I like to cast the games, but I normally do this when I'm rushing home from work or I'm rushing home from some social stuff. So. You know, I got in the door literally as the captain's game started today. Whereas on the day, I kind of want an hour or two where I can like gear myself up, have a coffee, get ready. Because it's serious business, man. It's fun. Don't get me wrong, it is fun. But um, <sighs> it's one of those ones where I kind of want to win. And, and if we're going to stream it, I kind of want to stream us playing really well together, helping solve problems, 
<laughs> for, for any of you, yeah, it's a good point. It's a very good point. I'll just sack my job off. I don't need to pay rent. <laughs> um, for any of you that don't know, uh, we do put these games up on uh, we do put these games up on YouTube. I'll throw a link to that um, YouTube channel now. It's slowly but surely growing. It's kind of nice to see that Bite of Battles has got some attention. Uh, so feel free to have a look at that. I'd like there to be another game. It might be a special game. But yeah, this is um, it's almost about the same time, isn't it? Ten minutes, nine minutes early, but still. And the box wall will not be enough. <laughs> the inserters will not be enough. The South have have just not defended this time round. Again, the same mistake leads to the same outcome. The silo slowly but surely gets chewed to pieces. We're on to red health now. Under 1300 health. And all you can really say is those who don't do not learn from history seem to repeat it. They didn't send, yeah, it's weird, isn't it? The new meta seems to be to, to jiggle the number up, you know? You don't want to be sat at a low number for too long. But we'll type in G, well played. I think that losing Carl early, I mean, Carl's a big pick as well. When you don't, If you pick Carl, you're not picking somebody else. Okay, we're gonna see maybe a special game. Captains with free personal bots. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm not going to play it, but I'm going to vote for it. That'd be awesome to watch. That'll be a really quick game as well. All right, awesome. Right, well, we've got a few minutes now. They're saying three minutes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go off and make a little bit of food. I, I reckon it's probably best if everybody has a stretch, get some water on, and we'll meet back here in a couple minutes. GG's. I move back to playing GG's. Have a good day, man. Um, and yeah, so I'm going to get some water, I'm going to have a stretch, I'm going to go and check everything that is locked down and that my heating's on. So yeah, enjoy the rest of your weekend if you're not here for the last one. Uh, but we'll do one more game and then I'll call it for today. So yeah, have a good weekend guys. I'll see you on next Saturday if you're leaving us now. If not, I'll see you back here in three minutes. I need some food.
Okay. Do you know what? I'll take a I'll take a mini break when the food turns up, I think. <laughs> and just I'm gonna ask if maybe somebody else can ref this. It's not it's not the hardest thing in the world refereeing the game, but you have to divide your attention um, between a few bits and pieces. Uh, right, have we voted on a map? We voted on that. Carl three is try hard. Carl one is try harder. That's like Super Saiyan. Uh, so this is going to be a free personal bots game. Carl two is. <laughs> Ah, oh, cool. Yeah, cheers for sticking with us, guys. We're going to do a third game. Why not? It's been a good day. Both games have been quite, quite, like, quick. The South seemed to not figure this thing out. So, um... I'm not going to make that joke. That's a terrible joke. Um, yeah, so we're going to watch this third game. It's going to be a special game. Uh, where no, this is uh, this will be a. So we're gonna do personal free personal robots, and uh, free basically you're just gonna have free bots with the super suit, so you can run really quickly. The early game will be super fast. We'll probably see a team still fail to build walls, even though you have robots for free. Um. seen the DLC post. Uh, ticket 40. Oh no, we've had a support ticket come in. One second. Uh, we have a ticket. Right, I'll deal with that ticket. Space Age DLC. Oh my god. I heard that it's gonna kind of fuck with our server a little bit. <laughs> it's gonna fuck with our server a teeny tiny amount. But that's fine. Um, oh, we're still running backwards. Excellent. <laughs> I kind of want to race people. Any of you guys on here? Should we have a race? <laughs> I, I'm definitely two laps up, right? I've, I've, I've crashed. I've crashed. <laughs> that would be what would be really cool. I, I don't think you could possibly do it. Really, is if you had like, if you had a map here, and then you basically have like a, a like a space base that can send you stuff down that you cannot create. Uh, I don't want to, I'll just watch this one. So I'm also dealing with a support ticket as well. Um. Sorry, I'm just dealing with something on Discord real quick. Ah, 
Cool. All right, I'm I'm not doing that anymore. I'm not dealing with that anymore. That's not my problem. <laughs> I will deal with it when the stream goes down. I will uh, bring that back up. Oh, Zudmud, thank you very much, mate. I really appreciate that. I say it every week. You guys can watch for free, but I I welcome any any donations. It goes towards coffee, and sometimes it goes towards a pizza. So thank you very much, mate. I really appreciate it. We're on to game number three. It's Dreadrian on south versus Neuro on north. Um, this is going to be wild because it's going to be a special game. Oh, mate, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. Um, I've got my free Prime sub, actually, in seven days. I, I, I didn't realize you get one for free. So if any of you guys have... Is it Amazon Prime? I think it's just if you have an Amazon Prime account, you get a free Twitch sub every month. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find, um, I want to find small content creators and other people in our little Byte Battles community. And every month I'm going to give them my Prime sub. So like do one a month. It doesn't add up to much, but it's it's enough to make somebody's day. Like it, it's a couple of dollars or pounds, however you want to call it. And uh, I, I do this for free, mate. I really enjoy it. It's um, it's a way of me being social when I'm really tired on a weekend, you know. Don't expect me to. Is Enkling playing this one, mate? It's got to be like five in the morning for Ling, right? crap so I'll run you through I know at the moment let me check out my discord because I've got a group of people here I know for sure that there are three unique scenarios which are being worked on whispers working on one an un a French player who I will not name who's asked not to be named but there's a French player in our server which I think keeps it vague there's a French player in our server who is working on another um, another um, scenario and there's a third person I think an American that's not whisper and all of them bring in different oh yeah the, the predictions as well Jesus all right the north one surprise <laughs> the south didn't build a wall shock <laughs> um, but we do have ambition to add some mods in and I've been working on my own I've been working on my own um, scenario which I think is really cool it's just not working at the moment um, if any of you are programmers, which I'm sure many of you are, or know Lua, which is the code that Factorio is based off of, uh, I may need to pick your brain a little bit because I am having problems. Um, it's by to battle still, but what it is, is it's got a cool mechanic in it. So imagine if you were to combine treasure hunting and by to battles together. So we place things inside the map that are clues to other things. So yeah. Oh, one's, oh, bloody admin chat. Oh, come on. I don't want to read hundreds of messages. Oh, come on. Fuck off. Why? Rune Boggler's up north. Maybe this is a game of healing friendship making alien artifacts from back in the days so i had a some my idea um my idea without giving away too much because we will play this um my idea is to have a treasure hunt that tells a story um throughout the game 
and the the different like what they oh, I call them artifact sites, but they're going to be like little shrines and stuff that. So basically, what needs to happen is we we roll a map, and I go in and edit it. So I might need like half an hour to put these places down. So some, some of them will have nothing in them. You never know. Maybe one box there might be a behemoth bug. <laughs> so you 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 know grenade a box and then a bug appears. You kill that bug, you get something. That that kind of stuff. So there's like an RPG style element just to that one game. It's all handcrafted, so it would take me a while. I've already got the story laid out, and um, effectively, it ends with you sacrificing somebody in one of these. Yeah, I'll tell you. I may as well tell you because I, I like it. So you do all these things. Some of them happen on Discord, by the way. So you'll have to go to a certain channel and solve a problem, like a riddle. Um. So yeah, so you have like uh, there's riddles to solve. There's stuff in game to do, and then it finishes with you. Building an altar directly in the middle of the of your of your side, and you have to sacrifice one of your players, and every single player in your team has to grab a grenade, meet at this central point, and grenade the person at the same time. That then ascends them, and that gives one player on your team a special item. Oh, oh, put a player in the rocket. Yes, that's such a better idea. We're doing both. Uh, I'm sorry, X Mud. Uh, Zudmud, I'm gonna make. I might steal that idea. I'll credit you for it, 100%. I'll put. I might name you after the rocket, the Zudmud rocket. <laughs> so yeah, the idea was that by sacrificing somebody, they actually ascend. What are we doing? Wait, what? Okay, weren't we just picking teams? Did I just miss something there? Sorry, I was talking about the bloody the new game mode. Okay, well, fine. We're back onto this, I guess. <laughs> ah, okay, yeah, sorry, I do see Discord on my second screen and it's going quite quick. <laughs> you know when like the people are chatting and there's just stuff popping up. Ah, okay, yeah, 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 okay, so he was captain on one side. None of you noobs want to captain. <laughs> okay, we have, we have several rules for a reason. And again, picking Carl straight away means that Carl will just leave, so... I don't, I don't know, I don't know. I feel like that drama is taking up more than a game, so I'm not going to keep going on, but I, I'm not part of that decision. Uh, I was asked if he joined the outpost, he did. And they've taken inference and read the rules and gone, yeah, that's about. So, yeah, so basically you follow, you follow this story all the way through the game. And eventually you kind of learn about who the bad guy is and like, you know, there's like law. And if each team can kind of answer riddles at certain times, it's like a treasure hunt you get an item, you get given stuff. So you kind of incentivize to to play and to, to discover this stuff because you get an advantage. Just little things like 50 bots. You know, all of a sudden you have bots before everybody else. You know what I mean? Little things like that. And uh, it finishes with a sacrifice and also now a rocket launch. I want to launch an outposter into space and maybe like sacrifice somebody at the same time. Oh, that'd be cool. <laughs> and, um... And yeah, and then, yeah, it, and if you don't do that stuff, there's punishments, like the evolution going up, you know? There might be an evil god on the map that is upset with you not following along. And if you don't complete any of those steps, the evolution will jump up by 10% or 15%, depending on how big a task it is. So yeah, I, I want to play that scenario out. There's more to it than that, but I think that's that I can say that in general terms, without giving away too much. Oh, discharge defense. Okay. No legs. That's interesting. They're giving you a super suit, but they're not giving you the super quick legs to run with. I kind of like that, though. They've given us discharge defense. Hang on a minute. They've given us discharge and... That's broken. Do they not know that's broken? Uh, do I say anything? I don't know if I should... I don't know if you guys have ever used this before. Um, uh, it's... <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, so um, for any of you that don't use this, it's quite a niche tool. Um, with uh, Power Armor 2 and Discharge Defense, I think, I, I've done this before once, you can run into base. I should say something because this will be, you can threat farm into the millions, but it will lead for a longer game. So we'll be able to actually see a game play out and it get to rockets. And maybe they've, ch but I, I don't think they've changed this at all. Basically you put two or three of these in your power armor, charge it up obviously with batteries and your, and your you know, nuclear generator. And you just need to get close to the bugs. You press a little detonator and then like an AOE will kill the bugs. Now again, at 0% evolution, you could walk next to buildings and blow them up. Hand mining, hand crafting. They've in okay, so no legs for increased running speed. I like that. This is going to be an interesting game. Let's let's put a pin in this. Let's put a pin in this. I I'm 99% sure. I'm not saying this to cause kind of um, to to be um, hyperbolic about it. I believe this to be broken. And I, that was like three or four months ago I was using this. I was running around like basically testing stuff out and I built one of these. Um, somehow managed to wing wangle through the... Uh... And if you, if you match it with shields as well, it's wild, mate. You are a tank. You are literally a tank. You know, if you, if you were to pair this with energy shield one or two, a few of these, with no legs as well, which means you can just fill up a ton of batteries into your suit. You can just you can threat farm without needing bullets. You can threat farm with ah oh dear. Don't tell anyone. <laughs> Don't tell anyone. Oh god. Anyway, anyway, we're on to game number three. I will put up a, a chat a predictor down the line. Somebody's been winning lots of points betting against the South today. <laughs> I would like to say that the South have, they've got Ling, Pipes, Fodeca. Rune Boggler's won every game today. So it might be worth betting on Rune Boggler winning. And then up North, Thorgal, who's got an amazing voice, by the way. This guy sounds like a bloody movie voiceover guy. G squared, Mipmop, Stick Lord, Martin Max King, Pavev, North. North looks strong. Is this gonna be a three time North win? Or is Runebogler going to go 100% on Captain's game day? reading the Discord drama. Uh, oh no. Anyway, uh, do you know what? This is already taking up way too much of my brain power to deal with. One stupid little thing and it's just, yeah, sidetracked me. Uh, right, let's change the music. Let's let's get some fucking energy in here. Let's, let's pick this up a bit. I don't know what you guys feel like listening to. We've done rock. We've done jazz times two. Done disco. Battle music maybe later. We might do battle music later. Pirate music? Reggae. Oh, mate, reggae's a great shout. Yeah, mate, reggae's, reggae's the one. Okay, let's see. Royalty-free reggae music. We'll, we'll park the pirate music for later, yeah. We will listen to, uh, we'll listen to some pirate music, but first. Uh, let me just make sure this is actually... I don't know if this is copyright free or not. I don't want to get done. Let me give me a second. Just there's a thing I can put it in to check it. Because sometimes they say that it is and it's absolutely not. And then the whole stream is like completely muted. 
Here we go. This one is 100% royalty free for sure. Oh, that is, that's the vibe. Yes, happy with this. 14 players on North, 13 players on South. We're still picking teams. It's a special game today. Game number three, we have this, which is totally not broken. This is not broken at all. Avert thine eyes, this is fine. Bots, batteries, super suits, energy generators, if I can say those words, Robopot Mark II, and uh, this weird trigger button. It doesn't do anything. I wouldn't even pick this up. I wouldn't even bother with this. And I wouldn't even bother with this. So, you were here for game one, weren't you, Tech Priest? Uh, in game one, obviously, the South didn't build a wall, and the bugs, if I use my high-level analysis software, bugs did this. So yellow is game one, and red will be game two. So in game two, the bugs did this. <laughs> exactly the same thing happened. Oh, exactly the same thing. And dreadrin has been banned for a week. <laughs> what a shit show. <laughs> oh, why can't we have nice things? So yeah, so they didn't, they kind of built a wall. There was like a, there was like the, a, a murmuring of a wall. They had like a wall across here, but obviously nothing this side and nothing to the side. So effectively an open goal and both sides, like the North were absolutely firing on all cylinders and there was drama, meaning Carl had to leave because he didn't want to play with Dreidre and etc. And it was just kind of long, like I'm dealing with a little bit of that in the fallout now, but the bugs just made this path. And by the time they made it into the base, even with capsules, they were like 60, I think 5% strength. So game one ended at one hour and 36. Game two ended at one hour and 27. So, uh, yeah, it's all right, man. Seven, day, seven days to cool down. What we are very excited about, and uh, I'm gonna make this like the thumbnail for the YouTube video. <laughs> one second. <laughs> I'm just gonna write no. <laughs> Um, yeah, you're about to see something we don't see that often uh, in this game, which is uh, how to break a game. But the teams are looking healthy. We've retained a lot of players from game one and game two. And um, overall, like, this should be a good one. What we'll do is we'll have a much slower game. I'm, um, I've got some food in the oven, so I'll go off and have a little bit of scoff, maybe scan around. And it looks like we're going to go be to like one of the slower game modes as well. So yeah, you'll love to see it. And we run faster as well. So we're faster hand crafting, faster um, hand, uh, mining. It's just, it's a bit of fun. We've had one serious game. We've had one not very serious game that kind of ended very soon. And I think the players just want to dick around a bit. <laughs> right, awesome. Let's do that. And let's look at the map real quick, because this is the map that we decided on. A large lake heading out to the east covers quite a large portion of the map, but there is oil here through all the trees. Large mix patches. In main, we've got a million three copper, a million four iron, a million one coal. This is a really, really nice opening set with stone being quite low. So the North team name is the Bloodbath Makers with Swistus, Rutan, Pavev, Neuro, Utami, Stiglod, Cedric Weiss, Rahus, ZZ, Cryot, Martin, Max King, Qcrap, Mipmop, Ibi Sleepy, Max 1000, Acontio, which I'm probably butchering, by the way, I do apologize. G squared, Thorgul, Vortex, B Seer, and Colocry. The South, meanwhile, have named themselves Pied's Piping Pipers. 
excellent name by the way. On Pied Piping Pipers, we have developer Zero Sun, Mo Berg, Reagan, K Dog, Granlich, Wizard Phil, the Pied Piper himself or themselves, Four Decker, Space Dog, The Cake is Alive, which is true, Carl Three, uh, the official Mr. T, which we've already established is fake news, he's not actually B.A. Baracus, Enkling, Rune Boggler, T.O. Marks, Blitzy, AR Picks, Just, Jumboy Billy Bob, Just Bob, so both the Bobs in the team, Bloodstained Crow, Califer Bop, Rusky, Kim Crimson. And that South team is looking pretty good. I like both teams, by the way. But I like that South team. They've got some. They need the South need to redeem themselves in one of these games. Has to happen soon, um, because otherwise it's it's going to be a triple loss, three losses in a row for the South. And Stone isn't. It's not really kind of here in the main base. I mean, two hundred k here, ninety k here. I would opt. There isn't a lot of stone here at all. The victory condition is very simple, Tarmf. Sorry if I'm getting the name wrong. <laughs> Each base has one of these. This is a rocket silo. If this dies, your team loses. And the way that it can die is bugs, which exist. Uh, if you're on the south, They'll be running at you from the south to the north, so the bugs will be running at you here. And they are coming to beat you up. They're coming to bite your base. They're coming to rip down your walls, eat all the stuff that you have, and they want to kick you out of your side of the bay, of the of the uh, map. The map itself has this really long river across it, and that splits both of the teams. So here we have all of Team North, and here we have all of Team South. And if you look at either side of the map, both sides have the same stuff on it. So where there's iron in the north, there is also iron on the south, which means that there's no advantage of being on the north or the south. You get exactly the same stuff. And over the course of the game, the bugs are going to get big. They will evolve and there will be loads of them. <laughs> and you can make your enemies bugs bigger and stronger and nastier and meaner and hurt you more by sending science. This is a captain's game, so each team has a captain. The south is Pied Piper, who is, I get this right here. And the north's captain is Neuro, two very, very veteran players of our game mode. They've picked teams. There's still a few more players to pick from. And um, we're gonna start this very, very soon. <laughs> So this is game number three of today. I wasn't expecting to cast three games, but here we are. <laughs> and just before we start, I am going to top up my water bottle, if that's all right with you guys. I'm gonna take a quick one minute break. Feel free to stretch and get some water. And uh, this game will go on for a few hours. So, you know, don't feel like you have to be here for all of it, but for now, um, it's nice to have you with us. We're about to start, but it's taking a little bit of time to get ready. So, yeah, I kind of cliff, man. That game number one was really, really like, it could have been mega. It could have been huge. Yes, so this is Factorio PvP, where your enemy makes the bugs stronger. And then the bugs come and fight you. So, yeah, I'll be back in one minute. And the wall, please build walls. Please. The one thing I'm worried about here, real quick, like, where is the stone? There's no large stone patch. I mean, there's enough here, but I think that somebody needs to grab, like, some of the mixed patches here and try and do something with this. Because, I don't know, man. Oh, yeah, well, obviously out here there's lots. Anyway, I'm going to get my food on, or at least check it, fill up my water bottle. We're about to start. Have a stretch. Get ready for game number three. The South can... They can't lose three times in a row, can they? They can Back in a sec.
Alright, cool. I am back. Took a little bit longer than I thought. Um, we're still figuring out teams. Ooh, 26 on 25. Still planning. <laughs> I thought they'd be going by now. But it's a good thing. We're not missing the beginning of the game. So who have we added? Lots of discussion. And yeah, close to close to 30 on 30, I like it. I like what I see. Sorry about that, it's just, yeah, my phone has just somehow decided to send me all of the messages from all the people I know all at once, so apologies. We are waiting for game three to start. Welcome everyone, I hope you're having a good weekend. It's been a glorious Saturday where I am. Finally, we had our one day of sunshine, back to lots and lots of gray and rainy days. This is a special game, there are some special items. I've pointed out a few of them. Some of them will be, not the best, but this is a game that you can join if you want to or don't. It's your life. Live it how you like. But this is a live game that you can join. You don't need anything. You don't need the DLC. You don't need a 4080. Uh, you don't need to download more RAM or uninstall System32. All you have to do is have a normal and working copy of Factorio and you can get involved in what is shaping up to be quite a decent game. 26 on 26. South stacked hard. <laughs> yeah, Pog is man. Pog is indeed moonshot. Yeah, do you know what? If I had to pick a team to be on, it would probably be Roomboggler's team, I'm gonna be honest. But the, the North don't have any... I mean, let's take a look at this. This is a stack of names, right? Pavev, Cedric Weiss, Qcrat, Fulltime Nub, G-Squared, Vortex. These guys are pretty strong. Neuro strong, Rahus is strong, Max is good, Epo is good. Dr. Claw, OG, he's a really OG guy, like uh, he's been playing for ages. Thorg or Mipmop, I agree that I think the South have a little bit more ELO, but I wouldn't count the North out. Copium. <laughs> and again, I, do, do, have you seen this before in the game, Moonshot? This item. We're giving them out for free. I think we might be on for a game that never ends. <laughs> If for any of you that aren't aware of what's about to happen, I don't want to spoil it because some of the people that are playing are probably watching. There are items here that I think are game breaking, even on the easy difficulty. So. <laughs> oh, we also did things like, um, oh, wait, let me shout that. We're also giving faster hand uh, crafting speed, faster move, faster move speed. So these guys are running around like absolute mad lads. But look at that. Incredible. What is this? What is going on? Somebody's casted spells. Oh, and the bots are infinite quick. Yeah, nice one, guys. This game's not going to go on for 30 hours. <laughs> so the bots are maxed out. You can run really fast. This thing is broken as hell, and you will see that very soon. You're going to be an invincible killing machine, effectively. Why even bother building miners? You should just hand feed your smelters, honestly. This is wild. It, maybe we'll get walls up quicker. But we're, again, we're on the easy difficulty. So um, yeah, maybe we'll see a really interesting game here. Like I, 
I think when I upload these to YouTube, I might cut them up um, so that the two normal games are on and then we have this special game on its own because this is either going to go really, really quick where one team just don't build defenses at all like the last two games or we see... Um... Oh, Tom, thank you for the follow. I really appreciate that. I hope you're having a good weekend as well, mate. I hope you're enjoying the stream. If you have any questions, feel free to ask as well. This game is more like a circus than it is like a, a fully, you know, hardcore captain's game. But it's interesting. I want to see where they take this. The bots are maxed out. I think we might be seeing pipe ball or even potentially wooden box walls. Because <laughs> we all know wooden box walls are indestructible. So handcrafting is quicker. I believe it's like maxed out so you can just build stuff instantly. Run speed is quick. The official Mr. T, which again, we've already established, he's probably fake news. That's not B.A. Baracus. And if you are B.A. Baracus, get in touch. I'm a big fan of your work. Um, yeah, your personal bots, personal robot ports, personal... Again, yes, very, very good point. The problem with having free bots, the problem with having free robot ports, people can grief. What you don't want to see, however, and this can kind of really... I wouldn't say mess our game up, but um, you may, by dumping thousands of bots into um, a network, lag the server. So I'm dubious about how this is going to go, but we'll watch through. It's all, worth, it's all fun. We're all for a laugh, aren't we? Uh, we're going to see some outposters. <laughs> can you imagine? Just pick up the silo. Here we go. Here's the uh, discharge defense at work. Now, who thinks this might break the game a little bit? Any, any of you guys seeing seeing what I was talking about before? One team is going to go deep into the negative millions of threat farm. You're insta-killing stuff. Buildings, there's two-shot and three-shot and buildings, worms, you name it. This, I don't think they realize, but this could stall the game out for hours if it's not addressed. I know we're on easy difficulty and we can climb the, the difficulty up naturally as admins, but in the opening three minutes of the game, one individual has driven the number into the 13, 1400s. So in 10 minutes time, that could be in the tens, if not hundreds of thousands. Again, not shooting a single bullet and not getting touched by a single bug. So I think that if I was on the north or the south, in fact, I'd need my, my threat to be much higher. I want to push my number up and up and up. And with that, I'm going to go and grab my food out of the oven because I think it's done. I think that's enough time for it. And again, we're only through at the very beginning of the game. So like obviously things are still setting up, things are still developing and coalescing. So I need to get my food out of the oven. We're not going to miss too much. But what I'll do is I'll just zoom into this and you guys can see this is kind of what I was talking about before. It's we we might need to undo this. <laughs> I think we've given out something that is far too strong. Uh, with all the personal upgrades as well, you're basically unkillable. With the ability to kill everything else as well. Never mind, that doesn't matter. Let's watch some base builder nerds build the base. I'll be back in a second as you watch this number to like drown. I mean, this is going to go into like the fucking hundreds, if not millions. So yeah, rockets are plenty, please, both sides. All right, I'll be back in a minute.
Okay. I think I just burnt my tongue. Lovely. So huge smelter city. The research is flying in. I think, didn't they upgrade the research as well? Instant handcrafting means you have signs instantly. Yeah, I don't know which way this is gonna go. I'm gonna tuck into this food. I'm gonna scan around as well, guys, but I'm just gonna be AFK on the mic just whilst I have this food, and then we'll get back to it. I can imagine this is either gonna be a really, really, really long game, or it's gonna go the distance. I kinda want it to go the distance, but we'll have to wait and see. And here we go, we're already at a minus 10,000, great. There's two of them doing it now. Well, you get what you, you get what you deserve, don't you? <laughs> Hand out broken items, and get a broken game. We're seven minutes into the game, guys. <laughs> Only seven. Let's wait until we hit the, uh, the half hour mark. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna zoom out. I'll move around the map. If you wanna see anything in particular, let me know. If not, I'm just gonna eat this food. I'll be real quick. Oh yeah, let me do a prediction as well. Because people are saying that the north is stacked, and I kind of agree. But uh, yeah, feel free to vote with your pot noodles who you think will win. You've got 30 minutes to get that vote in, so <clears throat> no rush at all. We're seeing 5,000. I'm slightly worried about that. Are they looking to like rush south off their feet? Because like 20k at this point is... Oh, hey, Team McIntyre. Welcome. We have had two terrible games, followed by a game which I don't think they've envisaged to be broken, but at the moment, um, yeah, we're, we're 10 minutes in and there's minus, 20, what, minus 25k rep. Um, we've given an item out that's far too powerful. <laughs> we've given an item out with upgraded super suits. And um, yeah. We got all we're probably gonna throw. <laughs> exactly. Burner Metropolis. Apologies guys, I'm actually trying to have dinner at the same time as cast this, so. <laughs> My bad. So yeah, it's been a good set of games, don't get me wrong. Interestingly enough, game one, we did see some innovation from Neuro. But there has also been some drama and uh, and that can't go you know, unchecked, so we've had to ban some people. We've been a couple of people have been quite naughty today. They're going to take a few days out uh, to sit and think about what they've done. Um, but also, congrats on the new world record again, mate. I sat through the second one of that. Fucking awesome, mate. Well done. 
It's so fast, man. It's unreal. Maybe not as quick as this. I bet you wish you had this level of bots <laughs> in your in your playthrough. But um, yeah, we've given out a couple of free things. So it's like increased hand mining speed, increased running speed. Uh, we just want to have a bit of fun because the last two games were, let's be completely honest, absolute blowouts. Um, if I in use my high level analysis technique uh, called MS Paint, map one, the bugs ran this direction because there was no wall on the south and the south lost. Map two, the bugs ran this way around the wall because there was no wall and killed the south. <laughs> they died. It's the same game. I mean, literally, they played the same game twice. It was awesome. The south did everything they possibly could want. And then they just didn't defend it. Purple water. <laughs> Purple text on blue water. <laughs> this doesn't hurt my face. <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> So yeah, we're seeing the beginnings of what could either be a game that goes on forever or potentially a game that will end quickly. So I don't know, like I'm, I'm kind of, I want it to go on for a while, but in many other ways, we, we don't deserve nice things today as a community. We've kind of not really played very well. <laughs> oh, thank God I'm not the referee, but I'll talk to the referee. Uh, who's ref? One of the, I think one of the players is refereeing this third game. And yeah, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm just gonna hop off mic. I'm gonna finish off this pizza and um, and then we'll get cracking on with what's going on. Cause we do have a couple of people outposting. <laughs> fake news, you are fake news. That is very true. I'm, I'm parading around as something that I should not be. But so far, everybody's voting on the South winning. They do look stacked, don't they? Fake ref. <laughs> How dare you besmirch my good name. <laughs> But I am besmirching my own good name by not refereeing, so it's a good point. So, uh... Cool, yeah, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna finish off my food and then we'll get back to refereeing. I'll zoom around to see what's going on, but I did, I did, I wanna say I called this early on. This is broken beyond. I did this a few months ago without the super suit, just naturally running around. And this particular item, if you can power it, and obviously you need a lot of power, <clears throat> to run it uh, and to keep discharging it, it's ridiculous. If you twin this, for any of you wanting to, to like look at the new way that we're threat farming at the moment, if you twin this with level two shield, you're basically unkillable. Nothing can touch you. And if anything gets close, you're just discharging. Really strong. And you can deal with everything up to, I think, big bugs. I may be wrong, but I think big bugs is the limit to this. Um, but as you can see, it's like one tapping buildings, two tapping buildings. So yeah, kind of broken. And we are already looking at kind of ridiculous numbers. But you know what? We like a little bit of ridiculousness in this, in this. You know? We don't like a bit of fun every now and again. They cannot expand. So once you kill a building, they cannot come back. However, it would be kind of cool if they could. If they reclaim that up to a level, so up to the kind of the, the boundary of their territory, they're able to like rebuild if you don't come back here. That'd be kind of funny. I definitely, I'd like to see a version of that happen. Complete or not join? Hang on a second. Let me let me ask in Discord. Give me a sec.
just thinking that. Sorry. I don't want to chew into the microphone. I was just thinking that this is the perfect, it's like, not silly music, but it's like funny, upbeat, quite lighthearted music. I want to kind of put a prediction out there. How long do you think this game goes on for? Do you think that we see a long game? And when I say long, anything over the one and a half hour mark? Or do you think that we see a game which is just gonna collapse? <laughs> one side just cannot deal with what's going on because we've got some outposters here. <laughs> oh yeah, 52,000. That's only like, that's only like two rockets, you know? 20 rockets, yeah. I think this, with the speed at which everything is, I mean, you could do handcraft, the RCUs, because the handcrafting speed is, is quick now, right? So you could handcraft everything apart from your, um, your rocket fuel. Or can, you know, you can't, no, you can't, because it's all liquid based. So you could handcraft LDS and it'd be like almost instant. I still, I guarantee you, Ah, yeah, 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 got you. But everything leading up to that, I mean, we will, I think we'll get there. I think we'll get to that point. Um, unless, one, I mean, one team, these guys are not interested at all. <laughs> there's no more. Um, there's no smelting. There is just burner, it's burner cities. <laughs> burner ghettos. And maximum bot speed. I mean, come on, this is going to be wild. I can imagine we get to end game very quick. I mean, where are we in the research queue already? Let's just take a look. All right, advanced oil and energy distro. And then for the south, we're looking at yes, yeah, basic stuff: sulfur, blue mods. I think the biggest issue is about who defends, and if they defend. <laughs> That's got to be key. But it is a bold choice. Although when you think about it, if you can mine this fast, why smelt? Do you know what I mean? Like, why build traditional smelting columns? I think the North might have, a, they might be onto something here. <laughs> They genuinely might be onto something here. Just hand feeding. So it's kind of conventional factorio. Conventional builds, conventional setups, like a mall and stuff. Or absolute chaos with just hand fed everything. Yeah, they'll come a tipping point for sure. But we're 19 minutes into the game and we have blue science already. I mean, how wild is that? <laughs> North is on something. The way of losing. I, I don't know, man. Look at this. Blue. Blue's already here. I don't know where it bloody came from. I don't know what this belt's all about either. <laughs> what is this? What is that? What the hell? Handcrafted purple. Yeah, this the threat farming for me is, if I remember correctly, it's been a few months, but if I remember correctly, I did this and I got to like a 70 something percent with the bugs. And that was when it started getting really tough with the, um, with the energy stuff.
No way. No, no, I thought you were lying. Why? What if this is a meme? This has to be a meme, surely. A burner inserter as well. Of all things, a burner inserter is going to be putting... Oh, no. Does he not see? <laughs> Does he not see what's going on up here? Is he is he not looking up? <laughs> so this this whole belt here. It is, isn't it? <laughs> I thought you were pulling my leg here, right? The North have lost this. That you do not win. You're not allowed. I'm I'm not allowing it. And now he's placing belts. <laughs> it's an ammo belt with ammo and a belt on the belt. We're postmodern now, guys. We're post postmodern. <laughs> what am I looking at? This this genuinely emotionally is affecting me having a look at this. <laughs> What's the point? Surely this doesn't make any I'm I'm shocked. Stunned and shocked at the same time at this. This is a new player though, right? I'm gonna... Sorry, I need to zoom out. I can't stop looking at it, but I need to zoom out otherwise. He's put a thousand magazine, a thousand. And he's used a burner. I, 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 I've lo I'm actually lost for words on this front, guys. He is building a wall, fair play. So well done on this front, good, tick. Well done, mate. This, nice, we like this, need more of this. Ah, seven games. Okay. If you're north, guide them away. <laughs> this is triggering me so hard right now, I can't even begin to tell you. I, I'm offended by this. <laughs> I'm not saying I want to cancel it. Oh. It's just one of those days, isn't it? It's one of those days. Dreadrin's got banned. <laughs> the South lose the same way twice. And now we're looking at an ammo belt. <laughs> In a game where you're given the most OP stuff. Literally the most OP stuff. It does. It feels like a Sunday on a Saturday. Because Sunday's normally just like a, let's play a, one final game of the week. It's just a bit of fun. Let's not take it really seriously. Let's just enjoy ourselves and have a special game. Okay, research is ticking in. Military science is about to go online. So the South are playing a very conventional setup here. The North is sticking to this, they're not moving. They're sticking to this, they're handcrafting everything. Handcrafting engines. Handcrafting blue. I'm intrigued, man. Like, I don't know. I, I don't know which way this is going to go. I've got a few more bites of my pizza and then I'll get this food away and we'll, we'll talk about what's happening on the outer reaches of the game because there are some outposters here too that are doing stuff. If I know Stick Lord or Rune Boggler, something big's about to happen. So a few more bites of this, I'm done. And then I'll, uh, I'll get back on the mic properly and we'll get going.
Oh dear, people are going down. <laughs> it had to be north, didn't it? Oh dear. Right, well, there's been a send. Ooh. Oh, okay. Hides piping pipers at 26 minutes in <clears throat> have sent 12 purple jugs, which is a sentence I didn't think I'd be saying today. Increasing the Evo 11%. 12 jugs. That's wild, mate. And now, I mean, yeah, fair enough. Like, they still have a really high threat, uh, uh, negative minus threat, but 12 jugs does 11% increase. So are they going to automate purple at least? Or are they just going to keep researching and, and keep pushing on? But Nura just threw. So, and we have some level of automation here. This is the only thing that the North in their main base, other than the oil and this plastic sulfur, this is all they have. Engines. Yeah, I know, right? That's got to be some kind of speed running absolute mad lad. There's no way. It's completely impossible. Meanwhile, let's check in on this absolute beauty. <laughs> oh my god. I mean, you've got the right idea, obviously. Has he has he changed this? It's still pumping out. Oh my god! It's still pumping out magazines. <laughs> and then this. Oh. In chat log. Oh, okay, we're, go we're gonna adopt him. <clears throat> we're gonna adopt him. Next time I play, if he's on my team, we uh, there we go, nice. Pulling it up. It's, oh, it's going back down again. Okay, that's that's a mistake. <laughs> um, it's so janky, dude. <laughs> You've got minus 31,000. Fair enough, though. I mean, both games, um, walls have been an issue. So it stands to reason that they eventually kind of work on it. Uh, meanwhile, Enkling of the Cake is lie, it's building a huge amount of processing here. What this turns into, I will not know. Kill it with fire before... <laughs> yeah, I I'll give him that. They are doing flamers as well. And yeah, I uh, another throw has gone across. So Nuro's just throwing small amounts of purple signs, ratcheting up the pressure. And again, 39%, it's not like, it's not the end of the world, but yeah, eventually these will get stronger. As you can see though, they still get one tapped. Medium bugs still got one tapped. You need to go to big to behemoths before you really start impacting them. So these guys will continue to drive this number in deep into the hundreds of thousands. But again, if you can keep pushing the Evo and maybe even send a few hundred purple, and I believe I saw somebody else like Vortex, was it? <laughs> oh, don't tell him, don't tell him. He's having fun, you know. I, ethically, I disagree egregiously with this belt. But I can understand as a new player not, not understanding it. Do you know what I mean? Like, oh, I don't really know why. Um, why they do things in certain ways. <laughs> Wall is a thumbs up. You know what, positive for the wall, positive for the flamers when they eventually come in. We'll we'll give you the little gun turret stuff, that's fine. You'll realise quite quickly how fast they get destroyed, but... Oh dear, claw goes down. A lot of people dying in the north as well, like, they're at they're 5%. <laughs> Not 44%, they're at 5.9%. What's going on, boys? Yeah, that's just it. That's just it. It's not even a, it's not a bad thing. It needs tweaking a little bit, a little bit of tampering and you're good, you know. But again, ah, lag, yeah. Oh yeah. The one thing that you have to be careful of in um, situations like this is people like overly spamming blueprints. 
huge blueprints can slow the server down or mass deconstruction can slow the server down as well. So we need to be very careful and cognize. 69. They're going for it, aren't they? The North have managed to hit purple and they're just spamming it. Have the South got any response to this? No, because they're researching automated material processing before production science. And it's slow. They might get undone here. Purely just once the evolution gets to like 80, 90%, that threat will start to really push. Yeah, dude, like you don't need the automation. You don't need this first. You need this. Well, obviously you need that for that, but I mean, I just, I'd want it coming in a bit quicker than as we can see here. Not very quick. Twenty-seven on twenty-seven. Not a huge amount to speak about. Let's go out to these uh, these outposts. It seems like Space Dog and Roomboggle have joined forces with Califabot. I'm not sure what they're doing out here. Are they handcrafting purple? Oh, that's the end of my reggae playlist. What was the other one that we were going to listen to? Oh, I know. It's it should be on my history, right? I one second, I'm just going to swap the music out real quick. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Let's have a jolly old time. <laughs> right, plastic and sulfur are being done. That's going to get piped into this blue build, which should speed it up. And Neuro is just cranking and cranking the music up. When, oh dear, another death. When the, um, when the breach eventually happens, we're gonna find some satanic music. <laughs> we'll get some satanic music on and that, that'll be how we finish the game off, you know? Although it needs to be copyright free because I don't want to get sued by Satan. <laughs> oh dear. And yeah, North are just slowly but surely just throwing out. So far, 348 purple have gone across. It is kind of a big deal. Like, they really are pushing early, the percentage. And, you know, with now four threat farmers on the south, they will eventually run out of road. I mean, this will still be powerful. But dealing with the big bugs, not being able to one-tap them. And the lag is real. Holy crap. But you've got to hope that they were planning for this. Yeah, you've got to hope that they were planning for this on the south. We're going to build normally, conventionally. Do have any flamers down? No, no flamers. And no side to their base either. Hmm. So the North want to push the South over 100%. I mean, it's a bold move, and you can you can get there really quick. I just wonder what the end game stuff is. <laughs> yeah, it's um. <laughs> It's going to get laggy, boys, I'm going to be honest. A hundred jugs go over. Let's take a look at that. A hundred jugs is 4.2%. Nothing to sniff at. But no shots fired from the south. That's three games now. Three games in a row. If this is to be a game where the south loses, that the south don't fire any aggressive shots off at all. They just sit in their base, they build, and that's it. And unless I'm missing something huge, all the North have to do now is just keep sending purple. I mean, what are they researching now? Mill three. Anything gonna kick in for them? Yeah, LDS and some of the later game stuff. On South, meanwhile, if we could check in on their research real quick. 
Uh, they're going for speed. I don't know, mate. I'm, I'm in uncharted territory here. Because I don't really know or understand the way that these games go. Purely because of, uh, of this. By the way, you can also have multiple uh, multiple discharge defense remotes in your inventory. You you can actually shock a lot more than this. I, I, that's why I didn't mention it at the start of the start of the stream because I was, I was wondering if anybody actually knows about this. You can have like ten triggers on you, and you can fire this thing off like a Tesla tower if you have enough power. You can literally just go in and lightning storm an area down. You don't need to be see these guys are pressing it like once every half second, half a second. If you put it onto your keybinds, you can just mash your keybinds and keep firing it. Don't tell them I told you that though. Okay, a big send. That's huge. Four hundred jugs go over from the south to the north, and the north are now dealing with forty-nine point eight percent increased bugs, up to fifty-six. So the south are on 67, the north are on 56. GG North is dead, I mean, they're, they're fine. They've got these turrets, these gun turrets are really strong. And they have bullets too. So like, you see, like, they just, it, honestly mate, it's fine. <laughs> it's completely not. It's whoever gets the behemoths first. Because the thing is, behemoths will run you down and be on top of you. Whereas at the moment, you are able to kite them and push them back. Once the behemoths get on top of you, it's going to be rough. Really, really rough. And again, we'll keep our eyes onto the threat, but yeah, we are seeing 100 and... I'm not even going to say minus, I'm just going to say the number. 116k for the south. They have one or couple, well, a couple of people still kind of threat farming around. There's the semblance of a wall, the beginnings of a wall. Uh, it's going down. And there was one really strong purple throw from the south to the north. Meanwhile, the south, nice. We're on 69.2% evolution. And they're dealing with more pressure but again they have that deeper threat farm so there's not a huge amount to talk about in that respect <laughs> oh yeah that's actually a very good point cliff <laughs> when you move as fast as sonic the hedgehog it's difficult to uh yeah it's difficult but they're now slinging backwards and forwards though oh no it's just one way one way traffic 73 percent deal with it I don't know, man. Like, we're, we're not going to see a rocket, surely. We're just going to see purple spam. Although, I wonder what Boggler's up to. Because this this outpost has been quiet for a while now, but, it, but they've been building. So there's something going on here. Somebody has lots of stuff. And it might just be that Boggler is holding hundreds, maybe if not thousands, of purple signs to send in one huge throw. 90% evo is the aim of the game, I think. 90 to 100. And I don't know about you, but I'm really liking this pirate music. If you can't hear it, apologies. I'm happy to turn it up. Um, but yeah. Reggae music. We've had a bit of everything today. We had some drama. We had some easy losses. We had some, uh, some disco, some funk, some jazz, some rock some reggae, now pirate music. Ooh, that's a big throw. 339 from the south to the north. Moves the dial up to the north to 66.7%. Minus 25,000 now. They're still killable with the laser discharge defense. But this this game state won't be forever. You know, and eventually when the number gets positive, their base has to defend itself. So, yeah, we'll be interested to take a look at what happens to the game state then. Um, and another death. Martin Max King goes down. Carl sends a bit more. 71% now to the south, 76. I don't even know where to look on this one. Because they're just handcrafting stuff. It's not like... They should kill everything. I mean, I, I, they, they should literally rip everything out of this, like, you see down here, they've just wiped out huge areas. That's what you need to do. You have the power to do that. Do it when it's easy. Don't do it when it's harder. 
run directly in, kill everything, because each of these have like a threat value as well. So you need to drop this threat value too. Um. I should really get rid of the referee tag, that's quite misleading isn't it? I have been, and I always have actually. I'm just taking a break, I'm having some food, spectating one of the games, that is a bit weird. <laughs> yeah, no actually it's, it's a fair point though, you do make a good point. I can always pick it back up down the line. <laughs> now nobody wins. <laughs> it's fine. I make it every week anyway, because somebody messes around with it. Okay, we're now... Okay, the North have overtaken the South in terms of threat. Uh, percentage evolution, and their threat isn't going down as fast anymore. So we're now looking at minus 17k to the minus 118k on the South. And again, yeah, they're just not very experienced threat farmers. You need to kill these bases, these spawners. You need to kill everything. Why not? Like, it's... It, it lowers the threat even further than what it currently is now, so... Yeah, the purple spam is real. 1,329 from the south to the north, and 1,305 from the north to the south. And we're at roughly the same game state. But, yeah, it's kind of wild really when you think about it. 43 minutes and they're both at the same point. Although, it seems like the south is sending larger quantities. So the south is sending hundreds of purple rather than like 50 to 100. So yeah, I'm I'm worried for the North. They'll be able to defend for a while, but it's little things like there's no side to the base, right? I mean, you guys are seeing this too, right? The bugs just have to skirt around this and you're in. And not every single person that's going to be in the game is going to have that energy distribution thing on them. Not everybody's going to be wearing this. So... Yeah, 80% now on the south. We're closing in on that that 90% behemoth number. Wizard Phil doing live result of power. Oh, is he giving he's giving the updates? 82% <laughs> now. We are climbing up to the vaunted number of 90. At 90, the bugs evolve even larger. They have green shells, they turn to behemoths. And they become problems. And again, they're just taking that a little bit longer to kill, which means that the threat will eventually climb into the positive, and then the rest of the base has to worry. Like, you're kind of quite free at this point to do what you want, but the moment it goes positive, you're in for some for a world of hurt. And satanic music will be played. <laughs> We've already agreed on it. 83% now, 76 to the north. I feel like an accountant. All I'm doing is reading out numbers. Is there anything else we can talk about? Not really. I, this isn't normal fighter battles. <laughs> Normally you have to build a base. Um, now people are just chucking in. Ooh. 381. The cake is a lie. Hmm. Yes. Yes, yes. You don't need people just, you know, standing around here handcrafting. You need people up there. Minus 15k now. 81%. 83 to the south. These guys are still putting in a lot of really solid efforts. Cake is a lie. What a great game, by the way. Holy crap, I want to play Portal now. What a great series, actually. Portal and Portal 2. Great games. The problem is, if I do play that, I'd, I'd out myself as being a bit of an idiot. Because some, some of the puzzles you have to solve are like not obvious in how you solve them, I guess. So um, that would be kind of an interesting one. <laughs> Maybe I'll play some Portal later. I might I need to download it first. I might I might put that up on stream. Portal with Ghosty, watch me fail. <laughs> oh god, terrible. So yeah, the sends continue. The purple game continues on. And it's just a slugging match. 
of which I think the North are losing. Oh, it's got to be, right? I remember, I, I don't know, maybe I'm showing my age here, but... 2008, I think it was? The Orange Box. That was legendary. That game was incredible. You got TF2, you got Portal 2, and you got Half-Life 2, all in the same box. And it was just incredible, man. Like, I, I remember playing those games, and they just blew my mind, man. Firstly, TF2 is still a banger. Any of you that need to play, like, a fun shooting game, play Team Fortress 2. It's hilarious. As long as, obviously. Yeah, that is true, actually. Steam back then. Oh, God. Let's check in on some research. Right, laser towers, flamers, increased explosive. Yeah, you kind of, you get the idea. Um, But I'd love to do that, Portal. I might do it. I might download it and, and play it. I'm not expecting everyone to come watch, but I forget. It's been such a long time, I forget what the puzzles are as well. So it's not like through memory recall, you can just go, ah, yeah, this one, we move this box over here and do X, Y, and Z, so. And this is where the purple send is coming from. Okay. Oh, mate. Holy shit. That is a that is fucking great game. Nauseating. Yeah. Oh, my, yeah. Flipping through, like flipping upside down. Also, as well, when you see the solution and the speed and the, whoever's playing it doesn't, <laughs> how frustrating that could be. Oh, yeah. Don't worry, mate. It's fine. You know. I just do this, this, no, oh, 90% by the way on the south, Behemoths have arrived. Um, they have a bit of a wall. 83 for the north, 92 now for the south. But yeah, I was thinking that. I, I want to stream other games, but I don't know what other games I want to stream. I don't really care about, like, the latest title or the, the most... Do you know what I mean? Like, whatever is big at the moment. I just... I want to find a really fun game and just play all the way through it. I was thinking about doing Red Dead 2. Because I love that game. I've played it once before all the way through. And I just, I love that game. It's so good. So I might, I might play through Red Dead 2. Ninety-four percent now. Ooh, but that 100k buffer. It's slowly getting eaten into, though. 110k. So, can they lose 110k before the North loses their 18k? Subnautica, yeah. I've, I've heard big things about Subnautica. 190 out of 3. So, Wizard Phil is Power Man, effectively. <laughs> 97. We are climbing. We're not even at the hour mark and we have Behemoths on South. And they're losing around about a thousand threat farm every couple of seconds because you can't kill this stuff off. It's too tanky. All you can do is push it around. You can't actually kill it. Subnautica is a great shout. Oh, another death. To a behemoth. 109k. Down from 111. Only a few moments earlier. 20k up north. But if I believe if... Like, behemoths kick into the north now. You can get them 7% over the line here to 90. We're looking at a pretty difficult game state for them. Then there's no way they can hold on to that minus 20k. Do they have flamers coming down at all? No flamers, gaps in the wall. They have engines being built, but... Now they're committing a few more people. I don't know, it might be a little too late though. It might be a little bit too late. Ipes has made a laser build here. And 98.7%. Why haven't the North thrown a punch yet? Like, they have science, right? They're building it, at least. But 
but yeah, any game recommendations? Um, <clears throat> or if you think of something when like the stream's down, feel free to DM me like a suggestion for something that you might want to watch being played. I had a couple, like, man, I don't know if you guys know about this game called Manor Lords, but I love the look of that. That's like a really old school medieval builder where you fight your army and your village against another army and another village. I could get behind that in a big way. It's not released yet, it's coming out soon. But um, yeah, that game looks sick. Oh. Honestly, it's it looks like it genuinely looks like it could be that game that you just play all the time, like a bite battles type, where you just log in, you make a little bit of progress, you know, you get a few more villagers, increase your tech a bit, and then before you know it, you're absolutely slaying everyone. Oh, mate, Kingdom Come Deliverance Two! Holy shit! I saw a trailer to that yesterday. KC Two. Oh, I'm playing that game. That's the game I'll stream. That's the game I'll stream. Did you guys ever play the original Kingdom Come Deliverance? I never finished it. Oh, well, there you go. Hang on, I've just answered my own question. I've asked and answered the same question twice. I need to play the first Kingdom Come Deliverance and finish it. And then when I finish that, I can play the new one. Play the second one, right? Yeah, that's the way we go. That's what we do. Because I'm terrible at that game as well. <laughs> I got my ass handed to me every five seconds. It was I was kind of getting beaten up and bullied by uh, <laughs> pretty much everything. So behemoths are here, and uh, yeah, as you can see, they're not getting one tap. The North have lost about eight thousand threat in the last couple of minutes, and that will slowly but surely build over time. The North don't have ninety percent Evo yet, but can somebody get them over the line? Like, you need to now. Something's happening over here that I haven't seen as well. Like, I haven't noticed. But there is something important happening in this area that I don't know. And it might be that Rimboggle has thousands of purple on him. But it wouldn't take much to get them over the line. They're at 99.4% on south. And we're lagging a little bit. I wonder why. I wonder why. Let's see goes down again. Oh no. Hey, it's not easy. It's a life of a threat farmer is. So yeah, we're kind of in a holding pattern at the moment. 101.5% now for the South, and they are losing their advantage quickly. I feel like the South are really kind of messing up a little bit here because they should really send. Even four or five percent would would unhinge the North to some degree, but you know they have more people threat farming. If these guys turn into um, behemoths, does the discharge weapon benefit from the upgrades? That's a really good point. I'm not exactly sure. Although it would stand to reason that it does. You know, it's an energy-based weapon. So let's see if, if we do eventually see laser turrets. If, yeah, if we do see laser turrets, then definitely we'll check in on to see the different levels of upgrades. Oh my god, I can't believe what, how? Are you still... Bruh. I don't even... <laughs> I can't even right now. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, they need to send, man. The North need to feel some pain here. Interesting. Level 6 and above. Oh, okay, so you don't just yeah. Well, that makes sense, I guess. Otherwise, a very cheap item, comparatively speaking, would um, be pretty OP pretty quick. You know, it, it would really ramp up very quickly. Um, we are. It was a while since we saw ascend. Mister T's coming back in. 
The last send was at 56 minutes. So they're coming every three. Yeah, they're coming every three to four minutes. A few hundred purple are going across. Yeah, we are lagging, aren't we? Let's do that. Let's hover over the T6. Oh yeah, it shows you. That's wild though, man. I wonder how much damage it does. I might need to test this. I might need to test this out in my own environment. Get into the lab and start cooking. <laughs> uh, somebody mentioned game speed. Let's drop it to nine. Let's see if that helps. People are getting kicked out. That maybe will help with the FPS UPS and for people connecting, reconnecting. Um, finally, the north are at 91. And with minus 45k to the south, minus 87k, it's really now just about being on the clock. You, know, you can't really reliably kill these um, behemoths off with just discharge weapons. And if you're not careful, you can get swarmed. And because you're not killing them, they are spawning in. So you're really just moving them around at this point. So now it's just about, yeah, whoever just doesn't kill them fast enough. Oh, what a shit show. Today has been wild. My PC can keep up, no worries, mate. We've slowed the game down a little bit, but your threat... You did well to farm deep into the minus 100k. I think the north are in some trouble. I think the north are in quite a lot of trouble. They're not able to kill the behemoths anymore. And, uh, and, you know, that, that threat number eventually will, will fly up, so... Yeah, the medium and the, and the bigs you can still kill with a couple of taps of your uh, distribution thingy, um, weapon, but... <laughs> it should charge them up. It should make them electric. Can you imagine that? <laughs> and also, their threat farmers are lagging and dying as well, so, like... It's, it's not a guaranteed, we can still do this, so that 47,000 number, as long as the South can keep sending, I don't know why, but the South seem to really not um, produce a lot, and I, I don't know what we're, what we're missing out on here. Do you know what I mean? Imagine if you discharge energy at them, if you don't kill them, they become electrified. Maybe like an electrified bug disabled other buildings. So if an electrified bug walks past all of this, it like disables it, like an energy field. Bear with me on this one, actually. I think that's a kind of an interesting idea. So let me find a bug that's like deep here. So let's say that you've, let's say for instance, and only because it's a static item, let's say that this is a bug that's been electrified. Around it for five seconds, or maybe longer, it has like an AOE where whatever it touches, including other players, it disables their suit. So if you electrify it, it doesn't die. It becomes electrified. Ooh, that's... Oh, yeah, yeah. We're going to make that happen, boys. We're going to try it out. <laughs> we're we're going to get into the lab and start cooking that one up. I just think that would be kind of a cool... The same as maybe with fire. Like, if you set fire to a bug and it doesn't die, it becomes molten. 606 flasks. We're starting to cook with gas now. 96.9% for the north, 106 for the south, 40,000 threat, and these guys are going to struggle. They've sent almost everyone out here. One, two, three, four, five, six people to threat farm. These behemoths are not going down, and they're getting stronger. So, yeah. Meanwhile, we haven't seen a huge amount from out here. I don't know what Rimboggle is doing. I may be wrong, but I don't think we've seen any throws from Boggler, right? Carl, Max, Nero, Carl, Sticklord, Cake, Vortex, Avev. He's cooking up a few thousand purple, isn't he? Oh, mate, that sounds cool. There was one way I went right away. Bugs can infect your turrets and turn them against you. It's like Helldivers 2 all over again. <laughs> 
Uh, I, I, I can. I can. And because this isn't a serious captain's game, I will. I will. But we're not going to keep it up forever. Ah, okay, awesome. There you go, Cliff's told us. I, in a normal game, I wouldn't, because it kind of gives the game away. That's a lot of purple. That is a lot. And that would really change the dial for the north. That would make life very, very uncomfortable. So, again, they don't have a side to their base either. And again, oh, actually, no, the, the south really don't have any great defense either, if I'm being honest. This is just a, ca a case of, like, who doesn't... Who makes less mistakes? <laughs> Spoiling. <laughs> oh, goddamn spoilers. Yeah, 96. You've got lasers down. I'll give you that much. And the lasers are upgrading too. You know, you, you can only get to a certain point, but I do like that you guys are conventionally playing. So you're, you're still building stuff, whereas at the north, they're just hand feeding everything. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And that's just it, is that he has enough time now to just sit. Sit, wait, produce, hold, hold the line. Love isn't always on time. What a great song. Hold the line, do 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 do. Love isn't always on time. No. 700 flasks. That's a lot. The thing is, the South's threat has really climbed recently. That's gone from minus 111k about 10 minutes ago, 15 minutes ago, to minus 65. So. It is slowly ramping up, but it is slow. You know, this isn't a fast where, you know, they're, they're increasing by 10,000 or, you know, 20,000 at any good time. It's it's an interesting game. It's, it's kind of wild. <laughs> but the purple seems to be doing a job. Now, will we see yellow, do you think? Will we see any yellow sight at all? Ah, got you. Yeah, so it had to be blue-purple. Oh, it had to be purple upwards, okay. 500 goes across, 99.6%. Fair play, I mean, these guys, the thing is, very much like, um, oh. Oh, they're, that's kind of smart. And there's some, some laser upgrades have gone in. But you can see now, look how much damage it takes to down one of these guys. You know, they're standing in the fire, they're standing in the lasers, and they're not going down that fast. So it's great, but you need to be careful because when they reach your wall, they will do a lot of damage. So you know, have to be careful. Eventually, when this threat does go positive, they both need to be very cognizant of the fact that their wall is not very thick. No artillery. We have done artillery games in the past. But they've ended sometimes quite negatively. <laughs> um, we we did it. We did an artillery game where one person felt like they were targeted. They weren't targeted. They just had the biggest base. Um, so yeah, no artillery. It's it's fun, but it's not fun if you're getting artillery. <laughs> if that makes any sense. So it's fun to be the one shooting. It's not fun to be the one shot at. <laughs> and again, he took it very very personally. People thought he had been. You know, targeted because he was an American. He wasn't. He had a big base. You know, we had main base over here, and there was this enormous base out to the side. And so people were like, "Okay, when we get our artillery turrets up, that's what we need to blow up first. Kind of makes sense. You know, target the biggest problem. So yeah, I just I don't know, man. I think the South have given themselves enough buffer. We're just looking at hopefully whenever runes are uh, throws or whenever these guys manage to get the south, uh, the north, sorry, over the limit, to um, to, to to get them out of the negative threat. And they're reliant on the moment on killing these medium, uh, sorry, these large bugs, the big bugs. But um, they are going down though. They are going down. What are we doing here? Yep, 
He hasn't picked up a load of science, has he? No. Fair enough. <laughs> I think auto fire would stay. 20k difference, firstly, yes. Even if they targeted other teams' bases, I know. Th there could be. There could be a chance for that to come into play. You know what I mean? Like if you if you had like a longer range turret. I've been talking about this for ages. I'd love to cr I'd love to invent some turrets that we could put into the game that we could create ourselves. Sniper turrets. I know that like shotgun turrets already exist, but yeah, just like like fireball turrets that fire like an individual ball of fire that, that obviously, you know, flies through the air. Um these guys are getting overwhelmed on the north. It's only 102%. 34,000 negative. To the 56 of south. And they're kind of paddling around a bit in this, but they are dying a lot though, right? This is, I mean, yeah, you can bring those guys to this wall, but. <laughs> Ground based nukes. Stick sending big, neuro sending big, 118 on the south. Minus 40k now, so that's really speeding up. There's going to come a point where, I don't know what the number is, but Rune's going to have to send at some point, right? Rune's going to have to send. Uh, not Rune's, yeah, Rune's going to have to send. Power, apparently. Is it, is it dueling? Power seems fine. There are holes in the wall though. The bugs are here. Threat's not positive just yet, but these gun turrets are really paying for themselves now. <laughs> okay. Somebody requested satanic music. I feel like we've heard enough pirate stuff now. Now, I can't guarantee that I can find any satanic music. Oh, look at that. Well, no, that's synthwave, though, right? You don't want to hear synthwave. Do you? Is that... Um... Cyberpunk? Dark synth? I don't know. Like That doesn't sound to me like the kind of stuff. Dystopian synthwave. It's all synthwave stuff, man. I don't... I'm not into it. Dark... I mean, let's type in... Let's type in... Um, this might work. So I'm just finding a new playlist. I don't want that car. I'm not buying that. That's terrible. That's not what I'm looking for. These aren't the droids I'm looking for. Okay, satanic music might be off the cards. I might not be able to do satanic music for you, mate. I can't find any. If you can find me one, I'll play it. Punk music. Okay, yeah, we'll do a bit of punk then, I guess, in the meantime. Right, I've been out for a second. 119 on the south with negative minus 40,000. Up north, 105% with minus 22,000 now. It's climbing. The cake is licensed 261 purple. It's a purple off. It's a purple off. 8,000 cent from north to south, 5,000 cent from south to north. But I do believe, I do believe, that the Boggler of Runes is holding something. <laughs> it's holding something. But will it be enough? All we need to do is 22,000... We need to get the north into the positive or the south into positive. It's basically game over when that happens. Wizard Phil is really into his power, isn't he? And uh, I'm going to be honest, if the bugs come at this base... This base doesn't really have much of a chance. Um, equally so 
Now this is what this one does with upgrades, and obviously they're getting their upgrades. Main build and south. Fair play. Yeah, it could, mate. Did we take boss fighters out? I don't know if we kept them in or not. You might be able to, um, if you're in the here, Cliff. Apologies for distracting you, but um, did we get rid of boss? Oh, I know what you mean. Like themed bosses. Yes. Holy shit. So here's my idea. I would like to have one oddly oddly shaped bug that's like purple maybe or like what's a really random color like a, like a black bug and it's basically french and we call it ragnarok and when you get to a certain number of threat you summon ragnarok <laughs> but when you do the french national anthem begins to play and every five minutes if you don't kill him it gets stronger and stronger and stronger and louder and louder and louder until all you hear is the french national anthem as he rampages down towards your base as a unique boss, you know? And you could randomize, each game could have a, a randomized boss, something new, something different, you know? You could have Neuro, it's like, all right, this week, the, the, the mini boss, if you get to 105% is Neuro, or 66.6% .6 and you summon Neuro on your other team side. Yeah, I'd be down for that. But it's getting silly now. Minus 15k for the south, minus 18 for the north. This is relatively close. But again, it's hard to commentate on this kind of thing because everything's being handcrafted. I don't really have any commentary about like, oh, that's a really interesting build, or oh, you can see they're making lasers here. It's like, yep, there's another smelting line. There's loads of smelting, yep, good stuff. <laughs> yeah, I, the only thing they've got going for them is they have some credible defense. Lasers won't be enough. Lasers won't be enough, but it but it's enough to stop uh, stuff in their tracks, and we do have some capsules being thrown as well. So, like these behemoths are being dealt with correctly. You can capsule them and use your laser defense to push them in, so to keep them into the uh, into the poison. Um, that's a good point. If you're not fully upgraded, and they're still researching as well. I don't know if we're going to be playing the game in another 20-30 minutes. I don't know like how far away, whatever the number is that Runeboggle is aiming for. Like what I don't know what the number is, but at minus 19k, a couple of like three, four thousand purple should do the trick. It's been very quiet this game, and, and the thing is you've got to worry about people that are that silent. Normally it means they've got something huge up their sleeve, so. Um, yeah, beware, be warned, be wary of this. This is not a, this is not I'm being quiet because I don't know what I'm doing. This is I'm being quiet because I've got a huge mega punch to throw. Minus 12k now to the minus 19 of south. There we have it, two, three, three, four from the south to the north, the north jumped to 124.9% and they are now plus 40,000 bucks, which means that even if they kill off all of these behemoths and put down their box wall again, which we know to be the strongest kind of wall, wood's really strong, have you punched a tree? It hurts, right? The bugs will begin to become aggressive. The south though, they're on positive threat too. Hmm, was that two big throws at the same time? 1500, okay, yeah, so they were both holding and saving. 1500 from Q Crat, 2300 from south to north, north to south. Um, we're about equal. 138 on south, 125 on north. It's now about survival. Who can hold out long enough? And if you look at the state that they've shoved the bugs back on south, that's more distance from Tehran. They're kiting waves, they'll be able to catch waves as well. I just don't think north can hold out. And they have two upgrades on their lasers, two damage upgrades. Not ideal. Not ideal at all. There is no pollution in this game mode, but what they do do is they look for, uh, they look for your base. <laughs> they kind of zone in onto your base. And we have some bosses, excellent. 
Yeah, we'll check in on that, mate, because they're about to be attacked. They do have... Ooh, I'll tell you what, though. I do like this. They have some wall. You know, with the speed at which the players can run, they can actually make it to problem areas. There isn't anything really on this left-hand side, but it's areas like this where the bugs might end up targeting. And they're just far too strong. You can push them away all you want, but it doesn't kill them, which means that they will continue to grow in numbers, and as they grow in numbers, they will begin to overwhelm and swarm you, and um, you're not going to have a good time. So yeah, it's just a matter of time. Oh, and there's a wave at main already. Brilliant. We've, we, we've missed the breach, but we found it just as the breach was happening. The bugs are in, they're on top of the initial defences, lasers are doing very little, the majority of the defensive players are outside the base, dying and now respawning in, and the bugs will begin to smash into, break and devastate the internal workings of the defensive effort for the north. Uh, there's also a boss that's made their way, two bosses have made their way in with another wave on top, and again, things start to crumble for the north. Uh, they're losing flamer towers very quickly, the gun turrets are doing nothing. At this point, gun turrets... They, they tend not to do a huge amount, so... Yeah. We are looking at what potentially could be GG. The South have yet to see any major... I mean, they're catching the waves. This is really important. When you're, when you're threat farming, sometimes you need to catch a wave that's coming into your direction. No, no, they're terrible too. Just don't... I would say just avoid gun turrets at all costs. Okay, so the bugs are going out of the base. They've had enough. <laughs> Why are they here? Why aren't they going forward? The interesting thing is the most damaging... Um, the most damaging thing you have in the game is... is um, sorry, I've been casting for like six hours. My brain's not working. Um, so one of the most damaging things you can have is green ammo, but one of the weakest defensive things is the turret. So green ammo is great if you can keep the turrets alive. But most of the time, you, you can't keep the turrets alive, so it's kind of a wasted investment. The wall has been perforated, it has been proliferated. There are holes everywhere, and you'll need to fix this, as well as boss, bosses coming in to kind of fight off the remaining stuff that you have left in your base. Waves will begin to pour into north now. And even if you can shove these few away, there's things like this that you have to contend with. Pavev, been here for a while. He might have some science to throw, but his, this is not his base anymore. The bugs have taken over. They've run in and gone, oh, mate, nice place you have here. It would be a shame if we ruined all of it. So kite them as he might. He's still sus susceptible. It would be interesting if we ever did a gun turret only game. But I feel like the, the meta for us until things get tweaked and changed is flamers and lasers and then if you're physically at the wall capsules for you oh we have some coming in well apparently some have come in on the south gunboy billabob trying to intercept the wall has been broken the wave is here oh dear Developer goes down. Cake is alive is, the, is one of the main purple senders here for the south. So I feel like all you're going to do now is kite until you have, what, capsules? This is dangerous though, like that could definitely turn into a much larger problem. Meanwhile, at the wall itself, kiting them away from attacking the wall, having people with walls on them is a great shout, so they're replacing. Um, this is a problem, obviously. Box walls. What is this? What am I looking at? GG was called. That's the first time I've ever missed an explosion. I'm sorry about that. I have been casting for six hours though, so I do apologize. I normally catch these, but they must have made it in directly and just gone straight through. Well, there you go. The South finally won a game. <laughs> Lost three captains to gay. Thank you. <laughs> yeah.
I mean, a little bit of silliness at the end of the day. I don't mind it. I don't mind it at all. It's nice to have a bit of fun after some relatively... It wasn't bad, but it, it certainly wasn't like the best games you've ever seen, so... They did, and they made the most of their threat farming because they went deep into the enemy territory. Killed bases, killed everything. The north, if you can see here, they've got this tiny little outpost area, but they really could have just run a lot of these buildings down. But nevertheless, that was a couple of good games. Here's my question. Who do we raid? Who should we raid? Who's online? Uh, is there any Biter Battles people we can raid? I like to, I, without sounding rude, I, I like to raid small streamers. Zasper, yeah, go on, let's raid Zasper. Because I, I was going to raid him last week and I, and I went for um, I went for somebody else. But let's do that. Oh, nice one. West of South. You're... Are you the official Mr. T? <laughs> You're... Oh, over here! Ooh! I... Wait, are we looking at this? This is quite nice. Those running 100% speedruns. I like it. I like it. Because it feeds multiple areas, you know, you're not just having one line jam up. I could get used to that. We've yet to see the most efficient version of this. You know what I mean? The, the best um, way of splitting. So, yeah, you never know. This could be the one. Let's check to see who's online, and then we'll raid somebody. Cheers for joining us this week, guys. It's been good fun. Um, as always, I like to raid small streamers. Like We could raid Anti, obviously. He's a big deal. He's, in, he's got lots of viewers, but you can keep him company. You can say hello. and. Um, yeah. Oh, I desynced. That doesn't matter anyway. But yeah, I'll tell you what, I'll flip a coin. Heads for the dough, tails for Zasper, and whoever we don't raid this week will raid next week. Alright, we're raiding the dough. <laughs> and then next week we'll raid uh, we'll raid Zasper. Uh, let's do this. Thanks for joining me again, guys. It's been good fun. Uh the dough. So yeah, hope you have a good weekend, guys. I will, I might be streaming tomorrow. I don't know. I haven't really planned it, but I'm definitely going to take a break from Factorio. Uh, at least for 24 hours. <laughs> All right, guys, I'll catch you in the next one. Have a good weekend. Bye.